<laughs> oh, is that the the Absorbaloff? The Absorbaloff. Yes, I like that name. <laughs> it's like no. Yeah. Quiet Cree. There's there's not much I can do. Um, hang on, Cree. Uh, Cree, talk talk normally again. I, I there is something I can do actually. All right, yep, I will move Kree up. Hold on a second. He's going to blow my eardrums out, but it's so the audience can hear. I'll, I'll, I'll take it for the team. Oh, my God. Fuck. There. Rex just posts the most cursed shit in the server. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. I want to go back. <clears throat> I want to go back to talking about Doctor Who. Yeah. I don't want to see this cursed shit. So. Look at it. It looks so bad. What are they? No. What the fuck is that? No, you. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot look at it. I can't. Not with the setup I have. Ooh. I cannot look at it. I didn't but. Know robots could be gay. <laughs> but that episode, pretty fucking cursed in and of itself because it's like, it's not so bad. Know, she became she was saved she's still alive we even have oh, a little I bit of a love it. life and it's like ah! it. <laughs> like yeah people are still saying the audio is low <clears throat> there's not there is just had me stream it because it sounds like your setup is still fucked that, that's what i was saying i mean if maybe Cree should just stream it today if you want to try that you can but there cuz there's literally like Nothing I can do about this at all. Kratosis is nearly inaudible and crackly as fuck. Really? He's fine yeah, on this end. Crackling. I don't hear. Like, I don't hear crackling at all. Oh, the fucking horrors of actual, like, computer upgrades. Jesus Christ. This has been a fucking disaster. Is such what talking is such talking through a can or did he get a blue yeti? Nope. Unfortunately, this is the computer upgrade, and the thing about building computers is that's fine. It's fine. Building computers works perfectly, and then you actually get the drivers and everything, and it's like, oh Jesus Christ. The drivers are fucking this computer build over real hard. Yeah, people are saying I'm crackling and everything. That is weird. Um, maybe we should stop and start over then. Yeah, if, Kree, if you want to take over, go for it. That, we're going to have to. There's no way. Alrighty then. Uh, hang tight, everyone. We'll be, bi uh, bleh. We'll be back momentarily. <laughs> We'll be bit. Is it actually working? I hope so. Going through the same feed and everything? <clears throat> uh, it should be. Uh, I selected the thing from the thing to do the thing. Yeah, I see us. Yeah, stream's back up for me. Oh! I have assumed In direct control. In the end, it was the owls who took over, yeah. So, <laughs> so guys, to tell you how fucked my audio drivers were, myself, Pagan, Cree, were all coming through the mic auxiliary line. That's how fucked these new case designs and audio drivers are. I, I hate it. So I have a sound card ordered that's coming in. Unfortunately, that will be here by tomorrow, not before the stream, so. Yeah. Anyways, we've got a video to cover. We do indeed. Um, I did want to, uh, not tangent, but I did want to say one thing real quick. I just want to say I appreciate all of you guys being here. Like, I have had a stressful two days now. I'm just constantly building and then troubleshooting all this stuff like that. The build itself went perfectly fine. The case looks gorgeous. It, it looks 
looks stunning, honestly. This, this came together really well. It's just all these drivers and everything, and then compatibility issues with things like, I can't get my M.2 drive to work. Ooh. Stuff like that is just, yeah. Uh, and it might be because my CPU doesn't support M.2. And I was like, mother fucker. I didn't know that um, that 10th generation didn't support M.2. I had no idea that it was an 11th gen and up thing. So, yeah, I like I said, I just want to say I appreciate all of you guys for being here and everything and helping through. All the bounties on my stream have helped uh, get this rig up. We've got the new, the new bookshelf, which is where the rig is going to stay from now on and everything, so... I'm going to get the sound card in. We're going to get the new cables in so I can actually have two monitors. I only have one monitor now. So, yeah. This uh, this case design is just... It has an integrated microphone and headphone jack at the, at the front panel. That's what it says. And unfortunately, in all of the audio software, that therefore means my microphone is in the back and the front of the computer at the same time, according to all of the control systems. I hate it. I got, no, I got a, because um, we're still on a budget build, I got an i5, 10th generation i5 10, 10,400F. So, you know, big oof. Five dollars for Medico the Tricky. Thank you. Patrolling the Kratosis Discord server almost make, almost makes you wish to bring up the fluorescent hum I hear on the stream. What hum? Uh, I don't know. It might be on this end because again, this is this microphone setup is now. Bleh. The only hum that he might be able to hear, and I don't know why, because it's like kind of low, is the uh, the fridge behind me. Maybe. Oh, I do hear that. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, I like I turned the volume all the way up, and yeah, there's this is there's just this like weird bee in the background. Hmm. I I do hear a slight hissing. That's a dying lizard assassin that uh, Setch sent after me and fucking failed. Dying? Excuse me, sir. They don't die. Oh, that's weird. It's not coming through one of our microphones. Even when it's not, like, when none of us are talking and it's not lighting up, there's still a hum. It's just a constant hum. What I... is that? What the fuck? Wait, are you listening to the actual stream? Yeah. Well, my thing won't light up because it's capturing my microphone audio and not the Discord audio, so... Chat hears things from me that you guys aren't going to hear because Discord pick, oh, oh, won't true. pick it up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that, that's true. Yeah, that's the problem I was having with uh, when I was doing it just a second ago. Uh, okay, that's got to be what it is then. Yeah, there's some weird hum then in the background. Yep. Anyways, uh, I kind of want to get this over and done with already, so let's just get on to the video. Yep. Will the next video you post be Fallout related? No. No, it's going to be something more disastrous. Yeah. And that is all you're getting spoiled for. Yep. $2 from Itiko the Tricky. Thank you. This stag is being filmed from the back rooms. Oh, no. Uh oh <laughs> God, it does sound like the back room's home. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. A Western anime? A Western anime brought to us by Netflix? What could go wrong? Remember the last Western anime I looked at? You're a girl? I'm transgender. Cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, this is a mix. I didn't hear that at all. Shit. Oh no. no we have I, to play I, that I, back just so you can hear it. Yes, please. I had, I had to turn my audio up now and everything. Because now I don't have to worry about it bleeding through the mic or anything, so. Chris just started to stream and he's already wants to get rid of it. Look, I am very tired today. I am very tired. Yeah. And I've been super stressed, so I'm just in one of those, like, woof moods. 
Is this the mega conservative YouTuber? I have no idea who this is. Who is this I pagan? Don't I, don't, I don't know if he's mega conservative. I he's do got know... some story views to us, but he does go a little overboard. I do know that one section of his video mentions feminism. It's like, oh no. Yeah. No. Let's hear that part again. A Western anime? A Western anime brought to us by Netflix? What could go wrong? Remember the last Western anime I looked at? You're a girl? I'm transgender. Cyber. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't like that he's already comparing it to High Guardian Spice of all things. Like, really? It, it's There's yeah. no correlation at all between these two things. So best, it's really annoying. Best faith interpretation would be, oh no, the last uh, Western anime was garbage. Let's hope this one isn't. Yeah. Yeah, but. which, uh, again, it's fair to point out that Studio Trigger. Uh, Studio Trigger may be the people that made it, but you could still consider this a Western anime because it was... You know, obviously done in non-Japanese style, right? They're CD Projekt Red are the one that helped them make it. Yeah. Ten dollars from Digital Pirate. Thank you. This is going to be fun. Hopefully. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I will give him though. He is right about Western anime. Western anime tends yeah. to be absolute dog shit. It is. It tends to be so bad. That, that's why I was so surprised Cyberpunk was actually good, because yeah. most Western anime is just terrible i was surprised that cyberpunk was good because i'm so used to everything being terrible yeah i know yeah, it's, it's in crazy. modern day i am used to things being shit so you know cyberpunk edge runners is a breath of fresh air it has problems for sure so we'll see if any of those problems get brought up here in fact considering how little good content we've had lately and from what we've heard house of the dragon is good i might actually end up watching that this week hmm Oh, that's another one. Yeah, Arcane was pretty good, too. So if you haven't seen Arcane, I, I would recommend that. Yeah, wouldn't that heard. be the more recent one than High Guardian Spice? Uh, when did Arcane come out? Uh, Several like... months ago? I think it was almost a year ago. Was it that long already? I think so. I'm pretty November sure it was earlier yeah, this November, year. November 6, 2021. Really? Yeah. Ago. Yeah. Huh. All right. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd say Arcane is actually genuinely pretty good. Remember, the Obi-Wan writers are whining that having to follow Star Wars canon is hard and stifles their creativity. Then don't fucking write Star Wars. Yeah, write yeah. something else. I, write something I, that's not Star Wars. I despise these people with all of my being. I want to write Star Wars, but I don't want to have to fucking be limited to what Star Wars is. The why the fuck do you want to write Star Wars? Same goes yeah. with anything exactly. else. Marvel, fucking Fallout, anything. Exactly. I don't. I don't understand why you would ever like. Why would this ever be an issue, right? If if you specifically like, what if you would? What if I wanted to write something for Game of Thrones? You still alive? Oh, he's gone. He just he, he's he dead, Jim. Old. I stopped for a second because guess what just came in? I have cables. Nice. Oh boy. I can have two monitors now. Yay! I'm not on super poverty percent anymore. Hooray! Anyways, um, I. Oh wait, you're in the middle of talking. What were you saying? A bunch of bullshit, apparently. <laughs> He's gone. My brain, my brain is like, mm, what was I said? No, uh, but it's almost like Disney shouldn't have killed the EU and should have just expanded on that instead of you know trying to make a fucking mainline series that sucks. Yeah, but don't you know, Pagan, the the writers for the Disney movies oh, yeah. had no pre-established stories to base their movies off of. Yep. I know. I can't believe they can't <laughs> pull out of any of the fucking content that has been made. No, 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 years that, between. That, that's what I'm mocking, though, is they said it didn't exist. I know, it's so fucking stupid. It's like, yeah, it does exist, you just killed it, you fucking assholes. Oh my god, seriously, these cables are so fucking high quality, what the fuck? I know, uh, I know I ordered them, but I didn't expect them to be, like, cloth braided and everything, what the hell? 
<laughs> this is like, holy shit. Anyways, um... 13 month member message from Rage vs. ML. Thank you. How do you all feel about JRPGs if you enjoy them? You might enjoy SMT5. And how much would you uh how much would it cost for any of you to play it? Sadly, it's only on Switch. That's uh Shin Megami That's Tensei? Problem. Yeah. Um, that would be the problem would be the Switch thing. Like I would do it as 500 to get to the end of the game by itself on stream but somebody would then have to also pay for me to get the switch at the same time so my bounty would be pretty high on that one just because of needing to get the switch too right oh uh, smt5 is on steam now Ooh, okay yeah I, i'd put it down as, as 500 probably um i'm up and down on japanese and japanese animes jesus christ japanese rpgs though because they're just a lot of times they go way overboard and they're just like convoluted just to be convol just yeah. to be Japanesey. Yeah, that that shit I don't like. When they're more restrained, um I generally like them though. Lesger Dragoon is one of my all time favorite games. Breath of Fire three is one of my all time favorite games. Mm. Fucking old school JRPG. Mario and the Seven Stars. Holy fuck. Is that so fucking good? Mario RPG. That is a classic. I would play the fuck out of Mario RPG. It is so much fun. Um, Skyrim is my favorite JRPG. <laughs> yeah. uh, five month membership message from Dry Complimentary. Thank you. That uh, Griffin Gaming guy is truly something. Disgusting how he called you guys pedos. Yeah, that's fucked. Um, yeah, that's... That is defamation per se, everybody. Don't do that. Like, it's it's one thing if you... His well, commentary was Hassan Piker it. tier as it is, because yeah. most of it was just him groaning and being annoyed and saying, oh, God, these guys are stupid, and then playing, like, a whole bunch of the video without barely saying anything. But then he goes... He, he says stuff like, bro, you want to fuck animals. Like, What? Because we have animals for icons. Even though this is a guy who has an animal for an icon. Um, yeah. yeah, I. that's what I can't wrap my head around is this dude is so fucking stupid that he's going to accuse us of all this terrible shit just because we have animal icons while he himself has an animal icon for his channel and his channel name has that animal's name in it. It's like, dude, you, you're more of a furry than fucking us. Shut the fuck up. Yep. But even, yeah. Again, so so chat. He could shit on the video all he wanted, right? You would just be like, "Oh, it's just a dumb guy shitting on the video." Um, no, he went above and beyond that. He actually is making defamatory statements. That's that's beyond fuck. Yeah. That is that is crossing a line. Actually, yeah. that's not just crossing a line. That is legal territory. So. Yeah, that is. We could take that to court if we decided to. Anyways, um, holy shit, Lore Hunter, are you, okay, I don't um, know if this is a quote uh, already, or if he's actually quoting uh, a Dire Straits song I like, uh, don't point fingers at others, because you have four fingers pointing back at you. Mm. That's a line straight out of a Dire Straits song, I fucking love it. This is why the military teaches you the knife hand, all fingers pointing in your one direction. Knife hand. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, we did miss a super chat from Alpha Craig uh, because we were talking about the Shin Megami Tensei thing. Yeah. Five dollars from Alpha Craig. Thank you. Avatar: yeah. The Last End, uh, Airbender is good and is going to have a three movie trilogy soonish. I hope it will be good. But if not, there is more content for you guys to critique. Oh yeah. God, I I, I I have no hope. <laughs> yeah, I'm not hopeful for the movie. Um, if they do to the movie, I would just make one retcon. I would change the ending. I'm not gonna lie. I would force Aang to actually have to kill the Fire Lord to like complete his ascension as you are the Avatar, and this is what it means. You sacrifice of yourself for the world. I yeah. The ending to the show is very dumb, 
I agree with that, but my god, how many people, how many like fans would like lose their shit because of that though? Like oh, me I and you know. agree on that, but I'm sure a lot of the actual hardcore fans would like also I know. lose I know. their shit. I know Mauler, Fring, and Rags agree on that as well. I think Moodle agrees on it too. Oh, it, because it's it just, just such it a just better sucks. ending. Yeah, it, it was. It was like, yeah, make make Aang have to sacrifice his beliefs for the good of the world, because that's what it means to be Avatar. You need to be of the entire world itself. You can't just be about yourself. It, you, it's not just about you, Aang. It's about the entirety of the world. Yeah, I really hate that they got that fucking cop out shit at the end where the lion turtle teaches him. Fucking... Yeah, it's like, oh well, you could just take his bending away. We're gonna, uh, I'm gonna teach you bending, bending. What? <laughs> I just saw that image on right before you took it off screen. <laughs> I posted it in our chat. Itiko sent it to me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, I actually watched that video you posted in uh the Ace with Thorn thread on the server. Um, the guy responded... Yeah, the guy responding to his uh, new Elden Ring Dark Souls video. It's just mm -hmm. still more of Ace with Thorn being a fucking idiot. Yeah, fucking Elden Ring and Dark Souls fans deserve to be miserable because they're toxic. It, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> if, if Here's why FromSoft should add an easy mode. Because the hardcore fans don't want an easy mode. If it's added, it'll drive them away. And you'll have new people coming to the series. It's like, wow, you, you really love proving how stupid you are, don't you, Acer Thorn? Good job. Yeah, because yeah. trust me, uh, if, the one, if there's one thing you will ever learn in business design is you don't chase away your established core audience or consumer to try to chase the potential of new ones. I mean, it seems, oh, yeah. it seems <laughs> fine to do in Hollywood. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I said Gillette. <laughs> oh, and the gaming industry. We're we're remaking this game and updating it for modern audiences. Oh my god, yeah, the fucking... Oh, I hate that shit so much. The that's Gillette weird. commercials were hilarious, though. <laughs> they were funny. So bad. They and were it's... so anti-like what they were men. originally about. Yeah, it's like, okay, you guys realize you're a shaving product for men, right? Men suck, don't they, women? It's like, um, women are not your target audience. Oh, dude. Fucking oh. hilarious. Clearly they're trying to sell to the women with beards. I mean, yeah. That, should, that They want that to be their new user base, apparently. Um, ten month membership message from the Wayfarer. Thank you. Griffin calling you guys uh, those things sounds about as sussy as having a bunch of polling machines malfunction the day before midterms. <laughs> yeah. um, it is a bit suspect, though, because, again, he has an animal for an icon. It's in his channel name as well. And he's saying, because you have animal icons, it means you do these things. Like, is that an unintentional uh, admission on his part? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. It was like, that sounds like an admission of guilt to me. Cause like, he, that sounds he, like hardcore projecting. He very much seems like one of those people who can't understand anyone who thinks differently from him. Like, yeah. because we are nerds and care about um, the story and lore details of a video game, his whole reaction is, Oh my god, this is dumb, this is stupid, this is boring, you guys are autistic. And I'll take the autistic part, <laughs> but like that, that's the extent of his commentary because I don't know. I guess he can't understand being passionate about something and caring about something. I don't know. Yeah, he very much comes off as like the it's just an opinion, dude. Who or, cares? Or like Opinions can't be wrong. Well, it's, it doesn't even reach that level. It's just him being bored and not paying attention and mocking us. It's like. The lowest tier of reaction you could possibly have. Yeah. If he had just kept it at mocking, I really wouldn't have cared. Like, the fucking, oh, dude, they were bullied in school. They were, they were in sped class. They were outcasts. Like, whatever. Who fucking cares? But then when you take it to that level of accusation, though, it's like, okay, well, this stopped being a fucking dumb video and turned into just a hit piece. Like, yeah. what the fuck? 
Anyways, uh, I think we have one more super chat, then we need, really need to get to the video. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm just plugging in this cable and I'm gonna scream. Um, 10 pounds from Threadnought. Thank you. The real reason Aang didn't kill the Fire Lord has nothing to do with his pacifism. It's all about the age rating of the series. It'll be fine if he kills. Realistically, Aang has slaughtered hundreds. Yeah, I... The age rating is so dumb uh, of an argument, too. I'm not I'm not saying for you. I'm saying that's one of their excuses for it. It's the... Uh, you've shown people dying a lot in the show already. You showed fucking corpses. Hundreds of them at the air temple. Don't at me with this fucking, you know... And I'm saying this to the, the directors of that show. Don't at me with this fucking age rating bullshit. Yeah. It is kind of, it is pretty dumb because we do see people die. Like, even, there's even, like, off-screen deaths and shit where you can, like, hear the people dying and stuff. But it's like, you could have done that at least with the thing. You know, it could have panned away right before Aang does the, the finishing blow. And, you know, you get just enough to know, you understand what happened. Well, just you could look, do something. Just look at the deaths uh, Disney movies have. Like, I know a lot of people don't really, can like, think about it. But there are a lot of fucking people who die in Disney movies. Yeah. Like, I'm talking about the, the kids' cartoon movies, like Tarzan, and, uh... uh I think Beauty and the Beast has a death. Gaston, like, falls off a fucking cliff. Oh, man, the fucking Tarzan death is brutal. Oh, yeah, like, that one. <laughs> all you see is the shadow, but my god, it is... Cool. Yeah, that's a good one. That is a really good one. In fact, that's probably one of my favorites. Anyways, uh, video. Are you guys ready? Yes. Um, yes. Go. Cyberpunk is a new American anime that, from what I've seen, has gotten good reviews and been very popular. Being an anime, and being made by a company infamous for its degenerate propaganda, it's right in my ballpark to critique. The anime has... I mean, he's not wrong. It. Yeah, I do agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, this is a mixed mixed review because it's like I actually agree with a lot of this stuff, but then but then the way he tries to frame the anime itself, I have some issues with, and also just some of his critiques are kind of weird. But then there are some critiques where I'm like, yeah, I agree. The pacing was pretty shit at, at points where it, it starts to go a little too fast. But you know, when you only have ten episodes, you don't really have a choice. Yeah, I I feel like man, if this had five more episodes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or hell, if it even had just three more episodes, that'd be it would have smoothed out a lot of rough patches. Mm-hmm. Uh two dollars from Jylan Brunson. Thank you. Can you guys read my comment? Alrighty. Uh let me find it here. And you probably got YouTube mm -hmm. cucked. Uh yeah, I'm not seeing it. I might have scrolled past it. I'm looking for the orange icons, but it's mostly a guy with a C, not a J. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing it here. Oh, wait, I'm on top chat on the chat I was scrolling through. Whoops. <laughs> okay, there it is. Pagan. I like ass. Pagan. What? I like ass. A man I can respect. Such. I like big tit. A man I can tell where I bury my treasure. Kratosis. I like... Feet, a man of culture, I see. No, I don't like feet. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I really, really fucking hate it. Um, it is degenerate. It is unclean. At least you got the ass part right for me. Now, oh my god, I have two monitors again, guys. Praise the lord. <laughs> oh my god, nice. Now, I know you're gay, Pagan, but... <laughs> are you really telling me you prefer ass over tits? Yes? Are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, you'd have to, yeah. All right. The real question is, dick or ass? Oh, ass for sure. He's a top. <laughs> well, we already knew that. Alex Hoffman confirmed that a long time ago. <laughs> what about the cheese legs, Pegan? They're they're second. They're second. Cheese legs are second. What? <laughs> chrysalis <laughs> ah. yeah Chris, because chrysalis is insect like so 
one of the things to showcase more bug like nature is the fact that uh, the changelings have like holes in their legs and stuff. Do bugs typically have holes in their body? Um, no, yeah, in no. their body, yes. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of a, a thing like. By the way, it, it kind of have those insects will have those really weird angles and curves and stuff to a lot of their limbs. So mm. that's kind of what it's supposed to evoke. Um, but I saw somebody said something for me, and I got blinded by the sun coming out of the clouds as if to like praise like. Praise be, you have two monitors again. Ah, and I'm like, I'm blind! What the fuck's up? Two dollars. Yeah, hey, <laughs> Higgins oh. a giver, not a taker. Hey, 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 hey. I, I can do both, okay? I'm I'm a very fair partner, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can take and receive. There you go. Two dollars from a guy under a bridge. Thank you. The witch doctor got explicitly dragged to hell. What? Oh yeah, in uh, Princess and the Frog, the um, oh the voodoo guy oh, gets dragged right? to hell. Yeah. And five pounds from Threadknot. Thank you. Creed Tosas hates feet so much he walks on his hands. Yep. Sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> Inico, he <laughs> can play shortstop in baseball. Confirmed. <laughs> God. <laughs> Anyways. As many, which I'll be going over in detail, but it also deals with some serious themes worthy of looking at. Nihilism, transhumanism, dystopia, all of these will be discussed. Edra I agree. Yeah, I agree. But, but there are other aspects of it too. Um, dreams and hope and everything is another now, key aspect. Yes, so this is one of my issues I'm going to take with was he brings up nihilism. I don't agree with his assessment about how he portray about how he frames it. You'll see what I mean here in a second, but he completely sure. ignores a lot of the show. I, I just love the fact that I'm on this, the screen that still has the three and I see fucking Jonathan Archer on the other screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's see what Jonathan Archer has. To say. Runners also provides a great, Oh, I thought I thought he was gonna actually play the clip of him speaking. <laughs> nope. All right, I'll back up a little bit and we'll just uh, go through. It's worthy of looking at: nihilism, transhumanism, dystopia. All of these will be discussed. Edge Runners also provides a great opportunity to point out the problem with modern animation for adults as a whole. Now, to be clear, what? I don't have Netflix and I don't watch their programming. However, I will critique popular media like this when it's warranted. I've also never been a fan of the cyberpunk game franchise. I don't really... Well, I mean... <laughs> you can't really call a single game a franchise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unless you're including, like, the tabletop in that, but those are, like, wildly different. Oh, dramatically so. Yeah. Just, I, I just don't know. I... I mean, we'll see what he says for the animation for adults thing and yeah, stuff like that. Like, that'll be uh, uh, again. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what what his things. Because again, there's pit, bits here I already agree with. So we'll, we'll have to see. The animation now, for adults know. thing does have me a tad bit concerned because what comes to mind are the endless barrage of Family Guy clones. Because that that is definitely a problem. Oh, um, stuff like. Big mouth and things like that. We're just like, oh god. Paradise PD, all that shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, hoops. Mm. Mm. Um, shit like that. But yeah, that is just in an entirely different league from stuff like um, Edge Runners <laughs> here. Yeah. My favorite game franchise is the God Hand franchise. <laughs> A man of culture, I see. There's a God Hand is so good. If you've never played God Hand. Um, I won't tell you how to locate a copy, but if you manage to get a copy of God Hand, play the shit out of it, by the way. It is, it is an absolute blast. It is a wild ride that doesn't take, that takes itself completely seriously, but also knows it's completely fucking wackadoo, which is what makes it endearing. On the topic of animation for adults, I'd seriously recommend JXE's three-part series on Brickleberry, Paradise PD, and Farzar. Yeah, I watched all three of those, and they are fucking great. Yep, I watched them too. They're really good. 
really know, and I don't really care to know it. However, I think... You don't know it at all, and you don't care to know... Hold on a second. Yeah, I need full I've context. I've also never been a fan of the cyberpunk game franchise. I don't really know it, and I don't really care to know it. Okay, why? Because that because that can actually be a thing. If you say, oh, this is an anime, I'm only going to be focusing on it and the anime and what it tells us, it's like, yeah, that's fine, that's fair. That's understandable. But if it's, like, because you don't like this world and setting, well, obviously the world and setting are going to be the, ex the exact same here. So what, like, why why don't you want to know it at all? Yeah, I do find this part strange. I don't know why he has to include that bit, because what he says in a second kind of makes it pointless anyway. Yeah, and again, so so if you don't know anything about the game, don't bring the game up at all. How much of the game, like, let's say you've played both the game in its entirety and watched the show. How much would the game really come up uh, in discussion of the show? Aside from stuff like, oh, you could get David's jacket in the game. Not, not, not a whole lot. Much. There's a few things. It's like... There's like there, a there's, handful of references. There are cool nods, get. right? Yeah. Like, like watching the way that Netrunners actually hack into things, that's the way you do it in game as well. That You play that number game and everything. Uh, like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's a nice thing. You actually do deep dives by climbing into ice tubs and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, that's cool. You know, it, it's, it's just stuff like that. It's not so much that you need or require anything from the game at all, but it's obviously set in the same world, and it's kind of nice to get these little nods to the game every now and then. Um, who the fuck is Patrician TV? He's a guy who makes, um, analysis videos on games. He just recently released a, uh, very short, very, very short analysis on Skyrim, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. I, I recommend go checking it out. It's like 20 minutes long or something. Yeah, yeah, 20 minutes or hours. No, no minutes, minutes. I, I'm <laughs> like 90% sure it was minutes. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it, was, it was so long he had to he had to cut it up into two 10 minute sections yeah acritosis i think all this is going to amount to three liberals failing to understand traditional catholicism since this guy comes at it from that angle no offense so first of all i'm not a liberal i am definitely not a liberal that's no. for sure i am i am more libertarian and more conservative yeah i i am classic libertarian oh. and i tend to lean a Quite a bit more to the right. Yeah, same. Uh, Cantus says, I mean liberal in the old sense, not modern progressive. Uh, fair enough. Okay, fair. Um, how much is religion going to be like... Because yeah. if you say something that's dumb and wrong, that isn't justified because it comes from a Catholic point of view. You know? Yeah, it's... If you're getting facts wrong, it doesn't really matter what you're like, what kind of angle he's going with here. Yeah, yeah, it won't really matter. Like, if if he says that David's jacket is purple and has polka dots all over, it's like that's clearly fucking wrong. It doesn't matter if he's like, oh, I'm looking at it from interpretive like point of view. It's like, no, no, that doesn't matter. You're just wrong. Yeah. Five dollars from Jalen Brunson. Thank you. We are all adults, but you won't even let us send naughty words. Can you guys read my comment? I'm not the one who controls YouTube. whether naughty words are... Like, YouTube but will YouTube. stop you from saying fucking shit and stuff like that in Super Chats. Yeah, we do not give a shit what, what chat says, as long as it's not, like, super racist stuff. But, yeah, no, YouTube is super anal about that. They won't let you send it. It's annoying as fuck. We don't want them to do that. But there's oh, nothing um... we can do. Did you send another comment, or are you talking about the same one? Because I'm not seeing another comment from you. Here's here's the funny thing. I figured out... Or, sorry. We figured out on my stream that Twitch has a word ban that I had no idea existed. So it popped up in an auto mod from one of my one of my chatters saying it. The word was honky. Oh. H-O-N-K-Y is flagged for racism, discrimination, and hate speech on Twitch. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm not surprised. After that whole, um, uh, they banned somebody for that kind of shit where they were saying, like, honky and cracker and stuff, and they, they 
really they really cracked down on the word like cracker and stuff like that so i'm not surprised they threw honky which, in there as well which is fair again if you're going to crack down on the ones that are are racial insults for black people sure crack down on the ones that are racial insults for white people make it you know play by an even field but it's just so weird because honky is just such an old term and it's just one of those like really yeah i mean i'm not gonna complain because it is like hey at least you know if we can't say literally anything about anyone else then other people shouldn't be able to say whatever they want about white people so yeah exactly I, i'm i'm totally fine with it in that regard yeah because it was an, it was an old slur that black people would say to white people and uh back in the disco era just put it that way yeah why are you so press about using bad words what are you talking about? There's no issue with people swearing. Yeah, we do not care. You can cuss as much as you want. You can use as many fucking... Okay, well, maybe, maybe not slurs. I shouldn't say slurs, but, like, <laughs> if you say, like, cunt and shit like that, like, I don't even care if you say faggot. I don't fucking care. No one here cares. YouTube will, but we don't give a shit. Yeah, YouTube will crack on it. will crack down on it, though. There's nothing we can do about that. We can't say, hey, YouTube, stop that. They yeah. They don't care about what we have to say. See, oh, Dry and, Complimentary just said fuck, 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 fuck in chat, so... Yeah. yeah. Well, and see, the other thing, too, is that YouTube is super anal about what will be in Super Chats versus what's allowed in Normal Chat for some reason. I, yeah, it, I don't I don't get why they do that, but that is a thing. Maybe because the Super Chats are on receipts and they last or something, I don't know. Eh, but it, it's just weird. Yeah, I don't I don't get it. I think it's really stupid. Yeah. But will they allow NYs? Uh, sure. <laughs> yep. Anyways, video. Yeah. However, I think this puts me in an even better position to critique the show fairly, as I have no bias either for or against Cyberpunk. See, now that, that is a interesting position to come in from, right? If you have no understanding of the source material or anything like that, your only look is into the world itself, that is actually a really good place because you're not filling in the gaps for everyone. So you can ask the question and be like, that doesn't make any sense. That's why I was so insistent on Sir Ban and Pagan and Cree watching Dune 2021 without knowing anything about Dune beforehand. And I wanted yeah. to see if they were lost, if they didn't understand things, if something's going on. Yeah, That's I actually I agreed... I agree with this part that he's saying here. I completely agree with him that, yeah, you you having no bias one way or the other can actually help you, you know, review this better. Yeah, I came into this as well. Like, I had not played the games. I not I didn't know anything about the tabletop. I've, I'd only seen partial references mm -hmm. to the game at most. So the show is really the only thing I know about Cyberpunk. And it wasn't until yeah. after I watched the show that I even started looking into the game a bit more, so... Yeah, so I agree with him here. Dune had no Dune Slayer. What a shitty film. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking, just... speaking of Go Dune, ahead. I just picked up the DVD for it the other day because I've really uh, wanted to been watch it. Bleh. I've really been wanting to watch it again. Nice. I also grabbed The Lighthouse because that movie is fucking great. <laughs> $2 from Jalen Brunson. Okay, I just sent the comment. Um... The one, the one with Pagan. Pagan. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. I'll keep scrolling up and I'll I'll see if I see it. I'm in live, by the way. Can so you guys read my comment. We. Yeah, I'm live as well. No, we we did that already, Jylan. We did that the first time. You said, "Can you guys read my comment?" We did that. Like when you said that, we did that. That's what got us onto the whole discussion about uh, um, dick or ass. Oh, it was that comment. Yeah, we, we did that comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And spinoff or sequel, Edge Runner should be able to stand on its own two feet and be judged on its own merits. Yes. To an extent, yeah. yes. I will say the one thing he said, uh, any spinoff or sequel, it's like, Okay, yeah, but the sequel also does need to integrate stuff from what's before, right? Yeah. Because by yeah. virtue of being a sequel. 
Well, but I, I absolutely agree on spinoffs and everything like that. They need to stand on their own. I assume what he means when he says sequel is that, um, like, let's say you do have a second game in some sci-fi universe. Not cyberpunk, but just something else, for example. Um, the, the aspects of that world should be explained clearly enough in the sequel without needing the original, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Five dollars from Jalen Brunson. Uh, thank you. What the thank hell? You. Can YouTube delete our comments? Yes, absolutely. YouTube mm -hmm. does that all the time. Yeah. Which is there's, so fucking annoying. There's even been cases, we haven't experienced it, but other streamers have that I watch where they'll get a super chat and it's just removed message. It's like, I never removed that. Yeah. So. yeah. It's fucking stupid. Like, let us moderate our own fucking channels. Like... <laughs> We have mods, you know, let us moderate it. We don't need you coming in here and deciding what we want to allow yeah, on our exactly. own channel. Ironically, it is very 1984. And I say ironically because that 1984 gets brought up so in, inappropriately. No, this is actually appropriate. Yeah. Able to do that is failed writing. So, ladies and gentlemen... Well, I don't know if it's failed writing again, because you have sequels in there as well. As you said, spinoffs, I would 100% agree with. But a sequel, like, if this was Cyberpunk Edge Runners, like, Season 2, I don't think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you just cut that one part of his statement out, I'd agree yes. with everything he says. Absolutely. gentlemen this video on PaxTube, i'll be giving a serious critique of cyberpunk edge runners the anime opens in a dystopian future in a rundown but technologically advanced city called night city the streets are in complete squalor they're littered with trash um to, to nitpick slightly on this that's the lower areas of the city when you get he does plaza oh okay yeah. he does he does make the distinction Okay, Still, yeah, I, I do think it's a bit weird saying the, the city is run down when it's parts of the city. Yeah, yeah just it like is just any modern strange. city. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, of course the slums are going to be run down, but the high-end districts aren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we see when we actually have... And that's kind of the cool thing about David's journey to go to his school as you see the city start getting nicer and nicer the closer he gets to it. Like, he starts here in this shithole where he lives, and then he's even jumping down onto piles of trash and stuff to just go a little bit faster. And then we get to him on the tram, and he goes by, you see a rocket launch in the background, and the city starts looking nicer and more beautiful. Like, the, the colors are more vibrant. There's not as much grime everywhere. You get to see more blues and stuff. It's just like... Whoa, this is really, really nice looking uh, city with, if you ignore where he came from and only think about the corporate plazas. Oh, God, I just remember some of the jokes he's going to have in here. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I, I think you're going to like him, Seth. <laughs> yep, probably. But yeah, he... Um, I, I would say it's a bit of a scripting issue where he does clarify this stuff, but he also makes weird statements like that, where he says like the whole city's run down, but only parts. It's like, okay, well, which is it? Yeah. You can't, those, those are contradictory statements. Yeah, again, they... just, uh, just go through your script a little more. That's, that's all I'd say on that. Just, just go yeah, through your same. script some more. Graffiti. I just, this is completely unrelated to the video, but watch together has ads on it. Right. So you'll see ads underneath the video, ads to the side of the video. And I, why this ad came up, I don't know, but um, Brazilian Bum Bum Body Cream. <laughs> bum Bum. How appropriate, considering, you know, Pagan's an ass man. <laughs> well, it's not really appropriate since he gave the ad to you and not to him. <laughs> yeah, Do you have any secrets you're not stuff. telling us such? No, and... Now even even better now without uh, now that this is a fresh version of Windows and everything. And God, I hate the driver issue. I hate playing driver like whack a mole with troubleshooting. 
But other than that, um, all of my ads are wild. It's the wild west of advertising yet because they have no preconceived built up like ad sense on me anymore. So I'm just getting the weirdest fucking ads everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you gotta let them harvest your data so they give you the right ads. Yeah. Learn all your deep personal secrets. God, I hate that. I hate that so much that they do that. It's so <laughs> creepy. I hate going to random websites and then there's just ads that are like directly catered to shit that I've looked up in the past. And I'm like, why? Like, why yeah, that's... here of all places? That's so creepy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, Peg, they need to know your personal um, tastes and the things you like so they can advertise the right body pillow for you. The, the proper waifu bro uh, body pillow. Not one you're not going to buy, but one you absolutely will. Because <laughs> I, remember, I remember one thing that people found out was that um, Windows 10 and oh, Windows no. now in general... Oh, no. It is constantly. I, I'm reading. I read that too. It's constantly listening to your microphone, so it will pick up whatever you're saying, and we'll try to give you those ads as well because Cortana directly feeds to Microsoft. Because fuck Microsoft. Yeah, no. Um, if it's gonna do that, hang on. Browsers, 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 browsers. <laughs> Anybody even gets that reference? Which should be quite a few people. I love you. <laughs> See, Who wants to jump on the landmine? I, I feel bad about this, because that guy did seem like a genuinely nice guy. Mm. So, $5 from Jylan Brunson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pagan, the black guy we review on Halo do kind of look like a discount Uncle Ruckus of the Boondocks, <laughs> and I'm not the only person who is thinking it. No, you were not. You <laughs> I can were tell you not. that. I will tell you, yes, I will agree. You were definitely not. Oh my god. <laughs> I feel bad about that. That that even if it's kinda true, it feels mean. Because he yeah, does genuinely does. seem like a nice guy, and I really yeah, don't I, have yeah, any I have ill will towards him. him. Yeah, no ill will, nothing against him. It's just... It, the... he's, he's just a consumer. That's it. There, that's his biggest yeah. sin is he's just consumer brain. Which, that's not that big of a sin. Yeah. Yeah. It just means I'm not going to trust his opinion on media. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just the comparison is so hard not to make when you look at him, and then you look at the actual thing, and it's like, oh my god, it's actually really close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The funny thing was, we actually had that discussion before the stream started, and we're like, oh no. Because we realized how close it was. Yeah, we, before the stream, we were like, let's not bring that up, and then somehow it still got brought up anyway. Yeah. Alright, alright. Let's do this. Feedy, this squalor is in spite of the fact that the city has technology that's far superior to our own today. Really, if you just took away the technology, the city is just modern-day Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, no, yes. I, 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 I completely agree. Yeah, where, where is the lie? I detect none. <laughs> yeah, he's got some great jokes, I'll tell you. Like, it's a mixed bag with this video. Like, there's some things I really like, and then there's some things where I'm just like, no, you're wrong. Oh, shit, hang on. No, we gotta go back slightly, because Kree's on the next, uh, the next, very next screen. I want to go back slightly so people can see... The glory of everything that is in this, because there are jokes built in all over this place. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking gas prices. <laughs> you can live here for only a five thousand a month. Yeah. Oh, dude. Is a shanty under a bridge. Yeah, and he's coughing yeah. from all the. He's he's coughing, but the they have the smoke in the air to be to realize it's the fucking smog and everything. Holy yeah. shit. And then it's just like the band-aid over it all. It's like, but there's a pride flag. We're so progressive. Yeah, but it's not even a it's not even the pride flag. It's the it's the it's the abomination toxic, one. Yeah, it's toxic cancer, it's growth on the pride flag. It's the one where if you put three more it turns into a swastika. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the crackheads. Yeah. <laughs> God, anytime I see the Patrick coughing thing, I just I just always think of that fucking remix somebody did with that where it's just like him coughing and they turn it into a song. 
<laughs> it actually kind of <laughs> it's actually kind of a banger. Yeah. Technology, the city is just modern day Los Angeles. I'll note right out of the gate that while we're shown that Night City is a hellhole, it's never really explained why it's such a hellhole. It's just taken for granted that this squalor is the way things are. I mean, do you, does it really need to explain? Once once you get into like how the corporations work and everything like that, you can make logical deductions from there. He does kind of go into that a bit because the show doesn't really explain the corporations very much. It's almost like you're kind of supposed to know some of the cyberpunk lore before coming into the show, is what he was basically going to say. Yeah, I don't think so as much, because you just get... The big corporation is, is really, like, grim, right? Because, remember, in the very second episode, you already know he's going to Arasaka, and you see Corporate Plaza and everything. But you go to Arasaka, and... He's like, why are you showing me my own son getting beat on and everything? What's important about this? And then he, he, to highlight how unfeeling the corporations are, that he immediately is just like, well, he is my son and heir to my empire. So he needs to learn what it means to, you know, put the benefits of the corporation first. Yeah, it, I it, personally, it highlights it. yeah, I personally didn't need them to go super in depth about like why like just just explaining that like the mega corporations basically have replaced the government kind of was enough to be like okay i, I understand what's going on here i i see where this is going like i don't need a million iq to understand yeah you you don't need to even see like we don't even need to see this point you, when the very show first starts up and you see the cops they're talking about like how this one police officer he's not allowed to call off work or anything like that. He has to be out there at work, even though, you know, he'd much rather be with his wife and he gets, you know, they're going to fire him if he decides to do that. And then he immediately looks over to a guy standing next to him. And he's like, you want to get fucking shot? You know, like back the fuck away from my vehicle or I'm going to shoot your ass. And then he gets blown away. He, that's all you really need to set up for like how much there is no real governance in this city. It's very, very Wild Westy, kind of lawless. Yeah. No, it wouldn't surprise me. That that seems to be a common thing with people, that, like, when there's a criticism of capitalism, then those people immediately jump to the, well, capitalism is bad. It's like, no, it's not. This is a criticism of what happens if you don't keep things in check. This, yeah. this is what happens when greed and avarice and goes runs amok and empathy. We lose empathy. I can't fucking stand when people just do the whole oh capitalism bad as if the whole system is fucking garbage because there there's some injustice out there as if mm. like that that's not a problem of capitalism. It's a problem of not keeping it in check. Yeah. Everything needs to be fucking kept. In if you eat too much of a good food, that's bad for you. Too much of anything is bad. Yeah. So yeah, I hate when, like, when a single aspect of something is criticized and then it's literally like, yeah, the whole thing is just shit. It's like, fuck off. I hate that shit. Like, oh, God, you're going to fucking you. How dare you fucking uh, criticize, you know, lobbying or something like that. It's like, oh, well, then the, the see the whole system is bad. It's like. No, if I criticize lobbying, that doesn't mean that all of capitalism is somehow not, is fucking bad. Like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. It's not, it's it's not how the, that works. It was the same thing, the problem with uh, Outer Worlds. So many people only got the thing, oh, corporations are bad. It's like, no. In fact, y you meet Monarch Stellar Industries, and their whole thing is about how if they just think about this a little more ethically, if they just run their business with a little more empathy and care for the workers, how much better and more powerful their corporation becomes. And that, that's a fascinating part of the story is they have realized that the rest of the board doesn't like that they've realized this and tried to kick them out of the board. Yeah, it's really good ridiculous. question too. Honestly, the the whole monarch stellar industries and the iconic class very very good question. If you get the ultimate in, uh, outcome of that, mm -hmm. 
you know, unfortunately, a lot of people just they they just, they only look at surface level details and never go beyond that. And they're just like, oh, well, that means the whole system's bad. It's like, no, you can criticize an aspect of something without the entire thing being shit. Yeah. God. All right. Oh, shit. And three really questions it. Members of the audience who don't know Cyberpunk are left asking ourselves, why are things this way? Not really. Ooh, really? I, I like, honest. Why, why, how do you not need to know? You don't really need to know why things are this way. You just know that they are this way now. You could see the logical series of events that would have progressed this way just by seeing the way that um, Trauma Team treats them, right? They got to go to a public meat wagon instead of going through Trauma Team. You can see how the police are just handled as just cannon fodder and they're slaughtered en masse. I also, so it, it's just one of those, like, oh, go ahead. I also just don't think it's necessary to explain why everything is the way it is at the start of a story. Like, take mm -hmm. the original Star Wars, for example. There, there's this evil empire that's in control. Do we need the entire series of events leading up to this empire, like, being in control? Because, let, let's ignore the prequels for a minute. What if this is an empire that's been around for a thousand years? Yeah. Like, are we really supposed to see the entire buildup of that just to start yep. Star Wars? Now, obviously, that's not the case. They did tell the story about how uh, the Empire arose in the prequels, but the point is that that was something we didn't need, but it does help flush out the world, or, I guess, universe. Yeah, um, yeah why would we... Like, you don't need to talk about how the internet is gone in the cyberpunk world at all. But when we get to a character who's all about exploring the internet and explaining why the internet is gone and why it's now just local networks and hubs, yeah, bring it up then. We don't need it at the start because our main yeah. character isn't a net runner. To try and be fair to this guy, I will say something like, along, at least along the lines of like, it would be nice if the show would go more into detail about the history and lore, but at the same time, it's like, okay, but they had 10 episodes and there was already a bunch of stuff they had to cut that really shouldn't have been cut. Yeah. So what what are you supposed to do? Yeah, as it is, the show should have maybe been five episodes longer to fully flesh out everything we already had. If we had to explain the entire backstory to how things got here, it's like, Jesus, we're going to be here for a while. Yeah, exactly, because there's a lot of lore. I, I decided to look into it after I watched the show, and it's like, my God, if they tried to tell even half the lore of cyberpunk like this show would be like three seasons long so it's it's kind of a ridiculous uh demand to think that they could pile all that stuff into this short of a show i agree it would be nice to get that stuff but i don't know i i but like such said, you don't need to do it at the start. You can just trickle it in throughout the series and get all the pieces as the show goes along. You don't need it all when spelled out to you. Yeah, you don't need it all spelled out to you in the beginning. You can have the information trickled in later on. And again, you know, you don't really need to know all this stuff. It kind of works on its own without it, regardless. You, you don't need a high IQ to understand why things are the way they are. Yeah. Two dollars um, from a guy under a bridge. Thank you. I would ask yeah. why most homeless have some augments. Um, even then, I don't think it's necessarily something you need to ask, because what if they got them before they went homeless? What yeah, if that's yeah. the reason why? What if they spent all their money on getting augments, and then they couldn't afford anything else? Yep. What well, if it's like you're you're like expected to have some, some augments, where to the point where... Oh it's so prevalent and necessary that without them, you basically can't live. So well, we see that that's true. Remember, yeah. David is completely unaugmented, but he's not, is he? Cause he has an inbuilt headphone and everything. That's an yeah. augment. Yeah. He has some augments even at the start of the show. So it's like, well, there's, you know, there's, that's their decent... cell phone in this world. That's their phones. That's how they pay for things that, so that is a like a requirement to live sort of augment. Yeah, I could I could definitely see people spending their 
their savings to augments and stuff and then losing their house. Hell, look at the fucking people that are literally like getting jacked off in the street and shit and they bought like augments that do that for them. I could totally see them being like, yeah, I'm going to sell my house and get this so I can experience pleasure constantly. Mm -hmm. Like I could definitely see people doing that. That That's that whole uh, thing where people started thinking logically about like Star Trek and it's like if, if we ever invented a hollow deck, uh, humanity would stop progressing immediately. Yeah, everyone and would I, just I, spend their time in there. Look how many yeah. people right now swimp, uh, swimp. <laughs> <laughs> swimp. Look, look how many people now simp for retarded fucking thoughts on Twitch. Or there, there's some entertaining VTubers, but there are some people that kind of obsess in them the same way people uh, simp for Twitch thoughts. Now imagine yeah. there's a hollow deck where you could just generate any fucking waifu you want and fuck them endlessly. Yeah, and what Th there, generosity that would lead to. There would be people who would start that thing up and be in perfect health and they'd be pulling them out of their dead because they just fucked until they died. And again, it just be the imagine the degeneracy that you would fall into because you're constantly getting pleasure in this way and this way and this way and eventually you're going to overload that sensation. So that sensation is no longer going to do it for you. So you start twisting things a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more. And that's how you get to these, like, wild variances later and later. Alright, let's continue. That people who are already cyberpunk fans might know how the world got here but the show still has a duty to at least give the audience a summary i does it not really you don't need that kind of stuff yeah i don't i don't think it does you don't again in mob psycho 100 we didn't need to know about all the other psychics in the world or anything like that we just needed to know that mob was a psychic that's, that's all you really needed yeah, and again, you don't need a summary at the start. You can have all this information be trickled in down the line. Oh, and God, again, that's a horrifying thing to think about. Oh, God. Go ahead, go ahead. Do your well, I, I was just going to, I was just also going to say that, you know, you also just don't really need a whole lot of explanation for this. Like, it's, it's not hard to understand like why things are the way they are you don't really need a like a huge summary or anything to know like shit's fucked yep <laughs> it's like you don't need a huge summary for that new dollars from a guy under a bridge thank you very much the holodeck janitor must see some 40k level bullshit <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah I... <laughs> The There's holo some fucking event horizon bullshit going on when the hollow deck turns off and the janitor's called in and he's like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> yeah. Um, Star he would Trek be the holiest man on the entire show. <laughs> I never thought of a hollow deck janitor before, but now it's like, oh God, that'd be the worst job to have in the Star Trek universe. Yeah. God, I'm just thinking of that meme now of the fucking dude, like, you know, where he's like, hollow deck, uh, you know, he goes, he lists all this weird shit, and he starts undressing, and then one of the other people walk in, they're like, sir, this is a utility closet, this ship doesn't have a hollow deck. Actually, isn't that a <laughs> format of meme where it's like, hollow deck, uh, generate all this stuff, and turn the safeties off? <laughs> I I'm think pretty sure what I'm seen... talking about. I think the one I'm talking about actually does that at the end as well. Oh my god. <laughs> this is some deep lore. Imagine going into the holodeck. Holodeck, make xenomorphs from the aliens and turn the safeties off. Oh god. Oh no. Um, they're actually, now that I think of it, you uh, probably wouldn't need a holodeck janitor. Because anytime someone is finished, just, uh, yeah, transport room... Select all the contents of this uh, holodeck, of holodeck and beam just tra it. beam it like 72 miles off port side into space. Yeah. Beam it into the nearest star. 
<laughs> oh my god! R Romulan warship, captain, beam it in there! No, 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 the captain. <laughs> the captain. Every time they get to a new star section, he's like, alright, you pick the bridge number one. Where are you going to be captain? In the hollow deck. It's, oh, my, no. <laughs> it's my tradition. And then he gets done in the hollow deck, comes out all sweaty and everything, and he's like, he's like, oh, yes. Teleporter room number one? Teleport that into the sun. <laughs> that is horrifying. Like, this, is, this is their version of Shore Leave. Uh, we like edge runners, or at least I like edge runners. I think it sucks dick. Okay, well, we'll have to see why. Hmm. Yeah, we like edge runners. I guess that would mean complex societal problems that Netflix is scared to talk about. Instead, the most we get uh, are references. See, I don't like Netflix. Yeah. I'm I'm very much not a fan of Netflix and the stuff they do, especially when they host shit like Cuties on there. But yep. to say they're afraid of talking about that stuff with the show it seems a little bit unfair because it's just not part of what the show is going to be. Yeah, I need to I need to hear the context of that one more time just to make sure I get it. Ready cyberpunk fans might know how the world got here, but the show still has a duty to at least give the audience a summary. I guess that would mean explaining complex societal problems that Netflix is scared to talk about. Well, it's not Netflix. Netflix didn't really like have that much to do with this show. Like they might have financed it a bit, but it was CD Projekt Red and Studio Trigger that were the main cast behind it. And what if they just didn't want to talk about this thing? Not because they were too afraid of it or anything, but they're like, well, it doesn't matter. Right? Yeah, and again, they had 10 episodes to do yeah. this story, and they already had to cut stuff that they really shouldn't have cut, but they didn't have a choice. The pacing is an issue for that exact reason. They didn't have a choice. They, they had yeah. to get it done in 10 episodes. So, yes, yep. the pacing is going to be off. Guy who defended cuties needs a Kiwi Farms page. Oh, Vito has one, I'm pretty sure. And we're never covering him, by the way. I don't... Yeah. I don't want to give that fucker any time. He's already, like... Fuck. Um... When, when Josh Moon had his discussion with Medicare there a couple months ago, I pretty much agree with what he said about Vito there. That he's a hyper-contrarian? An attention seeker? No, that you you don't remember that conversation? Oh wait, wait, was that the one where you're saying like these people they like to highlight it themselves because it makes them feel good? Yeah. Yeah, I I kind of agree. And then play it off as a joke because that's how they get out of it. Oh, but I'm just yeah. joking. I I'm I'm testing the boundaries of free. No, you're not. You're a, a fucking degenerate. Fuck off. Yeah, it's those people. Hey guys, I I motorboat boobs. No, I'm just joking. This is like that. This is like okay. But yeah, no, I I actually do agree. I think I think Vito is definitely that. I think I think he's just trying to put on an act, but they they get off on the fact of like letting people know that that's who they are. Yeah. He also tried to uh, take down Friday Night Tights because they hosted Alex Jones as a guest. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah, what a piece of shit. Yeah. The most we get are references to the megacorps who run everything. But this still doesn't explain why the city is so bad. You, you don't need to, though. Again, you can understand, like, hey, there's no government here. It's the corporations, the megacorps that run everything. It's not hard to see that, hey, these corporations have no government oversight. They can do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, they don't really care about the people. They just care about profits. Like, yeah. they're not going to... They're not going to fulfill the role of an actual government. That's, yep. that's the problem. There is no government. It's just corporations. And when societies don't have some form of government they tend to turn into shitholes. Yeah. 
Or when they decide he has too much government, because, you know, then the yes. away. when the government turns into Big Brother, then instead of being an actual government for the people. Yeah, kind of like our current government. Yeah. Five dollars from Jylan Brunson. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, this time it let me send it. Can you guys read it? And I'm talking about a different type of kitty cat. Oh, no. Pagan, every time I see a kitty cat, I think of roast beef. What? Ew. <laughs> Do I even want to know? <laughs> what? It's like that really awful joke about how, like, ever seen an unopened rose. It's like, oh, fuck. Uh. Anyway, the show. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't corps care whatsoever about maintaining clean streets or public order? Why would they? They're mega corporations. They don't care about any of that shit. Yeah, what it doesn't what make them the profits. Um, if anything, it takes out their profits. Yeah, what what would they get if they paved and cleaned all the roads here in this ghetto? What what does that do for their bottom line? How does it benefit gonna, them in any way? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna have to pay for the work crews, for the material replacements and everything. What what do they get in return? The people are like, Oh, that, you know, I'm very grateful for you. Okay, cool, you're gonna buy our products? I can't afford them. Oh. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I swear to God, if he turns this into fucking... Like, oh, they're just criticizing corporations. It's literally just capitalism bad. It's like, fucking no. No, it's, no, it's not. You can... Guess what? The edge runners with Maine and David are are being capitalistic. Yeah, they exactly. They doing it, their jobs for money. It's so fucking stupid when people go... They, it, it goes both ways. You got the people who are like, oh, capitalism bad. And then you got the people who are literally like, well, if you criticize anything about this, you're a communist who thinks capitalism is bad. It's like, no, you can criticize shit like lobbying and mega corporations and, and gerrymandering and shit. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And all that shit. It's like, you could absolutely criticize that stuff. That is actually a problem. You want to know what a, a miracle was? A miracle was when Congress actually voted to take away one of its own powers and say, oh yeah, we're not allowed to increase our own wages until the next season. So we can vote to increase the wages, but then we have to be voted back in to get the benefit of it. It's like, that small little thing, thank fuck, I don't know how that ever passed in Congress and the Senate. No idea how that passed. But beforehand, they could set their own wage to whatever they wanted, and it was ludicrous. Yeah. I can't believe that was allowed to go on for as long as it did. Yeah, I'm I'm more shocked that they they voluntarily gave up that power. Yeah, true. That certainly um, wouldn't happen under our current administration. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, two bucks from Jylan Brunson. Thank you. Thank you. I'm talking about females, you know, down there. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, I figured. It's just, ugh. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I don't. There's a reason I'm gay. <laughs> Look down at that. They, whenever I see that stuff, I'm just like, oh, just I just think of knife wounds and shit. I'm just like, oh, no, no, no. Wounds it's, is the one I've always heard it as. It's like, oof. Yeah. Five dollars from John M. Thank you very much. They remove enough trash to prevent plagues and other problems from occurring. Yeah. Again, I would I would do the same thing if I was in this corporation things. What what would I get from cleaning up all this? Like this staircase right here. Oh shit, um, you don't see that yet. I'm on the, the staircase with a bunch of trash. But that, that staircase that David can't walk down because it's filled with trash, so he jumps off the side. What benefit would I as a corporation get from cleaning that, that up right there? In fact, think about it this way. What do you think would make you more money? Cleaning the ghettos and making it healthier for people? Or, or keep it exactly the same, but release a product that, de that helps them deal with that situation? Oh, you're getting yep. sick? Well, here's a new antibody system that will remo we'll remove all that stuff. And as long as you have it, you won't die from this stuff. If yeah. anything, you're more likely to make a lot more money doing that than you are than cleaning up the streets and making people healthier. Uh, Max Ender says, I would say the cyberpunk universe is capitalism unchecked, whatever that is. I agree. Yeah, I, I actually agree. agree with that. And it, it's, it's not capitalism unchecked. It's capitalism minus humanity. When, when you have no, no humanity whatsoever left in it. 
and humanity is a big deal in the cyberpunk universe with the whole going cyber psycho you forget who you are you forget what you are yeah um but yeah this is what happens when you don't think about your workers or anything like that you you only see things as i just want the money i don't care how i get it or anything like that Ed Runners is deeply based. Death to Adam Smasher. <laughs> yeah. Yep, numbers of profit. That, when that's literally all the corporations care about, when they have no semblance of ethical quandaries or anything like that, like it's the same thing with science. What happens when science loses its humanity and does nothing, you know, has no ethical, like, boundaries? Well, you have the Soviet Union. You have Nazi Germany. You have um, some other countries that I don't want to name. <laughs> like, yeah, when, when you lose, when you, you lose that sort of humanity, things get dark really fast. Oh, what, you don't want to talk about the uh, <laughs> the literal bloodborne that exists in reality? You don't want to talk about the UK? Yeah, the, the, the current <laughs> YouTube thing that may get stuff yeeted? Yeah, no, let's not talk about that at the moment. <laughs> not because we don't want to talk about it, but because we're not allowed to talk about it. You know, we literally can't. Yeah. So, again, it's the same thing. It's... It's all these things when they lose their humanity. That's the problem. And then there's some things that start with no humanity, and you're just like, why? Why would you ever advocate for that? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Sash, but the German science is the best in the world, okay? Look at H&K. I, I like Heckler and Koch a lot. I really do. Uh, but and uh, one thing that was the the paradox of it is we learned so much and society advanced so quickly because of those lack of ethics. But we're talking a lack of ethics to an extreme of like, can we just stick dye in people's eyes to dye their eye color so they're the correct color sort of thing? It's like, Jesus fucking Christ. Oh my God, the fucking eye tattoos. I can't believe people get those. That's, oh, there's something wrong with you if you're getting an eye tattoo. Yep. Ugh. I'm surprised Cree didn't jump in on that fucking German science thing, considering how much of a fan of JoJo he is. I was I was really expecting him to say something. Yeah. German engineering. <laughs> no, that's not really something I jump in on. Oh come on. No, I think really. start like. Yeah, that's a thing that happens in JoJo, but it's like a very small part of JoJo, and it. Like the best part of JoJo. <laughs> There's a lot of good parts to JoJo. I, I disagree, but again, I'm definitely the. There, there's a lot of tism parts to JoJo too, but there are a lot of good yeah. parts. Like JoJo needed his whatever Jo Joseph Joestar, I think was the second one or whatever who. Yeah. His whole thing was that if he could pre if he could predict what you were going to say next, he won. Like, oh my god, that's that. That seems a bit reductive of what was what was happening. It was supposed to be that he knew his enemies so well that he knew exactly what was going to happen from then on. But it's just like, oh, I just hated it because then they realized, oh my god, you're saying what I'm saying before I say it. That means that's right. I've got my mojo back. <laughs> like, oh. Oh, no, I just can't. I just fucking can't. It's a much memed line. Yeah. <laughs> Strollheim was a lad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Someone didn't give JoJo a proper chance. I watched three fucking seasons of that shit. And I just cannot, I cannot get into that show. Yeah, no, I do not fault anyone for not being able to get into it. It is a very acquired taste for sure. Like, even I was kind of like, eh, for a bit, but I did get into it eventually where I'm like, oh, you know what? I do like this. It is stupid, but I do like it. So yeah. what you're saying, Pagan, is that we're going to have to clockwork orange uh, Setch until he likes it. 
<laughs> yeah. I don't think you know how that's actually going to end up. It's not going to end up the way you think it's going to end up. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I still haven't finished part five. Um, right, part five. I did finish part five. I haven't started watching part six yet. Yeah. I got to the invisible baby and stopped. <laughs> and I haven't been that, able to go anywhere Hold since. on. That's part four. Is that part four? I thought that's that, part, I thought four. part four. Oh, the invisible oh, no, baby. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Because part three comes after. Right. Shit. Yeah, I haven't even gotten to. I haven't even gotten past part four yet. Then. I, I really enjoyed part four and part five. Yeah, I have not. I got to the invisible baby and stopped. <laughs> I can understand why you stopped there, especially since that plot line goes fucking nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. You can't corporations, and that alone explains why they're bad. No. Well, they don't just say they're corporations. They're mega yeah. corporations that have literally overtaken the government, and there is no government. That's the yeah. point. And and again, they don't just say all corporations equal bad by default. That's not what what they're saying. They're specifically pointing out, and they focus on Arasaka, in in this anime. Sure, Militech is in there a little bit. But the the clear focus is on on Arasaka, and it it is clear that this corporation has no humanity. Even it, we see a member of the board for the Arasaka school. He's really high up in the corporation. He's in experimental stuff that even other members of the corporation don't know about, and he's talking about how he doesn't give a shit about his son because his son needs to learn that uh, you know the corporation is worth more than than he is that sort of thing it's like it, it's clear this is the way arasaka operates it doesn't say that this is the way all corporations operate you can jump to that conclusion sure but they never say anything about that they're just showing this is the way arasaka operates because they're the they're the I'd say primary antagonists. They're kind of the background antagonists the entire way through the series. Because Dave, David directly deals with uh, Arasaka. He was at the Arasaka Academy. He gets thrown out of it because he's not Arasaka material, according to, you know, the, the stiffs that go to Arasaka Academy. So I, I'd say that Arasaka is the main focus here. Yeah. I wouldn't even say that there isn't government in the U.S. or anything. More like they don't have an influence in the cities. Yeah. Because the corporations kind of control everything in the city. These go back to more city-state uh, style things. Yeah. Um, five kangaroos from Dailyokan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't blame people. Uh, Jojo has a lot of monologuing and ass pulls. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it does. The, uh, he's underwater. He's now drowned. Ha ha. I have killed Joe. I've killed Joe Joestar. And it's like, ha ah, you fool. I learned this ancient breathing technique in a matter of milliseconds. And, yeah, <laughs> that ah, happens ah. a lot. Shit like that happens a lot. I always would roll my eyes whenever it would happen, but. Yeah. There's still there's aspects to it where it's like I really like this, and then there's also aspects to it where I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing? For me, it's a matter of a lot of the payoffs and good parts are so good that they outweigh the 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 badism parts of it. Yeah, I agree. That that's why I like it too. It's like the highs are really high, and the lows are low, but they don't go so low that they ruin it. Well, they they do for me, but they, they do for you. But you yeah. know, but some people have different tastes and stuff. It's like I said, I don't fault anyone for not getting into it. It, it is definitely an acquired taste. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I don't fault anybody for liking it. I just, I just can't. I, I have tried a lot, and I, I just can't. I yeah, can't. yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. All right. Also, isn't it interesting that Netflix, a corrupt corporation, is here to tell us what corrupt corporations really look like? But if Netflix didn't write this, 
yeah, the, I don't know why you keep bringing Netflix into this. They they just host the show. They didn't have anything with its production. Yeah, yeah I do agree Netflix... that they're a corrupt corporation. I absolutely agree on that one. But they didn't have anything to do with this other than maybe bankrolling it. Yeah, Netflix doesn't make everything they host. Yeah. Yeah, this was mostly Studio Trigger and CD Projekt Red. And Studio Trigger isn't exactly what I would call woke. And Poland tends to be pretty based, so I wasn't really too worried about it being woke. Well, not so much anymore with CD Projekt Red, because apparently they're going with ESG scores and stuff now. It's like, oh, fuck. Well, okay, they, they were based. Now they're not, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eat the bugs, bigot. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know why he keeps bringing Netflix up. Uh, it, it sounds like he just didn't really bother to research the show itself and is just making assumptions that because it's on Netflix, therefore Netflix must have had a big role in making it when really, no, they didn't. Yep. And yeah, that's, that's the thing I was talking about, John M. So John M. explains, the free city of Night City is an autonomous city located on the border between North and South California on the Pacific coast of North America. Yep. Like I said, it's a, it's a city state, essentially. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh my God. If he, if he says that Rebecca was only added because of Netflix, I'm going to be really upset. Mm. Just because Rebecca's tattoos fantastic references to uh, mm -hmm. Philip K. Dick with the uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep and of course the Shadowrun Dragon Skull and everything which is just so fucking cool yeah and she's a genuinely good character like I get people not liking the whole Loli thing but it's like I but don't know she's, she's just actually a, a well written character yeah she's actually a well written character so it's it, and, and she's not really a Loli she's just a short stack which mm. yeah, yeah she's short, a short stacks yeah midgets exist she's a short stack that's not she, nothing about her makes me think oh yeah that's a child no yeah. nothing about her makes me think that's a child I just think oh yeah, her, she's a, well, she's a mean, very short angry woman yeah exactly you mean her like anger pistol drawn rage of not being allowed in a bar if, if a short yeah. guy is called a manlet then what is a short woman called uh lady lit <laughs> Uh, Lady. She's a woman light. <laughs> <laughs> woman light, yeah. Yeah, I guess. I guess that would probably be the best. No, no. That, I, was gonna that... do, I was gonna do the joke. What's the short woman called? The perfect height. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Cork. <laughs> Cork. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. my god. Is oh, you not heard that? Hmm? I was gonna ask like some people are asking like short stack. I was like I was gonna ask like have you have some of the people in chat not ever heard of a short stack? Well, I think people are questioning it because apparently the definition of short stack is a uh, short woman with big boobs because they're short what? but they're stacked. Yeah, yeah, that that is true. Yeah, okay, maybe she's not short stack. She is. <sighs> okay, technically she's not a short stack because she's she doesn't meet the other. Yeah, Office she's just X. small. <laughs> <laughs> Latin X lit. Oh, no. Uh, no. All right. Think. Edge Runners just wants the audience to take it for granted that the people running Night City are all heartless scum and nothing can be done about it. I mean, yeah, that, that's just the world. That's the way it is. Yeah, that's... The Empire is in control of everything in evil in Star Wars. Okay, that's... Yeah, that's that's our foundation. That's our starting thing, so... Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I don't... I don't get this, this criticism. It's so weird. Like, okay, so we've got a fictional setting where things are different in the U.S., and it doesn't take a huge leap to be like, yeah, I understand why this works. I, I don't get the criticism here. It's just so weird. Like yeah, he same. feel like it feels like he needs an explanation of like, well, how did we get from current USA to this? And it's like, but you don't need that because that's not it's fictional. You don't need that leap. You don't need to do that. Like you don't need to go like how did we get from modern day Earth to Star Wars? You don't need that. 
Yep. It's just weird to me that he's even like making this distinction. Imagine you don't if need I, it. every story you tell, you have to also include the entire backstory of how civilization reached that point. Yeah. And obviously, yeah, the further yeah. off in the future you are, there's more you have to explain because how did we get from the Stone Age to the Roman Empire to modern day to fucking Star Trek? Yeah. I was going to make a joke about, like, oh, Dune is so bad because it doesn't explain. And then I was like, oh, well, I guess technically it kind of does. Yeah, no, you don't really need this. You don't need to add this. It's it's not a failure of the show, and it's not bad writing to not have all this stuff laid out in front of you at the start. You don't need it. I, I, I just don't get this part of the criticism. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. Dune never explain, uh, explains Spice. <laughs> Who was it we were watching that said that? Was that was Angry Joe. That was Angry oh! Joe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because the fucking uh, other Joe actually was, like, calling him out and being like, no, I, I remember they that part. It. I remember yeah. they explained it. They told us what it did. They told us it was the most valuable thing in the universe. And then Joe's uh. like, well, I didn't see it, so they must not have done it, even though fucking other Joe literally just said he saw yeah. it. So, oh, my God. I can't believe they actually aired that. $100 from a guy under a bridge. Thank you very much. Thank you. Granddaddy Blade Runner did it fine. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. It's like, so are you going to go back and criticize the fucking Blade Runner now, too? Angry Don't Joe watch. is a very special person. <laughs> very special. Yeah. I feel like Other Joe could really do well on his own and I is being so held too, back. Honestly. Yeah, I think he's being held back by Angry Joe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, John M. Oh, you were preaching to the choir on that one. 40, 40k needs to slow down and leave some of the history vague to keep it interesting. Giving Emperor a name and stupid details about his life ruined stuff. I agree. Yeah. I fucking agree wholeheartedly. We don't need to know how the Jedi use the Force. Oh, midichlorians? Oh, thanks for ruining that. Yeah, exactly. Back when it was originally just a mystical thing, and an energy that flowed through all life. Yeah. No, it's how many of a certain... Cell you have in your body. Yep. Uh, um. Back to the topic of Angry Joe, though. I think the two Joes should fight for dominance, and whoever wins takes control of the show. No, because Joe will eat other Joe. You've seen how big Joe's got. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, it, it should be a proper gonna, trial by combat. Like I don't want it. it, it we should can't be, risk it. It should be a trial by combat. Oh man! Yeah, no, seriously though, I I genuinely think other Joe, uh, it's like just from his personality and everything, because he's he's much more of like the happy, like, you know, it, every time I see him, it, he just smiles. Well, he There's seems to pay more people. attention to. Oh my god, I yeah. see it. <laughs> <laughs> Angry Joe. I, I still, uh, my favorite is still Ass Blasted Alejandro. That's still, I think, the funniest. I also like the JoJo fight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, we're getting off track. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Let's get back to this. In real course, things are never that simple. Poor living conditions like those in Night City can almost always be directly traced back to human decisions and government policy. Um, okay, but there's a lack of government here. That's the thing. It's it's yes. a city state controlled by corporations who don't care. In yeah, fact, yeah. it's actually more so, profitable for people to be living in squalor than it is for them to be living healthily because then they can sell products to the people to solve these solutions that they create. Yeah, so his whole thing is like, it's always a product of human decisions and government policies. Like, okay, there is no government policy. We'll just say the governing body are the corporations and their policy is don't help the poor because then we can sell them the, the cure to what ails them and human decisions. Yeah. It was, it was the people here who decided to dump their fucking trash there. I agree. Again, that's not a problem in the show. You're literally saying like how this happens. Like, yeah. And that's how it happened in night city as well. Well, let's take an yeah. example since it's on screen. Um, how many people do you think live in Night City? Several million, right? 
Yeah. Okay, so you can pay for the uh, better medical treatment or we'll leave you in the street to die like a certain character in the show. And, you know, they, he gets her to the hospital and she's uh, stabilized, but then something happens and they don't have the right package, so she dies. As far as the corporations are concerned, so there's another several million people in the city who could have paid us and we're not concerned that your mother died because she couldn't. It's all about the money for the uh, megacorps. Because that one person dying won't affect them. But that one person paying them is paying them. Yeah. Uh, $5 from Jylan Brunson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, it's time to cancel Pagan for wearing blackface. Wait, what do you mean he stopped wearing blackface? What do you mean he met a furry teach? What? <laughs> Hey, it was never blackface. I was just a shadow, goddammit. Hey, you're supposed to be a shadow creature. Uh, John M. says it's a population of 6,964,425. Yeah. And if some people die in accidents or fucking drive-bys, gang violence, um, if those are paying customers, then the megacorpos are getting paid. If they don't pay, then fucking goodbye. Yeah, it's, it's not an issue to the mega corporations, because mm -hmm. they're definitely not running out of people anytime soon. Yep. Yep. Yeah, this is oh like yeah, a and city like uh, where there's only a hundred people in it. Yeah, and like Tyler McDonald said, you know, like like should have subscribed to our trauma team premium care package. Sucks to suck. Yeah, yep. like th there's another aspect that shows like the part of the problem. It's like yeah, they you don't even get care unless you pay for it because. The corporations are in charge, and they want money for everything. Yep. It's like it's literally shown in the show that his mother ends up dying because he can't afford the health care. And the moment there's a complication, well, sorry, kid, your 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 plan didn't cover it, so she's fucking dead. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. Yep. And this is a problem that the corporations themselves create on purpose yep. to try and squeeze more money out of people. Oh, well you want your plan to cover complications. Well, you got to pay for the bigger package. Yeah. Again, it's easy to understand how this turned into a shithole. It, it's easy to understand. We can see how the corporations behave and you can make a logical series of deductions based off of it. I do want to mention tentacle dudes comment though. So on, dude. Whoa, is that fucking blackface, my dude? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm a shadow demon. This isn't a costume. Get the fuck out, man. Pagan proceeded to be cannibalized by the Halloween party. <laughs> yeah, it literally. <laughs> that's basically what it is now. We should oh, watch God. Smiling fucking... Friends again at some point. Yeah, I fucking love that scene so much. No, no, no. I, I'm a literal forest demon. This isn't a costume. Get the fuck out of here, man. They just start ripping them apart. Oh, my <laughs> God. That is so good. <laughs> Oh my god. Jylan Brunson with five dollars. Thank you very much. What is like to be different? Teach him how to raise his head up and he met a farm equipment that teach him it's much better to work for yourself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll always say be your own boss is definitely uh, the way to be, but you know, go get you, go get you that fucking money. It's too bad that phrase has been ruined by a certain game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. A say hellhole is not an inevitability. This lead. I agree, but we see that this this city did go down that path. We see that in action. We see that through the corporation's deeds, what they say, how they treat, how the fucking board member treats his own son. Like you can see how it turned into a shithole. Yeah, and part of it is because people have become so augmented and shit and so disconnected from reality that they don't really have humanity anymore. Like, this is all pretty well spelled out throughout the show. Like, we completely understand why things are the way they are. It, it, you piece it together all throughout the show. They're, you're constantly getting hints yeah. and just explicitly told, and this is why this is the way it is. 
the show itself does a great a great leap into this all the sex scenes that you see it's treated as very dehumanizing it's very rough aggressive fast paced and if not like shot pleasantly or anything like that you see people that are obviously engaged in these scenes just laying out on the streets with, with jack off modules like working their dick like that it's one of those like it's not treated as like some oh it's so risque or anything like that it, it's treated as like whatever it's nothing it's meaningless it, it's lost that that spark that sensuality to it now it, because it's just there's an overabundance of it it's the mm. it's the brave new world problem the the feel goods um, where people would constantly go to these so they would stop taking care of themselves anymore because they could just go down to the local feel goods and they'd, they'd pay some money and they'd feel good for a time. And that's how that world turned into a hellhole. That's if you keep saying jack off module like that, Cortana's going to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Microsoft, no, stay back. I know what your next ad is going to be when the page refreshes them. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> right now it's uh, the White Lotus Big Little Lies in Succession on HBO Max. God, just wait until they, like, fucking get, give such an ad for, like, oh, hey, the anniversary edition of Halo Reach is coming out. Would you like to? <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, God. Halo Reach, the best game in the franchise. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, everyone is just apathetic and just doesn't care. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, like that's the whole world now, basically, though, especially in Night City. It's everyone has augments. Everyone has been disconnected from reality. We literally have an issue where people are relating more to machines than people and they go psycho. Yep. And like it's to that level. And then when you put people who are like that in charge of the city, yeah, you get an uncaring, unfeeling world. Yeah. I don't know if there's something wrong with me, but I was rooting for Adam Smasher by the end of it. I wasn't really rooting for Adam Smasher, but it was nice to see him portrayed competently and as the big bad boogeyman he's supposed to be. Yeah, it was he, nice he was... to see that he wasn't a complete joke in the show and that he actually had some presence yeah. to him. That was nice. Yeah, he was genuinely intimidating and terrifying. And yeah. I don't mean that in the whole thing, like, I was shaking in fear or sort of thing. No, no, it just it was obvious that he was different. Like, especially when she, and she's been shown to be an amazing netrunner. She's, she's somebody who survived running the deep web with all the demons and rogue AI and everything. And she tries to hack into Adam Smasher, and he looks over nonchalantly, un, unlike moved by her attack against him reaches up and actually pulls out the alternate reality jack in from his own head and she's like what the fuck how did you do that so again that's that it would be like fucking lovecraftian monster in the in the uh fucking cyberpunk universe mm -hmm. oh fucking <laughs> that quote that just makes me think of the exact thing of uh <laughs> it's like kill him quick <laughs> who the fuck are you yeah i love <laughs> Do your that. fucking job merc <laughs> yeah who the f i i love the effect they gave on his voice as well that like yeah. weird cyborg droid type of uh like borg uh effect they gave him it sounds so fucking good oh, who the fuck are you <laughs> It's yeah, good. exactly. He's like, you're trying to order me, Adam fucking Smasher around? Bitch, <laughs> I am Adam fucking Smasher. What piss in are you? It's just like, oh, it's so... Can yeah, you I really genuinely... afford distractions right now? I genuinely think that the English dub was really well done. Yeah. The big problem... With this, it's the problem I have in comparison of um, um, Attack on Titan, the Japanese uh, with English subs versus the English dub. I think the English dub is not very good for Attack on Titan, all things considered. Because there's a lot of lines that they say things 
that in essence mean the same thing, but they lose a lot of the subtlety, a lot of the symbolism. Like, you know, when, when they're talking about, when they're trying to figure out who's the traitor within the, within the Jaeger core. He's like, who do you, who do you think you can trust? You know, versus, versus who might you suspect? Like, yeah, it, it means basically the same thing, but one of them is, is more like, hey, keep your head on a swivel, and the other one's like blatantly like, that guy's sus. It, it's stuff like that, especially when you get into stuff where it's supposed to be more vague, and you're supposed to put the pieces together. A lot of that stuff can ruin it. A lot of the, the English dub can ruin things, like can ruin the suspense. Yeah, that's why I tend to uh, lean more towards subs than dubs. But but mm. when you get a good dub, oh, man, it's yep. so nice. Stuff like Cowboy Bebop and now Edge Runners and stuff like that. It's like, oh, mm. so good. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is another good example. Yep. Kretosis, uh, have you played God of War Ragnarok? Uh, no, I haven't. I don't have a PlayStation 5. Um it's nice that they released a game for it. Um, <laughs> it. It looks like it could be fun, though. I watched about an hour of Mahler's stream the other day, and it looked decent. But uh, apparently there's also a lot of hand-holding in that game. Like, yeah. the uh, NPCs will constantly tell you how to solve puzzles. That I could see getting tiring very fast. Yeah, I know the first game did that really bad. It was your uh, your son... I forget his name, but uh, yeah, anytime a puzzle would come up, he'd be like, oh, I know what this is. You you need to do this and this and this and this and this to put it here and here. And it's like, well, thanks for just explaining the entire fucking puzzle to me. So what's the point of having a puzzle if a character is just going to explain it to you? Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know why they even bother to add the puzzle sections, to be honest, especially in the first game. They felt so pointless. Like, it was literally just meant to be a distraction from the combat for a few minutes and that's it it's, hmm. a, it, it's just lame the story crafting is really good as are the character arcs but oh boy is it some basic bitch gameplay hmm. oh that's a shame to hear I, I don't I don't mind some basic bitch gameplay if the story like the story is what always really gets me um playing Saints Row 1 on totally legitimate hardware 100% for <laughs> sure um, with a controller, obviously. Um, the gameplay, for what it was for its time, it was fine, but you couldn't really aim precisely with a controller because the way the, the joysticks work, um, it was actually easier to move the character back and forth, like make them run back and forth, to land the crosshair over an enemy, rather than standing still and moving the uh, crosshair um, moving your character's aim to be over a character. Yeah, um, absolutely. But I found the game so enjoyable that shit like that was like a minor inconvenience to everything else because I was just really enjoying the game. I don't have a PlayStation 5, but if you want to see me play it, donate to my OnlyFans. I don't have one. It's, it's, <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that. Well, there have been people that have been, like, for bounty games, been suggesting bounty games on stuff that's, like, PS4, PS5 exclusive. So I'm like, guys, you need to understand, if you're going to do the bounty, I'm going to add in the charge for the console as well. Like, come See, on now. I would feel bad about doing something like that, because it's a console I'm probably not going to use all that much. It's like, I'm not... I'm not going to make someone pay for a console for me just because they want to see me play God of War or fucking whatever. Well, that's why I tell them. That's why I try to dissuade them. It's like, don't pick that as a bounty game unless you're some crazy person. It's like, here, I'll give you the thousand bucks to do it and get the console and everything. Be like, oh, okay. I mean, fine, crazy person. I'll take it. So that's why I always like, if you just pick, if you pick a bounty game that I, I can have access to, it'll be much cheaper bounty. God, one of my mods tried to get me to play uh god I, I don't know what it's called it's some weird japanese thing but it's basically just a fucking visual novel game but with like porn 
like fucking like anime girl porn basically but it's like a visual novel and he, he tried to get he tried to like pay money to get me to play that i'm like i'm not gonna play that on stream he was like I, but uh, <laughs> he wanted me to do like every single ending and everything and his offer was twenty dollars i was like dude i wouldn't do that for a million dollars fuck off <laughs> yeah that's like instantaneous <laughs> instantaneous yeah yeet. yeah i was like hell no <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's asking for name of novel. God, I don't even know. Oh, wow, Gertosis, wow. What? I have done nothing wrong? <laughs> Your moral compass is fucked. My moral compass is perfect. Yeah, it points straight down where you belong, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 Hey, Kratosis, yeah. when is the death battle between you and many a true nerd going to happen? I don't want him to die. No. Yeah. I definitely don't want to be the one to kill him. Look, I just disagree with his terrible videos I've seen. I'm sure he's a fine person. Well, I hope he's a fine person. I... I would hope that he is. I assume that he is a good person. I think he just made a few really terrible videos. Yeah. Well, I know we can't ask Pagan to play a Morris. Oh, <laughs> All right, here we go. Leads to the first problem of the show. It promotes a nihilistic worldview. Uh... But no, it doesn't. It doesn't. What? So this is where I had an issue. Uh with his video like really hardcore issue was like yeah no it it definitely has nihilistic aspects to it but yeah. i wouldn't say it, it pushes a nihilistic worldview if anything it you know it, it 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 pushes a rather hopeful one especially at the end where it's like yeah you can you can get out just don't make these mistakes yeah and again his it it focuses more on dreams like it, dreams are pretty heavy theme of this. It's like fucking yeah. Yakuza 5, except you know, Yakuza 5 beats you over the head with fucking dreams. But this is like, it's obvious that, why are you chasing your mom's dream? Like, you should chase your own dream. Well, there's nothing wrong with working for somebody else's dream. Is that your dream? And he shows the moon poster and everything. It's like, yeah. Again, they, they focus pretty heavily on dreams. Sure, mm -hmm. it's a nihilistic world, and there are people that, like, revel in it. Like, again, the BD, the brain dance artist, he revels in the nihilism of it, because that's what his customers get off on. Yeah, he's about to make some really shit takes, so get ready for that, because th this is probably the biggest issue I had. I didn't watch much of this, I think. I think after this part, um, after he gets done talking about the whole nihilism thing is where I stopped watching, but this is definitely where I had my biggest issue so far with what I'd seen. Yeah. Alright, well, let's see what his view of this is, because I don't agree that it promotes nihilism. But let's see I don't either. It yeah. That people have no power to change the systems they live in, despite the countless historical examples of that happening. Okay. So that's a huge fucking issue. So, yeah. yes, just because it's happened in the past doesn't mean that one dude has the power to change an entire city's structure. It, yeah. It's controlled by mega corporations that have their their reaches, their claws into everything. Mm -hmm. he, he can't just undo that by himself, willy-nilly. It, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, and not, and not to mention, like... He does change his, his fortunes. He goes from living in this shitty apartment where they can't even afford to run the fucking washer and dryer into living into a Skyrise apartment later through his own hard work and deed. Yeah, what is yeah. clearly like a very luxurious penthouse or something. Yeah. Yeah, he, he goes he from changed... squalor to living to living a pretty good life. Yeah, he changed his lot in life. And this is over the span of about a year, I think, the time jump is? I, I don't mm -hmm. know how long. It's about a year. 
Uh, well, that was a stupid take. Also, hello there. Hey, Gronius, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's... Historical examples don't mean shit. That, too. Um, yeah, it, it really doesn't hold any water here, because it's like, so what if it was done in the past? That's not what this setting is. It's so dystopian that that's kind of the point is that it's extremely dystopian and there's not really a lot anyone can do. That's why dreams are such an important thing here. It's like, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to make of your life despite the situation? Yeah, and we see that hard work and perseverance pays off. In David's case, he becomes an edge runner. He decides that he's going to take control of his own fate as much as he can. What, what little he can do he will grab the reins with both hands, and it works out for him, to an extent, mm-hmm. I should say. He has a nice apartment. He is, he starts getting nicer technology and everything. He starts making a name for himself, so he gets more and more contract work. He in did fact, that. yeah, in fact, if it wasn't for the fact that he started to go cyber psycho himself and shot the uh, the girl in the in the factory, and then you know also if. Uh, Lucy didn't get caught trying to kill all of her targets that she was going after. Mm-hmm. Like otherwise, they would have been perfectly fine. They would have had perfectly good life, yep. despite yep. how the city is. They would have lived a good life. But because these things happened that threw them off their course of a nice life, you know, it's like it, it's not completely nihilistic. You can make a good life for yourself in the city it's just very difficult yep uh, and john m is bringing up the afterlife bar uh you can achieve dreams as long as you are not trying to change things why do you think the bar names drinks after dead patrons it is a bleak setting yeah the bar is literally called afterlife and they name it after people who die gloriously and in in different ways well, not all of them die gloriously in different ways, but you know what I mean? They they have, like, the, the Johnny Silverhand drinks and everything like that. Also, I want to go back to the point of uh, real-world examples quickly. What about all the real-world examples where things didn't fucking change because of one person? Yeah, or all the examples where they tried to change and then it failed and went right back the same. I mean, exactly. we could totally change North Korea if just one person decided to stand up against the system. <laughs> yeah, or, if or, or China. Person, I was about wait, to say, wait, if wait. one person would just stand in front of of Chinese tanks, it would change <laughs> everything. Yeah, if Ai only. Wei, um, is an artist in China, and he keeps like calling out the Chinese government and doing all kinds of like writings and everything, uh, writings and artwork and art pieces that depict the government as evil and corrupt. And yeah, that changed a lot, didn't it? Oh no, it actually like has affected his life and his family and everything like that because China's an authoritarian regime. Well, who would have guessed? Yeah, who would have thought? Oh, um, yeah. 5th of November, anyone? Yep. Remember, remember, mm-hmm. the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason, and plot. Yeah, what a shit take. <laughs> like, I'm, this is just really bad. Like, nothing about this take works. This is kind of the equivalent of... It's very rare. You hardly ever see this because usually people aren't this stupid. But it's starting to kind of sound like the very few people who try to say like, oh, well, Berserk is just uh, basically the same thing. It's just nihilism. Like, there's no hope to it. And it's like the whole point is that Guts never gives up. Like, that's like despite everything he goes through, despite all the torture and horrific shit, he never just lets himself die. He never just lets his friends get taken. You know, like he does everything he can to stop it. And he gets those moments of like reprieve and moments where things are actually looking up and yeah, they come crumbling down, but he still never gives up. It's still very hopeful. It's very, it's great for if like, if you have depression and it's just like, yeah, it's fucking, keep going don't just don't just end it because you're having a bad time now yep keep keep pushing forward keep moving exactly and it's just like so whenever i hear people say and you oh it's it's a nihilistic and just completely downer worldview it's like no it's it's definitely very dark and depressing but it's not nihilistic there's nothing where it's where they give up it's very hopeful 
And then I get the same thing here with Edge Runners. Like, yes, it's very dystopian. It's very fucked up. There's a lot of shit going on where, yeah, shit's fucked. And it's very difficult to get ahead, but it's not impossible. And you can always leave. Yeah. All right. For those, nihilism is a philosophy that believes that nothing anyone does matters and that life is pointless. One of the core tenets... Mm, to an extent, yes. That it, That is kind of what nihilism is. Um, so you have the, the different tenets and branches up. If, if nothing matters, then what you do is more powerful because nothing does matter. So you decide to be a good person or whatever. And then you have the other ones which just wallow in the nihilism. So there are different aspects of, of nihilism. And I've met people that have different uh, viewpoints on nihilism. I've met one who, nothing matters, it's all shit, no one will remember me after I'm dead. So he constantly lived his life just in the fast lane at all times, doing whatever he wanted because it made him feel good. That's all, all he gave a shit about. And I met somebody who had the same type of worldview that nothing matters. So if nothing matters, I'm going to do something to try to make things matter. You know, somebody who rebelled against the idea, but they still believe that nihilism was true. They just use it as a motivator for their good deeds. So again, it, nihilism has interesting implications, and it all depends on the person who believes in it and who views nihilism as a truth. But I also just outright disagree with his... Um, like, if we go with just his definition where if he's trying to say that this show is trying to push the idea that nothing and nobody matters, life doesn't matter, I would disagree. Like, mm. the show seems to take a very strong point of life does matter. Yeah. Life is extremely important. Hell, just look at Lucy trying to keep David alive throughout the entire thing, and then ultimately it ends up being, well, David sacrifices himself so Lucy can live because yeah. he feels it's more important that she lives because life matters. Yeah. So right there, I would already say you're wrong. Yeah. Um, as someone who suffers from depression and anxiety, you do have to just take it little by little and day by day. Yeah. Yep. Again, when you... I fell into that too after the Marines and everything like that because I felt like that was my kind of hope. That was kind of my you know, goal that I had decided that was what I was going to do with my life. And then that was taken away from me. Pretty fucking crushing. And then I had to slowly keep working at it and just keep putting myself back together after that moment. I eventually got out of it, but man, do I feel like I'm way behind now compared to everyone else. Because I've had that, you know, over a decade of like trying to get back on my feet and get momentum and, you know, wind in my sails sort of thing. Oh god, wait, no, thinking about it. Two decades. Ugh. Fuck, I'm not old, you're old. <laughs> Just don't think about it. Yeah, exactly. ...of nihilism is its opposition to traditional Western philosophies, especially Christian philosophy. It's become a popular worldview among the people with power in America, and they love... Has it? I don't, I don't think nihilism is a popular view with people in No. Control. In fact, I feel like it gets mocked more than anything. Yeah. Once you have that, oh, nothing we do matters? Bullshit. I can snap my fingers right now and have you executed. And all and because I have money. It, you know, it's one of those things like, I'd say it's not nihilism. It, it becomes a gross egotism, gross indulgence in yourself and your own power once you get up that high. Yeah. Like, yeah, as Duncan says, and I agree with this, no, the elite engage in self-worship. I agree. Yeah, exactly. I I don't think nihilism is extremely popular in the West. Yeah. In fact, it's kind of to the point where, you know, you kind of have to be hopeful. And if you don't, you get criticized pretty, pretty hard if you make a story that's completely nihilistic. I don't think any, like, it would get criticized to hell and back. Kind of like what you're doing right now, because you're assuming that this show is nihilistic, which it's not. But I don't think so, because 
kind of think the original movie Stalker might is pretty nihilistic. Um, yeah, it's pretty fucking, especially its ending. Oh, God. Stalker's ending is creepy as shit, too. This is fucking tangent time. Stalker had, had some of the best um, special effects I've ever seen for that time, especially for a Soviet film. And he, uh, when they're leaving the zone and everything like that, and he finally gets back to his family because he thought he was going to leave his family. Like, this is going to be the last time he was never going to come back and everything. Um, but he goes back, and he then, uh, as they're walking, they walk along the shoreline right next to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant a year before the incident happens. And th th again, this, this movie was made a year before the incident happened. What a fucking bleak ending of it looking on like, because it's all in black and white and everything. And it like zooms out and you see the, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and everything in the background. It's just like, Oh God, the, that is, that is more dark in hindsight. Yeah. Um, but I think you get what I mean. No, Kevin, sorry. Kevin Rico said, the book, the road, uh, Stalker, like the game. Yeah, I'm talking the movie and stalk. Highly recommend watching it, actually. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty decent um, uh, Soviet film, honestly. Very slow paced. Very slow paced. But it's a very, very good... Uh, a very good Soviet film. If you, if you can get over the fact that it's not a lot of action or anything like that, it's more people like talking about how dangerous the zone is and and like wanting to change themselves for the better, so they want to go to the Wishmaker and everything that's in the in the heart of the zone, and so they need to take stalkers who can take, guide them in that guide them to it. Uh, Legionary Hunter says nihilism only is popular to redditards and internet rejects. I wouldn't say it's only popular with them, but I would say a lot of them tend to, a lot of those type of people tend to lean towards it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say it's popular and I wouldn't say that a lot of people support it or like really love it so i don't know it just seems this again it just seems like a weird criticism that doesn't apply to the show and also doesn't really work the way that he thinks it does in the real world as well yeah um adam bartolome says how was the video so far it's not it's actually not that bad he had some he had some good jokes and uh he uh, had some uh, decent points that we agreed with but he has a lot of stuff where i agree with 90% of what you said, and then this 10% is the off part sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Easily the best video we've covered since the 50th stag. Easily, so far. It could so go far. wildly off the rails, but so far yeah. it is easily number one of the videos we've covered. The, uh, the last one we covered, we, we said the same thing, and then near the end it was like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> near the end, it's just like, it's like they just wait till the halfway point. They're like, okay, I've gotten rid of all the people who... I've gotten rid of all the normies. Now it's time to go fucking crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm worried that this might happen as well, where it's like, so far it's been pretty good. There's been some yeah. stuff where we, we don't agree, but it's not like, you're not stupid for thinking it, you know? Yeah. It's just like, it's, it's just a different... It's more yeah. that you would need that sort of deal. Yeah. It, it, so far it's it's been pretty <laughs> good, but I'm worried it's gonna we're going to get like halfway through and then it's just going to become completely off the walls fucking just crazy shit mm -hmm. and now for my guest matt pat <laughs> yeah oh god imagine oh you know what? that'll be a new thing on the new bingo uh video's getting worse towards the end <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a good video takes a nosedive or something like that yeah or video takes a nosedive that should be that should be one to inscrete all of their media. Rick and Morty and Big Mouth are obvious examples of other Western animations with clearly nihilistic outlooks. Please don't okay, show Rick and Morty. Big Mouth. Yeah, don't show Big Mouth. I, I yeah, please don't show Big Mouth. I'm glad they didn't. Big Mouth, and I don't want to see it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't even feel like Big Mouth is even worth bringing up. I, I don't feel like it's popular or anyone really cares about it. Rick and Morty is like one example. <laughs> so... 
but but even in that example, again, there's nihilism, but Morty's always trying at least to to be a good person, right? Trying. Let's yeah. put that in massive fucking air quotes because <laughs> I haven't seen the show yet, but I'm currently watching Breaking Bad. And after I watch Breaking Bad, I do want to watch uh, Rick and Morty and go through um, all the seasons and see how how it goes. I would say you should watch Better Call Saul as well because it's the same universe, obviously, um, as Breaking Bad. But yeah, it's uh, it's real good too. All right, maybe after Rick and Morty, I'll do that. I haven't seen the final season of Better Call Saul though because they don't offer it anywhere that I can watch it without paying a bunch of subscription bullshit. Damn. And I want to see the final season. <laughs> I've also been watching Chainsaw Man. But uh, I have to wait for new episodes to come out. There might be one today on the website that I use. I'll have to check. But uh, it's been interesting. I'll say that. It's it's definitely very different. It, it almost kind of reminds me of Doro Hidoro in a way with how weird it is, but not quite. Yeah, and yeah, Nico 40K. That's kind of what I was getting at. So Nico 40K says, for me, nihilism is less of a surrender to despair and more so a realization that we, as a, com as a complete cosmic coincidence, live in a world with no concrete meaning, but one that we can make for ourselves. Yeah, that's what I mean. That kind it, of it, reminds yeah. me of that uh, clip you showed us of the Hogfather. Yes, that was Terry Pratchett's view as well. Like I said, there are different people that believe in nihilism, but they take totally different meaning out of it. And the Hogfather, and like what Nico said, you believe in things that don't exist. How else do you make them become real? It's such a fantastic... Terry Pratchett has such great moral lessons for people. Highly recommend reading the Discworld series of books. Highly, highly recommended. They are just fucking great. Yeah, I really love that clip that you shared. Uh, cause I'd never seen it before, so yeah, I really liked that clip. That was really good. Even there's an even more heartfelt scene in that, where um, he's pretending to be the Hog Father because they need to try to keep up faith in the Hog Father. I'm not going to explain why, because that goes into the into the story. But Death is taking over the role of the Hog Father for the evening, and they come across a little dead girl in the snow, and. The, the manservant is explaining, he's like, a match girl dying in the snow is all in the spirit of Hog's Watch. You see, people see the dead poor little match girl and say, well, we may be uh, poor and can only eat mud and shoes, but at least we're better off than the match girl. And that makes people happy for what they do have. And he, he disagrees and he says, I know what the real meaning of Hog's Watch is. He takes out her her hourglass her sand hourglass and instead taps it and puts life back into her she starts breathing again and the manservant looks at him and it is almost like struck in fear he says you're not allowed to do that death cannot give life the hog father can the hog father delivers presents and there's no better present than the future and it was like, holy fuck. That is definitely a moment that punches you right in the fucking chest. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, Terry Pratchett was a master of, of really good moral lessons in his writings and everything. And of course, if you if anybody's ever read Terry Pratchett's work you know that he was a master of, of master wordsmith. He was great at doing word games and everything. Fucking fantastic. No better present than the future is also a good pun. Yeah. I'll explain this nihilistic message as the video goes on. So in the first episode, we meet our main character, David Martinez. He's a young mm. man who goes to a prestigious university in the city. His mm. mother is a single mom, and they can barely afford the school. Despite this, yep. she pays for David to go there because she wants him to be successful. We're never told what okay. happened to David's dad, and that is never explored. Seems Doesn't need to be. 
Yeah. D does not need you. I was not even curious, to be honest. I, I just assumed, okay, it's a single mom raising a kid. I, I yeah. did not need to know what happened to the father whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. It, it, that is not important to David's character. He doesn't have that. He doesn't have daddy issues as one of his things. Like that's not yeah. his not his sort of thing. Yeah, it, there isn't even a hint that it was like that he died or anything. It literally just sounds more like, you know, she got knocked up and the dude just ran out. It sounds like that probably was more likely than anything else. And it's like, yeah, there's no reason to explore that. It, it goes nowhere. There's no point. Yep. Yeah, meanwhile, Terry Pratchett's daughter is making really cliche plots for video games. Yeah, unfortunately, she did not pick up the same, like, wit, the same wit and intelligence that... Just, this is a huge shame. Oof. But it, it's one of those things, too, where... And uh, there's another great show, I highly recommend it, uh, called Jiro Dreams of Sushi, which is talking about um, Jiro, the sushi chef in Japan, who makes the best sushi in the world. He, he literally is the best sushi chef in the entire world. Three Michelin stars, everything. He has a tiny, tiny little restaurant that only seats, like, eight people. That's it. But you will pay to go there because it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Um, and his whole thing is his son is also a really good sushi chef, but as as a critic points out, his son will need to be twice as good as Jiro to even be measured as being the same. That's how much Jiro has impacted this industry, and how horrible of a burden that actually is. I was trying to be quiet and everyone still heard the typing. Yeah, I could hear the typing. Re. Uh, what is Kratos' typing? Launch targets? Yes. Yep, he's <laughs> putting in the launch code. Damn fucking straight I was putting in the launch codes. <laughs> Big on, bot. Yeah, I see one of the targets hit. The bot is gone. Yep. Seems like part of his character development to ignore, but okay. Now I. No, no, no! It doesn't seem like it. It's not an important part of his character development. It it's never brought up. He doesn't talk about his father. He doesn't talk about like, why are you alone? Where is dad or anything like that? He doesn't show any of the signs of normal daddy issues, right? Like, it's just it's just a thing. It's something that he is he's dealt with. He doesn't have a father. Okay. It, it hasn't defined his character. Oh god, you guys are talking about single parenthood and the sex bots are here. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm back now. I had to leave for a moment. Uh, yeah, I don't even know why he's bringing this up. I was like, oh, the, I don't know why they're not bringing this up. It's so important. How? In what way is it important? And what role would it play to the story? Yeah. It sounds like he just wants a bunch of useless details to be thrown in when, again, 10 episodes is all they have. They don't have time for unnecessary bullshit and filler to be added to the fucking show. There's just not enough space. They yep. already had to cut stuff that that shouldn't have been cut. So the yep. idea that, oh, well, we need to add in a daddy issue as well and uh, some plot point about his father... It's completely worthless. It doesn't add anything. It doesn't need to be there. It's just filler. He just wants traditional families everywhere because he has an agenda. I think traditional families are definitely the superior option, honestly. A mother and a father. One, both of them being present in the child's life, I think, leads to the best development for children. I really do. Presence in the life and living in the same house? Uh, absolutely okay then yeah i agree yeah i agree as well i agree yeah. it's definitely the better outcome i it's yeah, just, I'd, I'd say that's the best option yeah it's just you know life doesn't always work out that way and you got to do with what you can yep it's kind of a 
weird thing to be like, yes, I'm going to push an agenda of this thing. Uh, it's like, okay, but what, what if the father died? It's like, there's, there's not really a lot you can do to push yeah. your agenda about that. It's like, but, you know, yeah. I, it's just weird to me. It, it, it almost makes it sound like, oh, yes, there's a plot for women to not have husbands and only and have to raise a kid alone. It's like, I'm pretty sure that's not a plot. I'm pretty sure that's just life happening and it kind of sucks. And as a consequence of other like super hyper sex positivity things, I mean, you know, I'm, not, I'm not being a prude. I think if you want to have sex, have sex, but you're going to deal with the consequences of that action. Yeah, exactly. I can agree with that point. Yeah. If, like if you're just going to sleep around with tons of men and then get pregnant, it's like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. the girls that it's the girls and guys that sleep around with like fifty plus people a week, and it's like Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, yeah. I, Jesus, I, how people do that, I'll never understand. My God, I've heard of the fucking town bicycle. You're like the town fucking train. Gonna <laughs> deal with the consequences of sex. Not if I kill it. Ugh. Ten dollars from Scorcher Cast. Thank you very much. Nihilism is meaningless. You have no purpose, but still have agency. Postmodernism is pointlessness. You can act, but your actions are going to be pointless in the grand scheme. So there's no point. I disagree because I find it more inspiring that nothing is pointless. So you choosing to be a good person is that much more powerful because it's all pointless and you still choose to do it anyways. That's what I take from it. I think that's what they're saying, but they're saying postmodernism has turned it into that. Fair. Morning, Pendagar Mando. Good to see you. Consequences have actions, pimp. <laughs> Wings of redemption. <laughs> shame, uh, shame his wife's getting it from the shoe salesman. <laughs> Fucking getting it from Albun. Anyways, um, should we continue with the video? Mm -hmm. I should that David wears a visible cross necklace through the entire show. However, Christianity is never mentioned in the anime and plays no part in the story whatsoever. It Does yeah. it need to? It, it, like, again, this could just be something to him. It could be just a symbol. That's all. That's all it is. Okay, I'm starting to see where people were were talking about. Like, yeah, this dude's super conservative. Where He's religion, super Christian perspective. Catholic. Yeah. yeah, everything needs to revolve around my religion sort of thing. I can see that where that's coming from now. Yeah, and again, this is just like, it doesn't have to be a part of his being. What if he just likes the look of it? What if it holds some meaning to him besides that? It Literally, the religion aspect does not have to matter in the slightest. Well, even yeah. if he does take a religious significance in the cross he wears, why do we need that to be brought up in the story? Yeah. Yeah, and keep in mind, a lot of gangbangers and stuff wear crosses. It did, that doesn't make them Christians or good Christians. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of gangbangers that wear it because they mean they buried people sort of thing. Yeah, it's and... Kind of a, a more, like... I, I use perverse in the sense that it's not the traditional meaning. They take a more perverse meaning in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they... It's, uh... it's the marking of the grave, sort of. Yeah, so it... The cross is a symbol that can mean a lot of different things to different people. For this guy, clearly it just means Christianity, but for for someone like David, it could mean a, a whole slew of different things. Yeah. So to just put one thing on it like that, when clearly the show isn't going for that outlook, it, it's just odd to even bring it up. I think it'd be cool to explore it like in Honest Hearts, but it wouldn't uh, change much in the story, really. Well, that's the thing, too, is you can do stories that um, are about the religion someone believes in. You could have a story in Night City that's about someone like David who is far more into the religious aspect of things. But, yeah. again, that's just not the story that was being told here. Hell, I would love to see like a little side story or something set in night city with a priest that runs a church. Yeah. 
that maybe. would be so interesting like how would that even work in a place uh -huh. like night city you know it's like that you could do so much with that you could definitely write a story around religion in this setting it's just that's not what this story is yeah that's not the story that we're being told with david here mm -hmm. or um hell you know i'm i might as well bring it up since i'm watching breaking bad for the first time the uh there's literally a gangster in the uh in the show who when he's told to move a body you know grips the cross on his neck and says well that's not very christian like we shouldn't just dump his body we should go bury it and the, the dude's obviously like i don't give a fuck so he has to go do it you know it's like it, so it, it, you know it, it maybe even in that sense that could be what david has as well but again it's not an important thing it, it doesn't need to be brought up it's not really a criticism of the show i would say a detail they could have added maybe i could see how they could have done that but again 10 episodes don't have a lot of time kind of got to trim the fat if yeah. david Jin and christianity exists in the cyberpunk universe why isn't it being explored the obvious explanation here I see where you're going with this, and already that is not the obvious explanation. No. I, I don't no. think someone... I don't think someone wearing a cross in a TV show requires... Like, suddenly requires a deep exploration of Christianity. Yeah, it doesn't like, at all. Like... <sighs> and, and also, like, we, we already touched on this. That's not the story they wanted to tell. That's the obvious answer. That's just not the story they wanted to tell. What you're here, he's going into the conspiracy that turned out to be true, mind you, that Netflix was doing lots of anti-Christian drama because Netflix was pushing to that agenda. They're pushing and catering towards that that crazy extremist agenda. Yeah, but if Netflix was doing that, then why would they include a character who wears a cross, but then just to not mention religion rather exactly. than specifically going think... against religion? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is actively. This isn't like anti-Christian or anything like that. This and again, Netflix. Netflix, was Netflix wasn't the ones behind the show. It was mostly Polish developers and Studio Trigger who are not anti-Christian whatsoever. No. Especially Poland. <laughs> oh my god. It's just so stupid. Yep. Yeah, cross exists. Therefore. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here is that being an infamously anti-Christian company, Netflix didn't want to have an actively Christian main character. Can't have that. I mean, again, you're not wrong, but again, this isn't Netflix. This isn't Netflix. I mean, it is on their show. They might have bankrolled it, but Netflix didn't write this. Yeah, they had like no say in the show whatsoever. They just paid a little bit of it and posted it on their platform. They didn't have any say in what was added or not mm. i doubt they would have agreed to a change where oh yeah have this main character that people are supposed to like wear a cross if anything that just makes people want to like it more by assuming they notice it i didn't even really pay attention but maybe if somebody noticed you know I'm like oh david is uh you know he's a christian he has a cross on his neck and he's very self you know, he's he's willing to sacrifice himself to help others and stuff like that. It's like, yeah. I, you know, it, again, it's I like, I don't it see more, Netflix doing that. It could even be argued that it's kind of fitting in the theme where he has a bit of a messiah complex, right? He yeah. works to fulfill other people's dreams and he will sacrifice himself so that Lucy can fulfill her dream. Yeah. Or and it's not suicide complex, either. It's not, he doesn't that. kill himself. It's literally... You know, yeah, he, he dies yeah, he in combat. Complex. Yeah. So, again, I could definitely see this as, like, as someone with this man's perspective, you know, saying, like, oh, well, I actually really like David. And the fact that he's a Christian, assuming they see the cross and assume that about him, you know, it would only make it would only make it look better. So I don't really see this, like, this agenda being pushed by netflix to be like oh see it's 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 bad it's anti-christian i don't i don't see that i just don't see that anywhere in here yeah. 
Um, Kurtosis, Such Dreskar, and Pagan. I haven't seen the show, so I skipped last week's stag. Do you guys recommend it? I would. Yes. Yeah. Highly recommend it. All right. This nihilistic show. This, of course, begs the question of why they even included this necklace. Christianity isn't a look, it's a religion. Well, um, it, it kind of is a look, but three, also... There is a look to it, yeah. Yeah, it is definitely a look, but also... Especially in the Latino community. Yeah, I was about to say, they're Latino, and that's very, like, important to them. Like, Latino, even if they're not religious, Latino people will typically wear crosses in some form of, like, um, reverence to Christianity in some form, even if they don't practice it. So... Again, I don't know. I, I, I this feels like really grasping at straws. It does, yeah. and obviously, this isn't meant to be um, offensive to people who are religious. But there literally are people out there who just like the aesthetic of the different symbols. There's people who like yeah. the onk. There's people who like the cross. Like that exactly. happens. Yep. Yeah. Um. It, it doesn't mean that. Well. It doesn't necessarily mean they're being disrespectful to the religion. It just means they like the look of it. For some people, it really is just the look. Mm -hmm. Dry, can I please ask you to not make racial slurs in the chat, please? Thank you. I'm making a joke, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> show goes on we see more and more aspects of what makes night city a true dystopia one positive of edge runner's depiction of dystopia is that it shows some things we actually would see in a dystopia homeless people on the streets are str wait, wait it shows some things we would actually see in a dystopia i mean it it shows all the things we would see in a dystopia yeah what, what, okay i guess the homeless people in the streets okay I guess it's just wording, and he hasn't really gone into detail yet. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. we've only seen one, so let's give him a yeah. chance. Yeah. Strapped with masturbating machines, and VR porn is shown as widespread. People waste mm -hmm. their lives away in VR fantasy worlds as they get plundered by the society's most powerful. Transhumanism yep. is common and used by many people. Sexual liberation is shown as the political tool for control that it is. I, for one, would have liked to have seen such a liberation shows the political tool that it is. I mean, I, I agree to an extent that they, they use it. It's the whole mantra of sex sells, right? And these are mega corporations. It's why all the advertising in Night City is so fucking lecherous, right? It's it all fucking like pits and ass and, and dick everywhere. I guess I should I should preface not literally every single ad, but you see how many there are. You see even in their apartment while David's talking to his mom, his mom's waking up. There's an ad where it's a it's a naked chick like showing off her big tits right there on the screen. While he's like while she's like morning, mijo. Yeah, even Arasaka, who is a corpo, is buying. Uh, BDs for his son. Well, Tanaka, not Arasak. Arasak is the corporation. Well, yes. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, Tan Tanaka is the exec. That's yeah, he's the... an executive that works for Arasaka, and he, he yeah. literally goes and gets uh, to get a BD directly from the guy. I forget his name. But, yeah, uh, the... yeah, for his son. The brain dance artist. Yep. Yeah. So, like, even they're not immune to it. Like, if he's literally letting his son watch it, it's like, okay, well, it can't be too yes. much of a control thing unless, you know, he's literally like, I'm going to control my son through this, which maybe that's possible. Yeah, Arasaka Air also is a family. They have the Emperor Arasaka. They are, Arasaka is named after the family, but yeah. But yeah, uh, Nico 40K says, isn't the, the whole thing with, cyberpunk genre high tech low humanity yes mm -hmm. yeah. that's 
a pretty common staple in cyberpunk as a genre. You do get some where they're they're a little different. Like Shadowrun isn't so much low humanity as in as much as it is that the normal has changed and it can never go back. And people aren't like low humanity because they want to be. They're still like charity organizations and things like that in the Shadowrun universe that still work. You still have governments that still exist. It's just magic also exists now. And what the fuck do you do when a guy can snap his fingers and shoot a, a, a fireball that blows up the door? You know, like it, it's not like that. Dragons exist again in the world. Dwarves and orcs exist in the world. Elves exist in the world. Like that kind of changes what normal is like forever. seen this explored even more yes tell us more about how a corrupt ruling class uses sexual degeneracy to weaken and demoralize the population alas we don't get that but we we do kind of. again we don't we don't get it blatantly it's not expressed it's not like told to us in so many words what we see it is we see it in action we see like the the female body everything treated not as like Oh, how, you know, romantic, how, like, sensual. It, it's treated as nothing anymore. They're just walking around naked because they can. They, everybody's naked. Nobody gives a shit. You know, nobody bats an eye. It's not, it's not seen as anything special anymore. Again, this isn't all blatantly spelled out to us, but it's shown to us multiple times in the way that sex is treated in this universe. Also, as uh, Rodri Sensi points out in chat, he doesn't understand this is David's story. People are not there to get a class on sexual degeneration. Mm -hmm. Like I said, these are, these are things that clue you into the themes of the world and how the world is treated, right? As I said, he's going to talk to his overworked mother who's asleep on the sofa, and as he's waking her up, there's an ad playing above her head of a, of a girl with big tits shaking him around. That's it. When he's talking about, hey, I got a new, I got some new chips I want you to, to pedal, and he immediately jumps into a porno uh, VR. We see the, the Ripper doc ha is having a foursome, stuff like that. And it's not treated as like, oh, how risque, how stuff like that. It, it's just treated as mundane, horrible. It, you know, it, it's dehumanized. It no longer has that passion, that energy in it. And again, you don't need to be told that straight out. You just, you see how it's treated. You see how it, it's blatantly in all the advertising, not all the advertising, blatantly in advertising and everything. So there's nothing special about it anymore. It's lost all that meaning to it. This show almost made me play the cyberpunk game, is what I hope you mean. But yeah. Uh, it did that for a lot of people. Cyberpunk got a huge boost in player uh, player numbers after this show came out. I'm planning on picking up when it's on sale. I might try it again now that my computer can handle it better. Hmm. He means Club Penguin. <laughs> yes. Never abbreviate it. The game is mediocre. Also, never abbreviate it as CP. I agree. And Actors itself engages in the exact over-sexualization it criticizes here. D what? No, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. It's highlighting it. It's highlighting that how mundane and dehumanized it all is now. Yeah, that's the entire point, is that it's it's everywhere. It's lost all of its meaning. It's lost all of its sacredness. It, it's literally yep. just, it's just porn at this point. There's nothing more to it than that. It's extremely dehumanizing. That's the point. No, just do, you can do you can have CP there, but just do CP twenty seventy seven or something. No, end, don't, right? don't, just say cyberpunk. Okay. Please right. just, just say just cyberpunk. cyberpunk. Yeah.
Yeah. More of Another accurate dystopian aspect of Edge Runners is how there's absolutely zero, and I mean zero, respect for human life in Night City. There's But that's that the, is point. the point. That yeah. This is this is what happens when you lose your humanity. It's so much so that the animals literally shot through their car just to shoot at a limo. Even though they, they could have waited for even a second longer. Just one second more and they would have been shooting past their car. No, they just let rip right through her car. I also wouldn't say zero. We, we are literally shown characters to have empathy and humanity still in them. Like, yeah. pretty well all of the gang. Main, Main's whole crew. Yeah, all of Maine's crew is shown to have some level of humanity to them. Wait, wait, wait. He said it's a good point? Hold on. Yeah, he said he's complimenting it. Okay. okay. I was muted for that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, no. Where are we at? There we go. Sizes more about that later. Another accurate dystopian aspect of Edge Runners oh, is how there's dystopian. absolutely zero, and I mean zero, respect for human life in Night City. There's war. I I disagree that there's zero, though. It's, yeah, I still disagree that there's zero, but uh, yeah, we did miss that. I I did miss that. He said that it's accurate. So, yep. Uh, so I uh, yeah correct. I will I will correct that. That my bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I still disagree on zero. Crew's uh, Maine's whole crew has nice. some level of humanity to them. Uh, Rebecca especially is shown to like to the point where she is in love with David, but is willing to make sure that he gets with Lucy just because it'll make him happy because she loves him that much. Yep, it's like that is extremely selfless and human. Yeah. That that's having complete empathy for somebody else. It's not getting what she wants at all, but she knows it makes David happy. It'll make David more happy. Uh, five dollars from Lanterns Glow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take a shot every time the boys have to say that's the point. I recommend only doing this with water. <laughs> yeah, you might have to. Or she just has a cut queen fetish. She might, but that's never brought up as one of her traits. So, you know, we can only read into the surface level thing. Level crime on the streets and no one cares. People suffer brutal injuries and medical teams only bother to help them if they're rich enough to be policy holders. You're wording that weirdly, but you don't have to be uh, rich. You sounded really muffled there. Yeah, that was... Like your audio is getting fucky. There's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. There's Ooh. literally nothing I can do about that. Well, you're getting a little better now. Hold on, keep keep talking a bit. All right. So, yeah, there there's nothing... Um, yeah, you're fine now. There There's nothing in this. They don't have to be rich enough. Again, you can be poor and you can hold a, a trauma team policy. You just don't need platinum. Platinum is what brings them out to you if you're within the vicinity and you have a policy, any other of their lesser policies, you can still get picked up. Because, hey, they're a policy holder. They're just not platinum, so we're not literally monitoring their vitals 24-7. To be fair, he does only specify policy holder. He doesn't say what level. Mm, fair, but he's saying if you're rich enough. I mean, if you want one of the bigger gigs, one, you know, it, yeah. David ends up having to go to like a back, uh, you know, like a back alley version of the a hospital. Public, basically. Yeah, the public meat wagons. And they yeah. The public hospital. So he's he's kind of right here. I, I'm not going to like split hairs here. He, he yeah, is technically correct. Being, being pretty pedantic here. Um, I would be curious why he's air quoting policy holders too, because that's legitimately that's literally what they are. I figured it was just him quoting the show, but maybe yeah, well we'll see, because it sounded like he was trying to put 
put emphasis on policyholder as a thing. Okay, well, we'll, we'll just have to see. Night City. There's war-level crime on the streets, and no one cares. People suffer brutal injuries, and medical teams only bother to help them if they're rich enough to be policyholders. Those who die... See what I mean? There's an emphasis there. Like, what do you mean by policyholders? That's, I mean, that's legitimately what they are. <sighs> yeah, I, I kind of get what you mean, but at the same time, I'm just I, like... I think the emphasis he... is literally just pointing out that only the policy ho uh, holders will be helped. Yeah, that's that's what I'm kind of leaning towards is what it seems like to me. Uh, the only unrealistic thing in Night City is that a Californian city is pro-2A. Yeah, but this is a Californian <laughs> city that's heavily corporatized, right? This is this is one of those like insane corporate dystopias. Yeah, so it's... they would want to sell the guns and munitions and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then they'd be like, oh well, crime bad in your neighborhood, defend yourself, buy one of our state of the art, you know. Oh my god, hang on, I gotta read this because this. It's funny to me. Uh, Jonathan Leach. No one cares. You are a freak. Reddit and Discord and left-wing nonsense will rot your brain. This is what you could turn into. Embrace Christ. Yeah, you, have, you don't know anything about us because we are libertarian and we are right-leaning. Yeah, we, we, we criticize the left Please. all the time. Like, we were just making jokes about how fucking California is a shithole. <laughs> yeah, and we were talking about how great the joke he had here at the start was. Oh, so yeah. it's just your average, you know, day in, in Los Angeles, like, oh, fuck yeah. Holy yeah. shit, where's the lie? Exactly. Like, we constantly rail against woke media and how, like, fake progressivism is ruining media. Yep. It just It's just crazy that people come in and say this shit. And it's like, you clearly have not watched one of our streams before or else you'd be, you certainly wouldn't yeah. be saying that. We, we certainly get called racist bigots quite a bit, but... <laughs> I don't think we've ever been yeah. called woke soy jacks before or anything along those lines. Oh my god, we're we're literally turning into EFAP where the DC fanboys say they're Marvel fanboys and then the Marvel fanboys say they're DC fanboys at the same, <laughs> same fucking yeah. breath. <laughs> yeah, but somehow the one we got is even dumber than that. I don't care. You are furries. You are disgusting. I'm not a furry. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm a brony, so it's not the same thing. Yeah, well. Again, uh, charming person. Like this is this is what happens when uh, extremism the other way rots your brain. Yeah, it's just funny to me. I also yeah. love that he has to put everything in caps. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's it's the it's you, literally you the gotta like understand, the man, guys. He's he's really emphasizing this. He's got his cap lock on. I'm gonna tell them exactly what I think of them. Yeah, like he is the internet trope of. Oh my like, god, he's the fat guy. Yeah. He's the fat balding guy that, well, actually, dude. Yeah, oh, exactly. God. Yeah, he is the internet trope guy. It's it's hilarious. Like I, it's so funny seeing these guys in real life or like, you know, in, in our streams and shit. It's just so funny. <laughs> oh my god, I'm a furry. <laughs> Callback says I'm a furry, a brony, and a Christian. May I interest you in a copy of the first furry church catechism? Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Uh, $10 from Rich Potato. Thank you. Since I feel bad for Cree, here's some money for the troubles. You don't have to give us money it's because not, of yeah, what happened, man. It's not your fault. You, you are not to blame for that, right? But that, as yeah. we said, that's defamation per se. But you are not to blame for that. You aren't at fault there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just surprised he went to that level so quickly, you know? It's like... Yeah, based off of nothing. Like, yeah. That, that's what we call the extremist lunatic. Well, and plus, plus he's mentally handicapped, too. Like, holy fuck. You, yeah, he literally goes from, this video is boring, to what he accused us of. And it's like, damn, yeah. like, you are really reaching. Like, you, you could not find anything to criticize us over could you holy shit no yeah well, again if you if you got real quiet you could hear the wind blowing between his ears mm -hmm. well hell he yeah. barely does anything during the whole video where it's it's mostly just hassan pikering it the whole way through until the end yeah i was about to say it's mostly hassan piker stuff um something i found funny too is at one point remember early on in the video how such you bring up that it's weird 
that Vincent Martin is using Outer Worlds footage in a Fallout 3 video. Yeah. Um, Griffin is getting up in arms about that and like, what the f- these guys are complaining about that? B-roll footage? I can't believe these guys are spurging out about, uh, about this. And apparently spurging out is, oh, hey, it's weird that, um... Yeah, it's weird he's... you're not using the game you're defending as your, as your background footage. That's weird. Yeah. So, yeah, so pointing that out calmly and rationally, uh, rationally and reasonably is spurging out, but freaking out about yes. talking about that isn't? Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> especially oh, when... He is a spurg. Yeah, especially when we're, like, pointing out the fact that it's weird that if he did show the footage, it would kind of prove our point even stronger because you would be constantly showing how dead the world is and how no plant life is actually growing. But that hurts his argument, so no, he, can't. he can't really... He, he can't, can't show game footage. It's like, yeah, that's kind of the reason why we were complaining about it is because it's really odd that he wouldn't show any of the game footage for the game outside of, like, cities and stuff. Yep. So, uh, Tyler, Tyler McDonald says, comparing someone to Hassan Piker is a really based way to call someone retarded. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is a new measuring stick. Uh-huh. Well, it's largely the fact that it's the same style of response where you're playing someone's video and basically saying nothing. Yeah. Like, the majority... I didn't watch the whole thing, but the majority of it from what I saw was... Um, every so often he'd pause and then repeat a word mockingly or say... Oh yeah, you're right. Like again, mockingly or something to that effect. It's like, uh huh. Okay, great commentary there, dude. Oh, my favorite commentary was when he would pause it and be like, "What are they even talking about? What is even happening?" And then would just play the video again. Oh, I fucking love commentary like that. So good. <laughs> no. Great you, criticism. You have nothing to say when you're literally too stupid to have any anything any dialogue whatsoever. It's like, okay. Well, that's why I just kept calling him a reaction drone. He literally just comes off as, like, that really low-tier, like, reaction YouTuber kind of shit where they basically... It's it's literally just a slight step above of, like, nodding your head the whole way through the thing and yeah. then ex and oh then expecting God. that to be, like, commentary. In the early days, in the early days of reaction, yeah. what is those people like, uh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Whoa. Uh. Crazy, dude. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was literally just, like, a step above that, barely. Oh, God. Yeah, so Hassan Piker's here. There you go. Yeah, it was literally Hassan Piker. <laughs> Anyways, back to the video. Yep. Mm -hmm. ...ire without any funeral and have their ashes dumped into metal cartridges. If Christianity does exist in the cyberpunk world, it went extinct in this city long ago. Uh, okay, he said he doesn't know anything about it. It's not actually extinct in Night City. There, as uh, John M. brought up, there is a quest. I haven't played the quest, but John M. was bringing up there's a quest called Sinner Man in the game. But again, Christianity is not the point of this story. There, there was not a point about Christianity. There's not a point about religion in this story. The, the theme of this story is dreams. That's the overarching theme. Yeah, but remember, you can't... Well, I mean, you're right about that, but... If you tried to tell him, like, but the game, but he would then say, but they shouldn't need the game. It has to hold yeah, it on yeah. its own. So, yeah, that's why, that's why I stopped talking about the game in and of itself. I'm still stuck on the whole, before. we need to talk about Christianity because they showed a cross thing. Like, one yeah. of the cosmetic items in the original Saints Row is a cross. So half of that game needs to be rewritten to talk about um, Playa's <laughs> deep investment in... Actually, what am I talking about the cross? The, their main base is a church. So where's the yeah. commentary on how great Christianity is in Saints Row? Mm -hmm. They call themselves the saints. Why aren't they doing saintly things? Killing people isn't saintly. It, it, it just strikes me as a really silly point to make. You yeah, can have it's... these visuals without having to go in-depth on the topic of what they represent. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it definitely feels like he's just going into this with, like, I'm just here to talk about like what role does Christianity play in this show? And the answer is basically zero. So therefore I'm going to criticize it. And it's like, okay, but that's just, yeah, I guess you could really, I guess silly. You could do th yeah, it is. It's like, I guess you can do that, but it's also like, but why it just feels like you're making everything have to be about you and, and religion. Like it can't be 
its own thing. Yeah. You can't have a story unrelated to that's that. That's the it's funny that's the thing we always rail against the left doing constantly where they need they need everything to be about them oh, i just can't see myself in because there's not a there's not a fat land whale lesbian chick in it are you far away from you your microphone that. nope okay no i think he's just going in and out i and... haven't moved at all okay yeah that's that's why I cannot wait for the sound card to arrive tomorrow. Holy fuck! This new this new computer. I hate these drivers. I hate playing the driver fucking bingo when you build a new computer. I fucking hate it. I've yeah, never had this issue. Well, it's because this new all these new cases, new cases like we're gonna combine the microphone and the headphone jack into one thing instead yep. of having them separated, and it causes so many fucking problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've heard a lot of people complaining about this lately. I've been watching a couple of. Uh other youtubers and streamers who recently got new computers and stuff with new cases and stuff and they they complain about the same thing they're like why do they make them this way now what the fuck is this how new are this we is talking so is this something just like in the past year or i'd say uh, yeah i'd say like past year or so this okay. this is the corsair 4000d airflow so i'd say this is a couple years old i can't remember when the 4000d was first made but I, I yeah. just I just realized I probably never encountered this issue because both my uh, headset and microphone are USB. Yep. Which hey, hmm. if I if I did that too, I don't think this is USB capable built out of the box. I uh, I should I should check my motherboard thing. I think my Z five ninety might be. Not sure though. But yeah, it's it's just it it's fucking infuriating. Yeah, it is the other side oh, of the coin, like you were saying, you know, where... Or the old mad. Um, I have that. But this is so fucked that to use my headphones, my current headphones, I have to plug into the front jack. Well, if I plug into the front jack, it is also considered a microphone jack. So my microphone is plugged into the back panel right now. And the computer thinks that my microphone is plugged into the front panel and the back panel at the same time fucking hate it i i hate these driver bullshit stop using real tech drivers please or if you do use real tech drivers let us have the separate the front jack from the rear jack uh option again why did that ever go away yeah but um yeah like such was saying before it is annoying how basically it's both sides do this now uh, not, not as often obviously you hardly ever see the right do this but we are seeing it now where it's very annoying where it's like yeah we see the left do this all the time where it has to be about me it has to relate to me in some way if they don't have the same skin color as me i i it's just no it can't exist yeah. and it's like shut the fuck up and then here's this guy where it's like well yes if it's if it doesn't expressly talk about christianity and how amazing it is then it is a flawed product and i'm like no no it's not it could be its own thing come on this is ridiculous like, I'm not going to bash you for it. There's nothing wrong with believing in Christianity and, you know, having a a deep appreciation for it. But to think that everything needs to have some kind of I'm not even sure Christian it's an, bent to it. I'm not even sure it's an issue of everything needing to have, a, like, a Christian it, thing in it. It's the fact that they showed the cross. I think that's what set him yes. off. And yeah, yeah. That's what set him off. That's what started his, like, well, it must therefore and, dive into this. Like, no, it doesn't need to that's fair i guess yeah if they are i guess because it is a christian symbol he then sees it as well it's kind of sacrilege to show it in any other way besides this so i guess i see the point but still it still seems kind of silly to me because it's like okay but crosses can mean many things and this is the kind of person that non-religious people get fucking annoyed about most non-religious people don't care like, they're not your enemy if you are religious. I, I Like, I'm not yeah. religious myself. I don't they're hate people for believing whatever religions they have. Believe whatever you want. It's fine. Um, But it, it, it's when people start getting like this, they start getting a bit preachy to you, and it's like, oh, you showed the cross, and there's, there's no, like, element to this story that's Christian in any way. It's like, no, shut the fuck up. It doesn't need to be... Yeah, I I agree with you on that completely. Yep. All right, let us let us continue. And we don't see any religion in the show. Most character motivations yep. are money or power, and God or the yep. afterlife are never really talked about. 
very telling since actually they kind of are again it's not expressly stated they're not talking about the afterlife so much as the legacy you leave behind again after david attacks doc he attacks the ripper doc the doc says go be go be the the story of someone else's dream right because he of the next dreamer i should say that's what he says um because david he knows david's gonna die david's gonna die and he's hopefully gonna have a glorious death and his name will be spoken of by the next dreamer that i want to be like david martinez i want to be like that guy who ascended the to the heights and you know, did this crazy thing I, that's that's kind of what they're hinting at is like this is what will you will leave behind mm -hmm. and they do discuss the soul a lot in this show where you know like that the very idea that replacing your own flesh and bone with enough machine can actually push your soul to the edge yeah and basically replace it so it's very it does almost have kind of a spiritual aspect to it even though it doesn't go fully into it yep <laughs> Donald says, hey, wait, I just realized something about the scene on screen. Rebecca's flirting a bit more aggressively than I thought. From David's perspective, he's getting a panty shot. Yep. <laughs> yeah, again, remember, this is after she was just doing what her brother used to do. And she, she talked about how much she hated him. And yep. like that. And, and now love... she's doing the same thing, but she's yep. doing it to woo David. Mm -hmm. And that's that. I love this so much that they, that they did that because... If, if they had not changed anything about her and just kept it the same, you really would just assume that she just hated her brother. But then here you see her trying to emulate her brother in almost every aspect, like the new hands, the the parlor tricks, uh, the weird flirt flirtatiousness that she puts on now, all this stuff. And then also the fact that she uses big guns now because using small guns, it meant that she was powerless to do anything to defend her brother. So now she only uses big guns because they actually are effective yep. and it's just like it really does show like yeah she didn't like aspects of him but she still deeply cared about him and him dying played a big role on her mind absolutely it affected her deeply enough that she basically became like her brother or an idealized version of her yeah brother. yeah an idealized version of it i should say It's a healthy belief in God could provide some much needed respect for human life to the city. As you don't need to believe in God to have a respect for human life. Again, we yeah. see we see David and we see Maine's crew. They have a respect for each other. They care about each other. Rebecca is in fucking tears that her brother got zeroed, that her brother got flatlined. She's playing it off as being angry, but again, she's she's in grief. She's in shock. Every, the whole team is. Because mm -hmm. it comes out of literally nowhere. Yeah, he just it was just a cyber. It was a guy just pissing in a, an oil drum, and he was telling him, "Stop fucking pissing on our turf, man. We don't want to walk through shit and and piss and everywhere every time we walk through here." And then the guy just raises his hand and blows blows his head off. Yep. And I also really do hate this, like, this argument that, uh, like, you need to believe in God to have morals and stuff. I've I've hated that for so long because yeah. they always use the same argument of, well, the only reason that we have the, the same moral structure we have today is because of the Abrahamic rule set. And it's like, okay, I don't, one, I'm not going to say, sit here and say that that's a fact, but two, even if it is, you could take that moral structure and apply it in your life without believing in God. Yeah. There's no reason why you can't look at the Ten Commandments and say, you know what, that's a pretty good idea. I don't believe in God, but these rules make sense. Yeah, exactly. It's like, thou shalt not kill? That's a good rule to live by. I don't need God to tell me that that's bad, right? It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to kill anybody. I'll defend myself, but I don't want to kill anybody. I don't want to have to kill anybody. That sounds like a good rule to me. Yep. Like, do not co thou shalt not covet thy neighbor or something like that. Those, I don't know the Ten Commandments front to back. Sorry, people. 
Yeah. But I don't know. It's just, it's always felt very like, it just has such a low opinion of humanity to me whenever they say stuff like that. Like, oh, you need God to be a good person. It's like, wow, what does that say about humanity in general then? Yeah. It's like, that's, that's kind of sad and pathetic oh, uh, to me, honestly. The thou shalt not bear false witness is like, yeah, I, that's, that's good. Just in general. Don't, mm-hmm. don't lie to the detriment of someone else. Don't like, don't give false police reports. Don't like lie in court about them. Don't defame them. Yeah. That's, you don't need to believe in God to be like, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. That's a good, th- don't do that. Oh, yeah. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not naive. I'm not saying, you know, trust everybody. Humanity has its problems. <laughs> yeah. But you definitely can't trust everybody for sure. But yeah. at the same time, the idea that you need God to be a good person, it's like, God, that just has such a low opinion of humanity. Yeah. To me, it's like to say that, it's just like, come on. Bruh, Sesh doesn't know world lore. I know. <laughs> We finally found something he doesn't know. Fucking know. ruined forever. You're off the yeah. team, goddammit. Yeah, but I was supposed to be the guy that knew literally everything. Well, Which Tentacle Dude, I don't... It's never been true, by the way. I want to address this thing that Tentacle Dude wrote. Well, Pagan, I gotta kind of disagree with you there. Uh, left to their own devices and with no guidance, humans are greedy. It's why you need to punish a spoiled child, for example. I Okay, that's fine. I'm not saying that people don't need guidance or that people don't need, you know, role models or anything like that. Obviously there's nothing wrong with that. And it definitely does help. What I'm saying is you don't need to believe in God to get that. You don't need to believe in a higher power to find guidance. Yeah. That's what role models are for. That's hell. Fictional characters can fulfill that role. Yeah, especially if they have really good moral lessons and they teach you exactly. good Exactly. Again, it's why... This world book series, please fucking read them. Yes, and again, it's why I have such an issue with people creating bad morals for children's content. It's why I get so pissed off at bad cartoons. You are... Kids use that stuff to learn. They learn from that. They take... They use it as an example. Okay, like they emulate that stuff. But when the content they watch as children will define, will help define who they are when they get older. So when you give them nothing but shit to watch, nothing but garbage with awful more like moral lessons and shit, or literally just sitting them down in front of like YouTube kids and shit, yeah, you're gonna ruin that fucking kid because you're giving them awful guidance. You're giving them shit to watch where they're gonna learn the wrong lessons. They're going to learn to become spoiled brats. It's a problem. It's why we need good media again. It's why we need good children's content. Because yeah. this is a form of guidance. For example, Steven Universe. Yeah, God knows that ruined a bunch of kids. Mm. Coco Melon. Yeah. Uh, and adults somehow. Yeah, yeah. And adults. yeah, don't get me wrong. There's definitely some adults that have watched <laughs> cartoons and taken them a little too. Well, I was too talking about heart. Steven Universe in particular. Yeah, I know, but that's what I'm saying <laughs> is like even adults will watch shit like that and take it too fucking. Exactly. Uh, Scorcher cast. Scorcher cast is nail on the head. Kids aren't stupid, they're just naive. Exactly. exactly. Yes. I hate when people say kids are stupid. They're not stupid. They're actually very intelligent and they actually. They just pick up on a lot of stuff. They emulate stuff that they like. Yeah. So to that's why it's important to not treat them as stupid because then they will emulate that. Kids aren't stupid if you don't treat them that way. Yep. That's the story. David's mom is killed in a random street shootout and he's left on his own. He's no longer able to afford rent or his education. No, 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 it's not that he's no longer, they weren't affording rent beforehand. This, this access denied rent pass due was up there already. This is when he was coming home. It's not that he couldn't afford to pay rent. 
now. It's that they weren't, they were barely scraping by beforehand. Yeah, they couldn't even afford to wash their clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Education. Unlike Batman, who dedicated his life to fighting criminals after his parents were killed by senseless crime, David decides to turn... Okay, so fucking apples and oranges here. Batman, a really well-off rich kid who could afford to do literally whatever he wanted. Like, Jesus Christ, versus David Martinez, where his family was barely scraping by as it was, and he was incredibly disrespectful and not understanding the sacrifices that his mother was making. It wasn't until the doctor literally said, not that, you know, we could have done much for her. It seems like she was overworked, if I had to guess, which hammered home even further. Hey, David, your mother was literally sacrificing her very essence to put you into that school, and you were just ready to throw it all away and didn't give a shit. He wants a regular yeah. kid to become Batman, lol. Yeah. Yeah. That's dumb. Yeah. We were talking about, uh, like, dramatically different circumstances. Yeah. yeah. Fucking basically infinite amount of money, a butler that does everything that you say, a nice mansion not, full of not crazy just, shit. Not just does everything you say, genuinely fucking cares about you. Yeah. yeah. I fucking... I, every time I think of... Uh, why, why can't I think of his name? What the fuck? Alfred? Uh, Alfred? Yeah, Alfred. What the fuck? Why couldn't I think of Alfred? Jesus. Yeah, I, every, anytime I think of Alfred, I think of that one shot in the comics where he's like, uh, you'll find that uh, I do not have the same uh, beliefs as my master does as he's loading a shotgun. <laughs> 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 like, like he's gonna kill this motherfucker. Like he, he's not Batman. He doesn't let people live. He kills them. That's yep. great. The I one, fucking love that. The one I think about when I think of Alfred is when he beats the shit out of Superman. <laughs> um, Domingo nine eight five one says, "Do you guys recommend the show?" Yes. Yes. We recommend the show. Yes. It has faults in it for sure. That's why we were saying we we agreed with a couple of his points, but he's also had some fucking bangers when it comes to insane person lot uh i also want to grab this comment rest in peace kevin conroy yeah um yep. yeah tragic to hear that uh, he passed he was supposed to be yeah. at fan expo in toronto this past august and i was looking forward to meeting him um and he ended up canceling i thought you know obviously that sucks but i figured you know maybe next year or whenever and now this um very unfortunate. I remember watching Batman when I was a kid, and uh, uh, the yeah. movies, the Mister Freeze movie. <laughs> God, I need to rewatch that stuff. Okay, I looked it up. Wow, I really butchered that quote. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna read the proper quote that he says. Okay. Uh, Perhaps you relied on my master's vow against using lethal force. Let me assure you that I subscribe to no such niceties as he's loading a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's great. Um, oh my god. Two dollars from Jillian Brunson. Thank you very much. Who's Thank Griffin you. Gaming? We've already talked well, about him. Uh, as before. Rex, as Rex says in chat, a man child. Yeah, he, he's he's basically an incompetent man child. So mm -hmm. there you go. That's all a, you really need to know. A Roxford Brains uh, reaction drone. Yep. All right. <laughs> I just saw the pieces of art you posted. That, that, that's great. Yeah, Tentacle Dude posted them in Instead the server. Of the kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I, I was clicking back over there and I realized I had just started the video. I had that, that moment of like doing two tasks at the same time and just immediately defaulting to the next task and then realizing, oh, hold on a second, go back. It's like, stop. You need to stop the video. They were talking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyways. Oh god, I'm a cyber psycho. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ...criminals after his parents were killed by senseless crime, David decides to turn to a life of crime. Instead of hating the kind of criminals that killed his mom, he joins them. He then even goes on to kill innocent people who are just like his mom later in the show. 
Hold on. Himself up Hold on. Hold on. Whoa, there, there's yeah, there's on. a little bit more to that than you're saying. Cause yeah. He shows remorse for this later on. But he he was fucking losing his mind at the time. He didn't know he killed an innocent person until yeah, it was he done. He didn't yeah. do it intentionally. Well, he killed the monster intentionally. He didn't kill an innocent person intentionally. In fact, it's what fucks him up real hard. He's like, I killed an innocent person today. This is the first time I've ever done that. I've killed who knows how many gunmen and mooks and bad guys, but this is the first person I've killed. It's just like, yeah, this this eats him up real bad. Yeah. He was having a cyber psycho moment where he thought she was like basically a gun freak mm -hmm. and shot her in the face, not realizing what was happening. And it wasn't until after that happened that he realized, holy shit, I shot a woman who wasn't that far different from my own mother. Yeah. And she didn't deserve it. And I feel absolutely it's eating me away inside. Like I fucked up. Yep. Yeah. Also, as John would like to point out, David did not join a gang. He joined an edge runner crew. They are they're not a gang. Yeah, they're not similar. Yeah. I also want to grab these comments from Tentacle Dude. Uh, I haven't been intending to ignore them. Sorry. Hey, I'm sorry for repeating this again. I probably sound desperate and or annoying, but I want to thank you guys for the coverage with some fan art. Think you could give me some uh, notes for cyberpunk designs. Uh, of your characters. Um, oh, I've, God, of our characters? Oh, my. I've got nothing off the top of my head, I'm sorry. Um, for mine? Oh, let's go with the character. Fuck. I just say replace them. No, no one can do that. God, I wouldn't know. Cyberpunk version of my character. Holy shit. Pagan Smasher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make Pagan fully android. Holy shit. Um... Oh my god, I'm gonna turn into Deus from fucking Project Horizons. No! <laughs> the, only, the only line I'm gonna know is cunt. <laughs> not, not a... If you're limited to just one word, that is not a bad word to have. That's basically yeah. the only thing he says is cunt. He hates women and just and just calls everyone cunt. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh no, for for cyberpunk, I wouldn't really have augments. I would I would just have armor and stuff like that, armor and weapons. So I'd go with. I'd be pretty. In a cyberpunk universe, I would be one of those weirdo, like, oh, you want to be a meat person? I'm like, yeah, I really do. Until I can upload my consciousness fully, I'm uh, I'm going to keep as much of my meaty limbs as I can. Thank you very much. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, the, I'm a weird sort of transhumanist where I'm like, like well, if I lop my legs off, I can put on those little springs and I'll run faster. It's like, yeah, but I like my legs. Meanwhile, at the same time, I'm like, if you, if I can upload my consciousness and live forever, yeah, I'll do it. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be hard for me to choose. Like, part of me is like, yeah, getting fake legs and arms would be really nice. But at the same time, I'm, I'd be like, ah, but then I probably wouldn't have feeling in my arms and legs. Like, not proper feeling. I'm just like, ah, I don't know if I'd do that. Dang, so no prosthetic tail to replace the old one after it fell off? No, no, not all lizards will drop their tail, damn it. And I'm not a lizard to begin with. Dragon. D-R-A-G-O-N. That's a lizard. <laughs> Great, I'm not just, starting with you now. <laughs> just a really big just, lizard that breathes fire. <laughs> just like snakes, uh, how snakes are a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite insult I've ever heard when a guy was going up against a dragon, you overgrown lizard with heartburn. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Mm. Now, hey, if I could get like attachments onto my body, like that, I'd probably be okay with. Like, if I could put like instead of lopping something off to replace it, if I could add something, you know, then I'd be like, okay, you know what? Maybe I'd be okay with that. Like, yeah. fuck yeah, give me wings. 
Hell yeah, that'd be awesome. Give me fucking wings so I can fly back and forth to work and shit. That'd be great. Oh, I couldn't handle that. I've been trying really hard to get over my fear of heights. I'm just trying the Marine Corps, too. Marine Corps kind of reinforced my fear of heights, though. It's hilariously, like, the thing is supposed to build confidence and, and like, get you over those sort of fears, those, like, nothing uh, phobias. And then the Marine Corps actually did the exact opposite. Um, I was I was starting to get over it a bit more and a bit more, and then we go up the cargo net. And a, a guy in front of me went up the cargo net first. And I'm waiting, I'm waiting, because you don't want to have multiple people going up the cargo net. You don't want to be the guy that pulls down or something like that, because the cargo net's already going to be floopy floppy anyways. It's a rope, for God's sakes. He gets up to the top, and he goes over, and his arm slipped underneath one of the ropes somehow, and he slipped, he lost his footing... And he got caught and was hanging from his arm, and his arm got dislocated, and he was just swinging from this arm. And I was just like, uh, yeah, right in front of me, and I was just like, huh. Yeah. Like, Thank you. Thank you for reinforcing my fear of heights, because this thing was like um, 20 feet off the ground, 20, 30 feet. And I was like, Thank you very much. I needed that. Uh, $5 from Jalen Brunson. Thank you. I agree with Setch. The outer world is about sticking it to the man. You have to get the man uh, permission to open your own shop. I don't know it's exactly what you mean, but yeah, the outer world is is much is not as much about um, big corporation bad because corporations are actually one of the biggest forces for good you can possibly have. Corporations are the ones that can afford to do all these philanthropic, you know, uh, can afford to do philanthropy to begin with right they're the ones that can that can choose of their own volition to go and help set up farms and countries that need it and stuff that's something that a normal average person can't really do you need an organization to do that corporations have that power because the problem is that a lot of corporations take that power they take that ego trip of of having all that power to their heads and they crave more of it they crave more and more and more that's why I like Outer Worlds so much is because you get the contrast with Monarch Stellar Industries. When you go do that entire planet, it's about how this corporation realizes that, hey, if we bring the humanity back into this, our workers work better, they work harder, they actually want to come and show up to work, they produce higher quality stuff, it, it gets so much better. So, again, I, I like it as a thing. It's like, so, so people who think, oh, big corporation, bad. And then it's like, the it's that meme, right, of the person looking at Outer Worlds and like, wow, big corporation, bad. And then the thing that goes over their head is corporations run, that are run ethically produce higher quality products, have workers that want to show up to work, and have workers taking less sick leave. You know, stuff like that. It, this is something that Monarch Stellar learned. And that, that's why it's such a, an interesting quest line to go through. Yeah, um, if I didn't hate my job with the entirety of my being, I would absolutely work harder. Like my day <laughs> job, obviously. Yeah. Um, we did miss a super chat. $5 from uh, Chris Ellinger. Thank you. Game spoiler question. Oh, shit. Hi, joining late. How powerful do you guys think V is? It's hard for me to find uh, how canonically strong V is because 2020... Uh, 2077 RPG. I, I don't know how powerful it is. Because it's kind of hard, right? It's kind of based on how you play the character. Is your guy the, the super stealth ninja that's never seen? Are you the net runner that blows everybody's skulls open before you even walk into the room? Like, you know what I mean? It's kind of hard to judge that sort of thing. The story treats you as, like, you are you are pretty powerful, right? I mean, you kill fucking Adam Smasher, for God's sakes. Yeah. So you're powerful, but it's one of those like, but how much more powerful are you? You know, what level of power are we working with here? Because yeah. Adam Smasher is 99.9% .9 machine, how would you kill him? Do you just have to hit that 0.1% with a mm, bullet? Brain. Yeah, I think you have to hit the brain. Yeah, you'd have to shatter his brain. Hmm. But uh, yeah, if it's you shatter his body and everything like that. If his skull and everything's intact, and I'll just be rebuilt. And like, yeah, he's not wrong. Yeah, it. God, 
V can get fucking overpowered as shit. I have seen some of the builds people can do. It is insane. Yep. Like, you can literally freeze time and then put a bullet or put three bullets in front of every single person in, like, the area and just kill every single enemy in one move. It's it's insane. Also, the mono wire shit that ever since they updated it and shit. Oh my god, yeah. mono wire is insane now. You could just kill an entire room full of people in like two seconds. Mm. And, and and even worse too is like they still have. I think they still have a bunch of abilities that just don't work. They don't do anything at all. Literally, like the code leads to a dead end. It doesn't do anything. It's just like, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> that's not cyberware pagan that's called a stand <laughs> and of course dry complimentary said Sawardo. yeah <laughs> yeah basically is that jesus also i want to hop back a little bit to that what we were talking about but uh yeah i do have a really big fear of heights i have like a really terrible fear of heights but i feel like if i had wings i wouldn't be as scared because i would be in control of it you know what i mean like the thing that scares me is like when I go up high on something, it's it's not so much that I'm worried about what I'm going to do. I'm worried about what someone else or what the thing I'm standing on is going to do. And if I fall, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm just going to fall to my death. So you probably have the same experience that I do where I can tell how high up I am inside of a building. Doesn't yes. If I'm in the center of a building or anything like that, I know I'm high up. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just like, I don't like being high up at all. It just, it bothers me. It's why I would really like to have wings because it's like, well, at least if I fall, I know I can catch myself. Yeah. Um, give me one second to go to the bathroom real quick, actually. Uh, I was about to press play. Yeah. And then I just got a chill that went up my spine and it was just like, go to the bathroom. I'm like, oh, okay. It's getting pretty cold here. Well, we have to talk about something while he's gone, so... Pick it, favorite SMG. Uh, ooh, favorite SMG. Ooh, that's a tough one. Probably, like, the... Ah, shit. Which which one is that called? Hold on. Give me one second to look this up. All righty. Uh... Is it the... Ah, shit. God, I'm not a big S SMG guy, so it's hard for me to remember the names of all these. Uh, I guess if I'm going to go classic, I'd probably say something like the Sten gun. I do really like the Sten. Um... The grease gun's pretty good, pretty good too. Although it's pretty, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's a bit scuffed, but it works. Uh, if we're talking modern, uh, probably, probably MP5, because um, that's like the one everyone always goes with. Because it's just such a good, reliable SMG. Um, there's another one I really like. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Uh, God damn it. It's not the Uzi. It kind of looks... It has, like, a similar shape to the Uzi. But it's not the Uzi. It's, um... God damn it. Why can't I think of it? Why can't I think of the name? MP7. I think it is the MP7. Hold on. Let me, let me make sure. Let me just type that in real quick. I think it is the MP7, though. Is it the MP7? Yes, the MP7. Yes, it is the MP7. I love the MP7. That thing is amazing. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, you know what? The um, the the Chris Vector. You know what? The Chris Vector. I think that's probably the best one there is right now. Is the Chris Vector because it has that um that internal uh, stabilizing system where it shoots a counterweight down into that big bulky part at the bottom. That is a counterweight mechanism that actually goes down every time you shoot. So when it does that, it pulls the gun back down, keeping it from going, like doing that glide up, that recoil that a lot of other SMGs have where the weapon will climb. The vector will actually punch a piece of metal down to prevent that from happening so that you're always on target. 
so it doesn't move around very much so it's almost always on target so that's a really good one so yeah they're probably the chris vector would be my favorite um but the mp7 is really good i do really like the oh. mp7 gun talk yes well, we gun talk to, we had to do something to kill time until you got back well I've... you know i'm gonna have to talk about guns now that gun talk has started no nope. too late <laughs> Nope, too late. You were gone. It's we got to move on now. That's like perfect timing too, because Pagan was just finishing what he was saying. Yeah, I just finished. And I had something I could add on to it, but I'm not going to because we could get back to the video now. M416. <laughs> I'll say it. M416. You don't even know what the question is. Well, it looks like you guys are talking about SMG, so I'll say um, the MP7. Honestly. Okay. Yeah, that's what I said. It's, um... No. Alright, let's move on. <laughs> ...and of edge runners, which are basically criminal mercenaries. From here on out, all of the show's protest... No, 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 no. Get, drop the criminal part. They're mercenaries. Yeah, they're, not, they're not criminal because they, they work with, um... They work with the corporations and the Yeah, police. they work with the corporations, so they technically they... Them. Yeah. So they're not technically illegal. Yeah. They sometimes get into situations where it becomes illegal, but uh, they're not outright illegal. They're not... Their operations are not outright illegal, I should say. Mm -hmm. So, no, you're wrong. Oh, the MP5 SD is really good, too. Shit, sorry. <laughs> I just want to talk about that real quick. Yeah, let's continue quick. Before my brain goes into that much. Tagging it. And not sympathetic criminals either. Some of these are very bad people who have no problem with murder or theft if it benefits them financially. It would be one thing if they were only criminals because they were fighting the tyrannical corporations that rule society, but it's not even that. The, okay. One, they're not criminals. And two, they're fighting back in their own way. They're making money. They're making their lives better. Like, <laughs> you, you're not going to bring down the megacorps. That's not going to happen. <laughs> you don't technically need earplugs for any gun hate to tell you no you you absolutely do fucking tell you you're gonna want earplugs for when mm. you fire weapons yeah if you're especially if you're going to like the range where you're going to be shooting a lot you should definitely be wearing some kind of ear protection yeah for sure you do not want to experience what tinnitus is like holy fuck yeah and you will definitely get it if you're constantly shooting rounds out of a gun so and unfortunately, getting suppressors, even though they should be over-the-counter attachments that any accessories that anyone should be able to buy, unfortunately, we do not work that way in the U.S. anymore. So, you, the best you could do is hearing protection most of the time. Oh, uh, did you guys? I guess I that was a super chat that came in while I was gone. Um, did you see the one, other one from Jylan? We'll get both because Jylan says two dollars. Do you, do you guys miss my super chat? Um, might have. At least I wasn't here. Uh, I don't think when this one came in. Um, so what happened there was that came in just as you were leaving, uh, and okay. the intention was to return to it when you got back, and I completely forgot about it because the machine gun talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Five dollars um, from Jalen Brunson. Thank you. Yes, yep. such big corporation are bad. This game is just like ours in the real world. Big corporations are bad. That's why you have to stick it to the man. Uh, I disagree. Again, big corporations aren't inherently bad. They are a great avenue towards good or ill. It's just that a lot of people, once they get to that big spot, they, they lose sight of their humanity. They start focusing on just gaining more and more for themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. I think, I think a corporation that becomes out of control is a problem. But corporations in and of themselves are not bad. Yeah, they're they're neutral. They're indifferent. They're they're com they're literally true neutral. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get actual philanthropists that come in too. It's like you have people that that's their entire goal, and then they can turn that into a business model of. Hey, you know, help us. We, we've earned the expertise, the experience, everything like that. We know how to build these things. 
pay us, and then we'll go to these third world countries, we'll build them their housing, we'll help put in their, like, electricity and running water and everything like that. Like, you can have that happen. We have that in the real world, too. It's just that that also relies on people having that sort of philanthropy in, in themselves. Ready. In some, they actually work for the megacorps. Some of what they do through the show, in terms mm -hmm. of heartless killings, are actually very messed up. Now, I mean, think about this logically. This is a situation where this lady beats people to death constantly. I'm not. I'm not all that broken up that she got a spike through her skull. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah, and technically the person who did it isn't actually a part of the crew. It's just someone they paid to win. Yeah. So it's they're not really part of the crew. And also, yeah, the other woman was literally killing people all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, 50, uh, I, I believe that's... Uh... South Korean. I don't know. Oh, no, no. Sec. What's... That is uh, Swedish Krona, I think. Swedish crowns. Uh, from Jesus Christ. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, they had they had the intelligence. It was a false flag. They wanted 9-11 to happen. U.S. government. Jesse Ventura exposed them. Lied before. Gulf of Tonkin. We've got the documents. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had no... One, but it, it seems super Alex Jonesy, so I decided to add that last I had no idea um, Jesus Christ uh, spread so such based. messaging. Sure, <laughs> let's go with that. <laughs> I had no idea that Jesus Christ was so foundational. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's... Just it's, doesn't want steel beams. We know this, people. The science is here. I mean, it's Jesus telling us it, so it must be true. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for red pilling us. <laughs> Christ, <Yeah. laughs> Christ reveals the truth at all things. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all need Jesus. No, Jesus needs us. <laughs> oh man, these fucking <laughs> these these comments are great. <laughs> there we go. Uh, one have is that David didn't have to become an outlaw. Even though he was poor, he was still a healthy young man and probably could have found honest work. Okay, but... Okay, so, this is Night City. This is honest work. Yeah, Quite I was honest, about... It's dangerous work, but this is honest work. They're mercenaries. He's making that money. He's living a better life. Yeah, and like we already said, this isn't technically illegal. Nothing he's doing is illegal. He's working with the corporations directly through Maine. So it's perfectly fine. Also, his and mom died, and he's extremely pissed off at the system. He's not about to be like, well, I guess I'll go work as a cashier for the city that killed my mom. No, he's yeah. going to become a mercenary that fights and kills against people that like the people... Oh my god, that's why it's so annoying that he says, oh, he just became the people that killed his mom. No, he didn't. He became a mercenary who kills gang members. Mm -hmm. And corporate, Jesus. And corporate uh, suits and everything like that. Yes, yeah. because they both fucked him over. Both gangs and corporation suits kill, killed his mom. So yeah, he doesn't fucking care. He wants to go work with somebody who actually will fight against those people. And he found one, and they're working within the law. Um, <laughs> Texas Bull says, I mean, to be fair, the Alex Jones was right jar has gotten awfully full the past years. It has been shocking how many quarters have had to been dropped in the Alex Jones was right jar. Yeah. So, Especially because he speaks in such a weird way, and then if you learn to decipher Alex Jones speak, you realize, oh my god, he's right. He's just, he's just crazy in the way he speaks. I've never taken the hatred for him super seriously because um, the one thing that got memed a lot is the whole, oh, they're putting chemicals in the water to turn the frogs gay, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, that that gets memed yeah. to hell and back. But that's actually something I heard in school long before that meme. Because yeah. 
we were taught about how I, I think it was like fertilizers or um, pesticides or something used on crops would uh, go down into the water when it rained and this would fuck up the frog's biology. So when I yep. heard that's like being memed at first, it's like, what, that, that's a crazy position to have? Because that's something I learned in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's the it's way he way says he it. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, oh, they're putting chemicals in the water that messes with the frog's biology. It's no, it, they're putting chemicals in the water to turn the frogs gay to push their agenda <laughs> kind of shit. It's like, <laughs> the documents, people, they've got the documents. And it's like, yeah, okay, once you, once you strip out the crazy, it's like, okay, what's actually happening? All right, they're putting chemicals in the water. The water is messing with frog biology and everything like that and causing problems with reproductive cycles. Got it. Okay, that's what he's actually saying, but he just has that Alex Jones crazy spin on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, Alex Jones is just that, and I'm going to put that quote, he's out of line, but he's right, personified. Yeah. Which, he does that. He does the whole, like, crazy person routine because he, he knows it'll blow up and it'll get the information out there more. Yeah. Like he's openly stated that that's why he does it, but it's a, it's a uh, caricature. Of yeah. Him. It's a character that he plays. Yeah. He's not actually that way, but he knows if he does that, people will talk about it. You know, they'll, they'll plaster his name everywhere and they'll talk about what he's talking about and they'll look into it. You know, even if they're just being like, Oh, that sounds stupid. Let me prove him wrong. And then they look into it and it's like, Oh, there's actually some truth to this shit. What the fuck? <laughs> well, well, that stopped yeah. working when people stopped looking up the actual information. Yeah, yeah, it did. It didn't help that you know that you got basically got entirely deplatformed as well because mm. of shit that he said that he apologized for, but also stuff that he doesn't seem to have been wrong about. To be honest, now that I'm like looking into it. Yeah, I remember like, the whole well, fucking court thing, and it was like Alex Jones got robbed. He didn't mm -hmm. kill those people. What the fuck? Why is he being punished? Why is he being punished for Sandy Hook? He didn't do Sandy Hook. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. God, that, he, that is a he believed He believed it was a false flag and talked about it on air. Therefore, he has to pay billions of dollars. What? Yep. Yeah, which is ridiculous, especially when you look at footage of, like, supposedly a father whose like child died the day before and he's literally like laughing and smiling on camera and then as soon as he gets to the podium he does like that <sighs> hold on okay okay i'm crying now okay let's go okay you know it's like my son died yesterday it's like uh what the fuck no i'm sorry no that there's something wrong here what the fuck you do not like laugh you are not busting out laughing about something you know right off camera well, it was still on camera, but in the background, you know, and then coming to the podium and immediately start crying about how your son died yesterday. Bullshit. Like, there's something wrong there. Yeah. Um, was he not defaming the parents? No, because he needed, you needed malice for defamation. He needed to have the knowledge of the falsity of it. And he already made the remedy that he was mistaken about Sandy Hook. Yeah. But there's a lot let. of there's a lot of fucking bullshit. And again, it doesn't matter. You can be entirely innocent. So this is how courts work. You can be entirely innocent of the crime and still go to jail for it and be convicted and found guilty. Even though you are entirely innocent in every way, shape, and form. It's the noise in the system. It happens. By any good lawyer, if you go to any lawyer, they'll tell you honestly, it's like, yeah, there's at least a ten percent chance you get convicted on this, no matter all the evidence you fucking have. What if the jury's having a bad mood that day and they decide against you what if something one of your witnesses does annoys one of the jurors and they hold that against you and they bring that into the in jury testimony into the jury deliberation what if you get an activist juror like what happened in the chauvin trials where people lit literally lied to get on the jury so they could crucify him yep. like holy shit again this this shit happened Yeah, I can't believe that they fucking they want more money from Alex Jones than an entire country asks another country for reparations. Like that's insane. Oh my god, that is so crazy to me. Yeah. He owes more money than a than a fucking country. 
Yeah. Like, how the fuck do you expect him to pay that? How is that in any way fair? Yep. God, I fucking hate it. It's such a scam. And it was, it was a horrible kangaroo court thing, so I'm hoping the appeals will come back and, and save Alex Jones, because Jesus Christ, the, the judge in that case was completely out of line. Yeah, he should have been fucking removed. Yeah. That was, uh, that was, uh, I have never sanctioned a, a, a lawyer before, but I, I am this close to sanctioning you. It's like, you say that to the defense lawyer who is following decorum perfectly, but then you're going to let the the plaintiff's lawyer just run like a fucking, literally put a clown wig on and nose and honk, honk, honk all across the fucking court? What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, it's completely insane. And whether you yeah. think it was real or not, it's like, this is not how we conduct business in the U.S. You do not do this type of shit to people for, yeah. you know, calling shit that they see out, whether it's true or not. It's like, if there's potential evidence to say that it is true, it's like, come on. It's like, you're not going to go after the people who made Russiagate, but you'll go after him. Yeah, then that's the other thing, too. That This does not discredit Alex Jones at all. In fact, no. this is going to entrench people more into that side that the the system is trying to silence him. That's not what you want to do with this. He should have been, he should have been found not guilty, or if he was found guilty, find appropriate to the damages caused. Which, hey, if it's ten thousand dollars because they might need therapy and stuff like that from now on. Fine. Not a billion. Not not this care this person needs twenty five million. That person gets fifty million. They get hundred and seventy five million. Like what the fuck? Oh god. That's quite the unexpected tangent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um Yeah. Five dollars from Jylan Brunson, thank you very much. Can you guys read my comment? This is the last one. YouTube won't let me send it. Okay? Uh, but such, behind every corporation is a man. If females have taught us all men are evil, that's why you stick it to the man. i having too much fun with you guys. Yeah, fair. But, yeah, it is... <laughs> oh, that'd be a bit too spicy for a YouTube stream. What I was going to say. <laughs> Anyways, we still have over half this video left, and we're almost yep. four hours in. Yep. But, oh, God, we are. It's almost six. Jesus, yeah. Mm. Through the show presents it as common sense that someone with a hard life will resort to crime, but that's just not true. Um, it, it's pretty true. It tends to be because somewhat crime, true. Because crime tends to be the easier road, right? And people that live a hard life Sometimes they just want something to go their way for one. So it tends to be how they fall into that lifestyle because it's the easy way out. Mm -hmm. And again, his mother was killed by what he basically views as the city, the corpos and the gangs. And he wants revenge against them mm -hmm. while also wanting to make money. Not this is his... And this is his way of doing it. Not to mention, he has a spoiled corporate brat who, again, this is what I like about his classmates' uh, villainy. I'll just use that in air quotes. Is that you can see his point of view. Again, he didn't give a shit about David because David paid his dues and everything like that. He's like, that's fine. The thing that he, that would always piss him off is that David was such an arrogant little prick. And he really was. David was an arrogant little prick and just constantly mouthing off and not taking things seriously, stuff like that. So I can see how that'd be incredibly frustrating when you're at a really high prestigious academy. It's like, not only are you somebody, an outsider coming in, but you don't respect the amazing fucking gift you're being given. Go fuck yourself, David. You know, I can see his point of view. I can understand it. But now, after his mom is dead and he's sitting there on his sofa and freaking the fuck out, he gets a call from this guy that says, I would say I sympathize, but I find it hard to sympathize with you. I'd say, you know, I send my sympathies, but I find it hard to sympathize. It's like, 
Jesus Christ, are you shocked that he would rebel fully against this society? Yeah. 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 And Iran's idea that poverty justifies crime is itself something that perpetuates the crime poverty cycle. Where does it justify the. Again, it isn't the fact that he's poor that sends him this way. And again, he's not a criminal, he becomes a mercenary. He has a skill now. The, the San Devastan, and again, he is actually special because he can actually use it. So he can use the Sandy. So now he knows that he has a special talent that he can offer. He has a, a unique skill he can offer to a job market. And the job market he picks is to become a mercenary. So he joins the edge runners, or a group of edge runners. I shouldn't say the edge runners as if they're all one big group. You know, they're not a gang. Yeah, it's not him being poor that turns him to this lifestyle. It's his mom died because of the people in this city and the way it works, and he doesn't like it. He wants to rebel against it because it's killing people that he cares about. So he yeah. says, oh, fuck it, I'm going to join a group of edge runners and fight against the city, even though technically he works for the city by doing that because he's directly working for people who are linked to Arasaka. Mm. And Militech. And, yeah, in Militech. And that's the thing. What he's doing, it's not that it's illegal. It's one corporation versus another. Well, I, I do want to bring this up, because the old Mad says, but he did start with petty crime, though. Train scene with Lucy. Start. Yes. I disagree in that, yeah, he, that's where he started for sure. But I disagree in the context of because we're missing the context. He wasn't, he didn't start stealing all that stuff. He didn't do anything like that. He just saw the girl that he saw every day at school and fantasized about was being a pick socket. And he went to talk with her and she explained she only targets Arasaka suits. And now he immediately is like, you target Arasaka. I'm going to get my fucking revenge on Arasaka. Okay, I'll help you target these Arasaka asshats. Because of what they did to me, my mother, and what this city has done. Again, he, he's in that very much rebellion phase. Mm -hmm. so like I said, I, he does start with a crime, in this case, being a pick socket. But it isn't for the sake of getting the money or anything like that. He views it more as, so you target Arasaka. Okay, I want to help. Yeah. And after that, it's more mostly just dealing with the gangs, which are actually criminals they're yep. actually operating outside of the law the police are actively against them the edge runners are just hired by people in between the corporations and the edge runners to do certain things which often involves stealing or killing gang members and also stealing or killing people from a rival company which technically isn't illegal when corporations run the city. Well, okay, so Scott says he also pushed BDs at school. I don't know if BDs are illegal, though. They're just yeah, considered, like, that's the way to do it. They're considered pervy, right? Yeah. It, it, it would be this, it would be similar to, like, today, like a kid selling porno mags at school. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's illegal, but you probably would get in trouble if you got caught by at least the the school staff. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I, I don't think yeah, a, a, a student selling porn mags at school. I don't think there's a there's a crime there. Would that not count as providing explicit materials to minors, even if you are one of the minors like doing it? I don't know if that I, would work because again I don't that, know. that's the oh god i would love i would love to pick the law tube's brain on this one i don't know if that's yeah i i don't know if if that would be that way because you are the minor as well 
Uh, I don't know. I feel like it wouldn't, but at the same time, I could totally see like U.S. law applying it that way. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I genuinely don't know. Uh, yes, it is a crime. Calbeck says, yes, it's a crime, but status as a minor may mitigate. Well, there you go. Hmm. Okay, so maybe they are illegal. Okay, you know what? Maybe that is a crime. <laughs> maybe him okay. pushing BDs is a crime, but again, it's such a petty crime in comparison to what he's talking about. And well, I don't know, the, the poverty rate we're talking about here, I feel like those type of crimes, like pushing BDs and stuff like that, like, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of justifiable. Well, not even that, but um, the thing I want to say, to be fair, that is how a lot of criminals start. They start very minor, and then they get away from it, and they get that rush from it, so they start pushing the envelope a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? Yeah, I guess, because he is doing XBDs as well, which, um, as Keyman's saying, XBDs are illegal, for sure. So... Which are the ones where, you know, you're you're playing from a cyber psycho's perspective and dying and everything. Oh yeah. Okay, so yeah, I guess he does start off doing crime, but it's oh, pretty low level crime. John M, that reminds me of something. Um, did you have has anybody here ever seen American Vandal? No. It was a show on Netflix that was actually about, like, uh, this investigate. He wants to be an investigative journalist when he grows up. And he is at a school, and they, and they do this report about, like, who painted, who spray-painted all the dicks on the cars at the school. And there was this one student, you know, like, he got singled out and everything, and they were, like, trying to be like he did it but there was evidence that he didn't do it and the way they had evidence was the girlfriend was cheating on him at the time and she was in a chat room and she showed her boobs to the guy she was cheating with as the boyfriend came in the door so it was all recorded that the boyfriend was there at the time so he couldn't have possibly spray painted all the penises on the the faculty cars everywhere um yeah and it was just funny because they bring in the evidence into into the lawyer and they're like like here's the evidence and she takes her top off um again you don't get to see any of this but they, they describe what's going on on the screen and and the lawyer's like holy shit is she a minor what the fuck get this out of my office right the fuck now jesus christ what the fuck yeah because it was a it was a high school it was a high school where this is happening Ugh. And again they were but they're like no that's not the important bit the important bit is look he he walked in the door, he walked in the room, caught her cheating, but that also shows his time that he was here. He could not have possibly spray-painted all the penises on all the cars in the parking lot. It is a, it is an interesting mystery show. No, well, that's one way to do it, I guess. Just, yeah. God, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I know, she's not actually underage, but he, the lawyer, freaked out and thought she was. And again, the right, right reaction, right? That is the correct reaction, especially for the lawyer. It's like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? But again, the, the, the journalist wannabes, they weren't thinking about that at all. They weren't, they weren't thinking about the, the obvious thing. They were thinking about, we got to solve the mystery gang sort of deal. It's like, hey, there is a way more obvious problem with this that you are currently taking to a lawyer and showing in their office. <laughs> yeah, that's fucked. Yeah. All right. Let us be or let me begin. Let us go again. The crime caused by criminals ruin people's lives and take away the trust and security, which is vital to a healthy economy. David. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, but but this is Night City. Yeah, and I mean there isn't there isn't really a healthy economy. It's not it's not a healthy economy by any means. I would I'd say it's a very unstable, fragile economy. 
because the economy is based on the end of a gun barrel. Like, entirely the end of a gun barrel. Yeah, and again, this he wants this story to go a very hyper-specific way. Like, yeah. oh, he should have done this, he should have done this, he should have done this. It's like, okay, but this story isn't yeah, about you're, that. You're not the writer, and this is not the story they're trying to tell. Yeah, it's it's just weird to me where he's just, like, constantly trying to be like, well, they should have done this. And it's like, okay, but then that would completely change the story mm-hmm. and make it impossible to tell the story they want to tell. So, no. As Calback points out, futuristic post-apocalypse dystopia, healthy, trustworthy economy. Pick one. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, this is night fucking city. David's mom is the perfect example of how crime creates poverty. She was paying for a promising future for David, but after criminals killed her, he lost all of those financial opportunities. Are you going to the obvious that she was a criminal as well? Are you are you going to put that together with you that she she was selling this stuff on the black market? Yeah, I was just I, about to say, like, does he not know that she was going to sell the Sin Devastan to Maine that she took off of a corpse? I yeah. feel like that's going to go over his head. I guess Maybe. we'll find out. Yeah. Many David's situation then turned to crime as an easy way out, as David... Okay, yeah, yeah I think, yeah, I think he just overlooked it. He overlooked the fact that she was also committing crimes to get her son into the school. Yeah, which again makes the the one the 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 chairman's son even more insufferable because there's nothing worse than is somebody doing something terrible and they're being correct about it. Like he was saying, I wonder what horrible things your mother had to do to you know get to afford coming here and everything. It's like, whoa, yeah, he was right. He was she was lifting cyberware off of off of uh, bodies. If you're selling it on the black market. Yep. How'd she take out the cyberware? She's part of the she's part of the meat wagons, so she probably cut it out in the back of the uh, the ambulance. Mm-hmm. Kind of like that one ambulance was gonna do to David <laughs> before Lucy saved him. Yeah. But also, I, I do want to take this point. So people in this situation, right, they'll oftentimes turn to crime because it's the easy way out. Yeah, it, it's when you're this low, when life has kicked you this low, it is very, it, it takes a strong, strong character to avoid the temptation of the easy way out. There are people that can do that. There are people that can get knocked down and pick themselves back up and come back stronger than before. And those people should rightfully be, you know, lifted up and said, hey, this is somebody who life threw shit at them and they did not break. That should be, you know, that should be remarkable. That should be celebrated. But it is a very, very easy temptation to fall into crime when you are brought this low. Because crime is easier. And I feel like he's missing the whole point that this show is a warning against this stuff. It's not advocating for any of it. It's literally saying, like, this is a problem. Like, this is dystopian. This is shit. Like, we don't want our future to become this. Remember, her dream is to go to the moon. And as David says, it's more like a prison camp on the moon because it's so highly regulated and strict and stringent. And Lucy says... To me, being in Night City is the prison. Again, that's her dream, is to go to the fucking moon, which is not considered a great place either. But it has hope. They are building a future. Yeah, exactly. And that's another thing that um, that is true in real life. It's true in media, too. As Key Man says, it's easy to do good when life is good. Yeah. When you're well off and easy and things are coming to you easy, it's easy to do good. Very easy. Very simple. 
it takes a strong character to do good when when everything has gone upside down. himself did and the cycle continues the only way to break this cycle is for criminals to be removed from society and for society to collectively agree to follow moral rules without these that's not happening that's not I, I'm, I'm sorry to break it to you but there, there's a reason the problem of crime hasn't been solved for literally thousands of years yeah and again, you don't make things better by letting the criminals loose either, but it's obvious that crime, since the existence of man, is will be there forever. Because there are just some people, no matter what opportunities they're given in life, they just want to be criminals. There are just some people that just want to be that way. Because human beings are incredibly complex and weird, they can have contradictory like stances on everything there are just some people that want to be criminals for whatever reason because they think it's cooler because they think it's badass because they think it's easier there are so many reasons there are more reasons than there are miles to the sun that people can come up with for why they want to be a criminal like the argument here is basically just don't do crime forehead but towards all of society it's like if this was something that could just be solved, it would have been solved by now. Yeah. Like, trust me, it, as long as you have people, there will be crime. Yeah. This is something that just cannot be fixed. And you can't just sit here and say, like, oh, well, if people just accepted God more, like, there'd be less crime. It's like, I, if that was the case, then the fucking, like, when Christianity basically overtook the world and was basically law back in the day it's like then there would have been no crime i'm sorry to break it to you there was still a lot of crime it didn't fix no. anything yeah and again this is not me advocating for again letting criminals loose or anything like that oh fuck. hell no we see how that goes and fucking look at california oh my yeah, god Yeah. look at all these fucking uh democrat cities and everything no fuck no but this isn't something this isn't something that can be fixed with an on off switch there isn't just the stop crime button that you can slap because people are complex. That's not, there's, there's just nothing you can do about it. Just take the people that are criminals and you have to lock them up. Yes. They have to pay penance for their crimes. But what you should then do is once they're back into society, don't demonize them for it. If you paid your dues, you should be given back your full citizenship. But again, I'm, I'm going into wild like hardcore libertarian ideas of, of uh, and especially to a absolutionist where hey once you paid your due to society as a criminal and you come come back out and you're no longer a criminal you should be allowed to have all your rights back including owning firearms again yeah, yeah. i've heard that some places are going with that now where they're actually starting to uh there's like a i think i've heard of like a couple of states now are doing something like that where once uh criminals pay their due even if they committed a felony they can vote again yeah and it's like, slowly moving towards also they might be allowed to own firearms again yeah and i think that's only fair right it, you gave a sentence that was to pay for the crime they committed they have carried out that sentence why are you still punishing them now because now they are back to normal citizens again yeah i think it's ridiculous that we ever had it so that they couldn't vote it's like that's kind of ridiculous yeah, what about those poor people? Like I said, the people that are entirely innocent that get thrown in, that get thrown into jail, get convicted because of the noise in the system. Yeah, and then you're just not allowed to have a say in any of that. Now it's like, oh well, yeah, you were wrongfully punished, but you're also not allowed to vote against the uh, the very people that caused that. No, sorry, like, that's ridiculous. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's just these things are slowly hollowed out until they're the very hellhole that edge runners is portraying you could argue that edge runners isn't endorsing the lifestyles it portrays but i don't know 
like I said, it, if not, only two people live out of this crew. Only two people live. Yeah. It's not an easy life. They're not saying that, oh, everybody should do this. It's like, these people are incredibly skilled and they still fucking died. Yeah. It's like, it, it is absolutely not. It is showing, hey, they get to do all this cool stuff. Hey, they also get to die in horrible agony. Yeah. It, it does not portray it as a good life at all. Yeah. Like, he gets some a decent amount of money and is able to buy a penthouse and stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's nice. And if it had kept going just that way, yeah, it would have been fine. But yeah, that's the problem with this, with this, you know, this line of work. It doesn't go that way for long. Yeah. Again, he, he became complacent. Right? He didn't yep. want to downgrade either. He, he fell into the same trap Maine did. But his was worse because he thought he was so special. Because he felt more natural in a metallic body with the San Devastan, with all these other augments and everything, than he did in his own body, his old body. It's just like, holy shit, man. Um, do you guys check the uh, Discord chat quickly? Yeah, let me look here. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 I can. And if you, yeah. if you want to say right. anything, you can. You can go huh? Well, no, I just didn't want to say anything before we had decided. We're going to cut yeah, this okay. at about the halfway point, because we've been uh, going over four hours already, and I'll be honest, I didn't sleep well last night. Um, I feel like I'm coming down with something. Mm -hmm. which, I'm which feeling really drained right now. Yeah. That'll give yeah. me... I'll give me a chance to move my computer over to the new stand. Got all that built now. So oh, it's actually a uh, mini bookshelf, but yeah, I'm going to put my computer on top of it. Get it away from the underside of the desk kind of over here, run all the wires nice and everything. So that'll be, that'll be good. <laughs> Creevid 19. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, we can, we can either always, pick this up next week when we get to the halfway point or if you want we can just straight up drop it and just say that was good enough and just do something else no we because... can finish it next week that's fine okay because i'm yeah. not super invested in finishing this if we don't have to but if we but if you want to i don't mind yeah it, it, it's just that it's that situation where like i would kind of want to do it because i want to give him the full argument and benefit of his arguments thing but at the same time um you know, part of part of the whole money thing. Um, just, there doesn't seem to be as much interest in the audience, you know. So it's just one of those things. Like, eh, yeah. We'll see. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Yeah. They did make every protagonist a criminal. We eventually meet Lucy, the sh But No, okay. they didn't. They didn't. They they literally didn't. As we've yes. explained, mercenaries who work for the corporations are not criminals. They are legally allowed to do what they do on behalf of the corporations. Yep. Again, they work for fixers. Fixers, a lot of them get their contracts from the corporations. <laughs> Be careful, Griffin. We'll call you guys lazy and greedy. I don't give a shit what that man child thinks. He's got no place to call anyone lazy when his response is. Hmm. For mm. like 90% of the video. Yeah. Yep. Show's main woman. She's a pickpocket and hacker who works in the cyberpunk group that David joins. She's both a runner and a smoker, which is a bit contradictory to say the least. It is so this not. may shock you, but there are people in real life who go out for runs and jogs to be healthy, mm. and they smoke. Yeah. Or they eat a Big Mac. 
but, but even more shocking, you literally see that cyber lungs exist because David gets them. So, yeah. What if she has cyber lungs? We see David has them. In fact, she probably does, given what she does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous to be like, oh, they're gonna, it's gonna fuck you up. It's like, okay, if she had normal lungs, yes. Otherwise, no, it's literally just she gets her hit of nicotine and there's really no downside. Yeah, well, here's the funny part. It's, it's in even real life, they're just people that are just built weird, right? So I saw a YouTube video, went down a YouTube rabbit hole um, at one point. Um, there was a guy, and I can't remember his, I can't remember his name, but he was a, he was from Italy, I believe, and he was a defensive boxer. And instead of doing the exercises and workouts, he would just smoke cigarettes to stay at weight shape, right? He would smoke a lot of cigarettes, and he wasn't the strongest or anything like that, but his reflexes were ludicrous. It's like as if he was playing real life in slow motion. And so he had a, a really insane record uh, in boxing because he was like one of the best defensive boxers there was. Whenever he would hit you, it'd be like you got slapped, you know, lightly. But he's hitting you constantly and you're just throwing punches and missing and missing and missing and missing and glancing blow, missing, glance, you know. And that's exhausting. He would literally exhaust his opponents. But yeah, that dude would smoke cigarettes constantly. Cigarettes like you stand deaf stay in real life? <laughs> no. But th this guy, this guy, he was he was so lazy, he didn't want to do the exercises to continue boxing. Instead, he would just smoke cigarettes, and that would keep his weight down, because he'd get rid of hunger cravings and everything. Hmm. I also find it odd that, like, I've noticed a pattern of at least where I live, uh, people will talk about like, oh, because, you know, people like to gossip and stuff and they'll talk about people they don't like and stuff. Kind of like a certain somebody near me that I really don't like. Mm. And it's like, oh, well, at least I'll outlive this person because they smoke a lot. Right. And I don't smoke. <laughs> yeah. No, don't ever Carlisle. assume because that shit does not work. If anything, it seems like smokers always outlive non-smokers for some reason. I hate it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it, it's weird when you see the fucking 80 year old grandma who's been smoking for fucking 70 years and yep. she's perfectly fine. Yeah, that's that's my. Yeah. That was. She's got it, like, it a took... cough and a smoker's hack and shit like that, but she outlived everyone else who didn't smoke. Yeah. Yeah, that was. That was like my one, uh, my one grandma. She, she finally passed away, you know, rest her soul. But uh, my other grandma, she also smoked since she was very young, and she finally quit. Um, she says she feels a lot better now, but it hasn't, it hasn't stopped her at all. <laughs> Smokers are actively tanning the inside of their body, so if cancer doesn't get them, nothing will. <laughs> David gradually develop a romance and she confesses to him that she really likes him, but she's afraid he'll die. He promises her that he won't. <laughs> now, one thing to note about... <laughs> 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 okay, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but uh, again, that's the whole thing is like, she's, she's not afraid for herself. She's terrified of losing David. And, and David... The, Oh my god, it's the, it's the Team America World Police thing all over again. He goes, promise me you won't die. I can't promise you that. If you did promise me you wouldn't die, we would make love right here on this very balcony. <laughs> I promise <laughs> I will not die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and again, it makes sense because she lost everybody. Every one of her childhood friends. All of them gone or who she considered family because they would run the the old internet with her deep net yeah she lost all of them america fuck yeah 
God, I still love that movie. The movie is so fucking good. Yeah, yep. it was great. He's trying, he's trying to get her attention. What's he saying? I think he's saying, kiss me, kiss me. Smart ass motherfucker. motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, remember, if you're in any danger, wave your arms around like this. <laughs> he keeps doing that constantly. Gary, there's a chance you might be uh, caught by the terrorists and may want to take your own life. Take this. He just gives him a fucking hammer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dude, it's, oh, it's... And I, I love the vomiting scene. It's over the top, but that's what makes it so funny. The fact that it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And then the the, the music swells every single time. Like, it calms down after he stops vomiting. And he stands up and he's like, what? the music's like, what is... Like, I just like that it, it fucking... It, it predicted the whole, like, uh, celebrity, <laughs> like, yeah. ruling the world type shit where, like, our our word is law kind of shit down to the point that Alec Baldwin is the head of it. It's just like, it's so perfect. It's so fucking perfect. We were as as celebrities. It's our job to read uh, newspapers and pass off what we've read in the newspapers as our own opinion. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh God. Well, I I don't know if we'll do stag movies, um, but I love, I, I do every Saturday. This Saturday was an exception. We had so many technical issues because of these audio drivers um, that I had to cancel. But every Saturday, I have a Saturday showtime with my community, and we watch uh, we watch movies and just have ourselves a good old time. And we watched Team America World Police, and we were like, keep track of how many, how many things this movie fucking calls, like, ludicrously accurately. After this, I still have 12 hours of Patrician TV retrospective on Skyrim. Well, there you go. Life goals. <laughs> oh, I do. I do love Patrician's work. I, I love his work ethic, too. Honestly, I really do. I can't wait to watch those videos, but I have to until I'm done my own. Yeah. And I know we, me and him have disagreed pretty vehemently on uh, on different points. And one of the ones was being like legendary difficulty, like... You shouldn't play legendary difficulty. It'd be like if a 747 was going Mach 10, and it would just rip itself apart. I'm like, yeah, but they added it in there, so... I mean, if it's part of the game, it's meant to be played. Yeah, and they're like, but they added it later. It's like, but they added it. It's part of the game. Yeah, like, imagine adding a skill to an RPG, and the entire point... Well, you're not supposed to choose that skill. You're never supposed to use that skill. It's like... But it's part of fucking options. Yeah, then why did you add it? Yeah. He mentions your video, Cree. He says it's good. Oh. Well, I appreciate We definitely appreciate that. Again, I think Patrician does fantastic work. I just have disagreements with him, but, you know, I don't hate him or anything. I just disagree with him. That's it. I think he's a fantastic dude, and he has a great work ethic, and he has a pretty, pretty fucking base community, if I do say so myself. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, his community is fucking red-pilled and spicy. Hmm. Yeah, no, Patrician is a fantastic dude. Would highly recommend his name. Absolutely. Uh, make sure make sure you start uh, start where it all began. Start with Morrowind. Yeah. <laughs> and that'll get you a feel for just, just how, how in-depth he goes. about these groups is that they're unisex and women work right alongside men now i understand that they're all cyborg i think we need to get the full we need some context there we miss now one thing to note about these mercenary groups is that they're unisex and women work right alongside men now i understand that they're all cyborgs but women and men being perfectly equal fighters as they're shown in the show is still a bit unrealistic um they're they're cyber they've been kitted out they're not normal they've gotten rid of the weakness okay 
So men and women in real life are different. Women are generally weaker than men. Absolutely. The, the, yeah. The, this isn't a dainty little woman walking up and punching a bodybuilder. This is yeah. people who are highly modified to be stronger, smarter, faster than what they may appear to be. Yes. These aren't yeah. these aren't normal people. The scale doesn't work anymore because again, like, like Lucy, the thing that the person you're showing right there, her arms are fucking metal. And and not just that, but keep in mind how they fight. Look at the different styles and stuff. Look at what happens to Lucy and the other female members of the team as it goes on anyway. They tend to end up in dire situations and need to be saved by the others because they are slightly less, you know, even even with all the modifications, they do tend to get into more trouble than the others. But mm -hmm. also look at how they tend to fight. Lucy has a fucking wire that comes out of her wrist that can slice things. She's not punching people to death. Yeah. She's using a wire that cuts through things. Maine, on the other hand, can literally punch through, like, three guys and take all their top halves off. And then we see somebody, a, a woman who went the same route as Maine. Dorio wants to be big and built like a fucking tank. And she is. She's built like a fucking brick shit house. Mm hmm That's her cyberware. I, I, I still love Maine's, like... I'm fine. That's nice. Now be a good boy and fucking stay. She kicks him in the back of the van and shuts the door. <laughs> yeah, and again, like I said, I would agree with you if this was portrayed as being, you know, real world, modern times, modern technology thing. I, I'd yeah. be like, no, that's, that's a bit weird. You do have some exceptions, but I'm going to tell you right now, there's a reason why there aren't female Force Recon Marines. And I still love that fucking clip. It's like, <laughs> it's like, we have the most fit Marine, we have the most fit women in all the military services. And every time they take the test to go into Force Recon, they fail it. And the answer is simple. When you put a 250 pound ruck on the back of a woman, she crumples like a fucking crouton. <laughs> <laughs> I love that crouton clip. It's so fucking good and it's so true and again you should always keep your standards do not lower the standards just because of inclusivity and equity never do that your standards are this instead praise the people like if a woman gets that standard and surpasses it praise her because she met the standard like, that is way more empowering. I, I hate this video, but it's more empowering if they let them in. Really? To know that you couldn't make the cut, so we had to lower the bar for you? It's empowering to be given a free pass rather than earning your way in? Yeah, exactly. Because I, I thought I it would have been more weird. empowering to earn it. Exactly. If they make the bar, how much more empowering is that? You beat the standard. The standard that has been set for this group forever and you met the standard well fucking done oh yeah oh I could talk mad shit about the army and it's, it's laxing standards and the fact that drill instructors can't shark attack anymore and they're not allowed to fucking yell anymore oh my god Angry Cops, um, who is also a drill sergeant in the United States Army, um, goes off on that, and he is furious. The fact that they're going to make drill, drill sergeants not allowed to yell at recruits anymore. And I was like, thank God the Marine Corps is keeping its fucking standards. They're slipping a little bit here and there, but thank God the Marine Corps is obsessed with its history and lore. Even with advancements, women would still be behind men due to natural biological factors. Most not, of those factors are removed, cyber. though. Yeah, not in the cyberpunk universe. Like, holy shit, you're literally showing David when he no longer has human lungs. His lungs are now machines. Uh, wait, hold up. Drill Sergeant can't yell anymore? Is that legal? I mean, it's legal, yeah, but they're not allowed to yell anymore because they said yelling 
really disincentivizes Gen X and the youth. And it's like, you're teaching them to go to fucking war and you need some corrective action to get these little shits to snap their attention and say, sir, yes, sir, when they are asked a question. It's like, my God. Yeah, exactly. I would love, I would love these recruits to try to... Remember, the Army tried to do the stress cards thing, and the Marine Corps still gives them shit for that this day. I still give the Army shit for this day. But the, they tried to do the stress cards thing, and oh my lord, you could hold up a yellow card and be like, Drill Strict, I need you to get out of my face for five minutes. <laughs> it's off. Yeah, Jesus. that's really going to stop a bullet. Wasn't there a thing where they were forcing soldiers to wear, like, high heels and a dress and shit and walk around? Uh, I don't know about that. I remember there being something about that, and they got in a lot of trouble for it. Yeah. I was on a DS, but I retired before Woke became a huge problem. Yeah, Woke has infected the, the army. Oh, my God. I mean, it's crazy because you get all these, like, hearings from the senators asking, like, how the hell does respecting people's pronouns help you kill better? You're the fucking army. Like, Jesus Christ. Let's think about this logically. If technology affects both of the sexes equally, then doesn't it follow that men would retain most of their biological advantages over women? No. So, no. Because if, again, if you get a strength enhancement that allows you to... I don't know. Lift a car. To lift a car. With one hand. With one hand. Then that would work for both sexes. Like... Yeah. <sighs> and again, the cyberware doesn't work equally for the same sex. One dude's strength enhancer is not the same as another dude's strength enhancer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And even if some of those physical limitations were still there, they would be minimal as compared to what the fucking cyberware gives them at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And it depends on what type of cyberware you're getting. Like, are you getting gorilla arms like the guy or are you getting something else? You know, it's like... Yeah. You're not... It's not one for one. Look, like, She's look. using mono wire. She's more of a stealth person. Like, look, Rebecca, who was less augmented, could not fire the big guns... When she tried to fire Maine's gun, Maine's main weapon, <laughs> nice, Maine's main weapon, she flew backwards off her fucking feet. What did she do? She upgraded to the gorilla arms so she can use the big guns now. Now, that wasn't the only reason why. She specifically did it because, you know, she wanted to, she never wanted to be in a situation again where she couldn't protect her brother. But still. Oh, I just, I just want to do this. You respect your... Alex Crystalline says, you respect your enemy's pronouns by giving them new ones. Was, were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now, if they'd said that during one of the hearings, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, oh, my God. You might be the one based person left. <laughs> uh, $2 from Lantern's Glow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gen Z is insanely weak-willed. Well, I call it Generation Snowflake for a reason, but you know what? I, I feel like I've met enough people from Gen Z who are, like, rebelling, but they feel like they're the counterculture to the Gen Z, right? Yeah. Yep. The group is led by Maine, a heavily suited-up cyborg. Other members include Kiwi, a hacking expert, and Rebecca, a tiny female fighter. Some people have called Rebecca a lowly, but fortunately, her character is actually a grown woman who's just short. Her size actually varies wildly from scene to scene, like in this scene here. In the first frame, her head only goes up to David's stomach, but in the- Stomach? That's clearly his- his- It's actually very- All right. So he's wildly from scene let's, to scene. Let's look Clearly. at this. All right. Hold She's on. also bending over a bit. All right. Clearly goes up to his stomach. So that's her top of her head is over his pectorals. We mean to his stomach. 
Do you know where the stomach is located, sir? Clearly it's located next to the heart. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's not stomach level. I do see what he means. There is a bit of a jump in height in the next scene. I mean, she is standing up more straight in the next scene, too. Mm. But she does gain a few inches. But at the same time, it's not quite as big as he's making it out to be. Yeah, she's not like... She's not like so. The stomach level would be the bottom of the red cup in her in her right hand. Yeah. Left, left one on the screen. That would be stomach level. Like, it's, that's a huge jump. Sure. <laughs> the stomach is located in the subcoccal region. There, you, region. There you go. <laughs> he called Rebecca a midget. Get him. He's right though. <laughs> Where's the lie? He's, he's a midget. <laughs> I also don't Slightly get. Goes up. Oh, good. I was just gonna go to where she stands up. Yeah, I also don't get why this is something worth bringing up. Like animation it, it just, inconsistency. I. It's barely anything. Like it's there's, barely anything. Yeah. There, I've seen not... far worse animation issues in my time that this is like doesn't even register. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna super fault him for bringing it up, but at the same time, it is kind of it is just a nitpick. Yeah, again, I'm not, I'm not faulting him for bringing up the animation consistency. I immediately was like, if she only comes up to his stomach, and I saw that scene, I was like, hold up, go back. What? <laughs> only up to his stomach? Yeah, he's, he's making it out to be a bit worse than it actually is. Like, don't get me wrong, there's definitely an animation con inconsistency here, but mm. it's not to the level that he's trying to make it out to be. Yeah, and why don't you point out the fact that she lost her nose? <laughs> like we want to talk about animation consistency she has no nose in this they forgot to draw her nose in in this scene right here that's on screen actually, right this moment wait hold on actually oh no wait no i think you're right i think they did just forget to draw her nose but <laughs> <laughs> got your nose she's snozzless <laughs> up to Damic, but in the next shot she... all right now she's standing more upright yeah so she went from just above the nipples on his pecs now she's up her her head comes up towards his nose bottom of his nose yeah <laughs> so yeah she definitely grew like an inch or two but at the same time it's like he tried to make it out to be way like he was like half her like she was yeah. half his size, and it's like, no, he was, she was not half the size of David before. Like, that's, it wasn't that bad. Mm. I don't think she's standing on something at the moment. Uh, oh, you know what? I didn't even think about that. I think he is standing on the street, and she's on the sidewalk. Yeah. Oh, shit. No, oh, I went too far. I was trying to see if there was a spot I could see, like, where she was standing. Yeah. I don't think they pull out that far in uh, that scene. No, yeah, I don't think they enough. do either. Some people have called Rebecca a lowly, but fortunately, her character is actually a grown woman who's just short. Her size actually varies yep, wildly true. from scene to scene, like in this scene here. In the first frame, her head only goes up to David's stomach, but in the next <laughs> shot, she's up to his neck. Zero points for continuity. Yeah, okay, so... She's, she's zero. <laughs> Wait, I missed, I missed that part because I was so busy looking at the animation thing, but if I remember correctly, during that scene, you can literally hear her step up onto the sidewalk, and that's her, like, the way she's walking there. She's walking on the edge of the sidewalk like a tightrope. Mm. So she, she is... Standing, standing on a platform that raises her up quite a bit more. Yep. Well, so go. I don't even think it's animation inconsistency. I think it's literally she moved up a level and you just didn't catch it. But here's my favorite part. She comes up to his stomach. Well, he doesn't know where the stomach is located. And then she's up to his neck. Um, no, she's actually up to his her, his nose. Yeah. He not might know where the be neck is located either. He might be measuring from the eyes. Maybe, but, but even if she was even if he was measuring from the eyes, it's not stomach. No, yeah, I that know. Would have been the stomach. This, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that. Where people 
sometimes assume that the the entire gut area is the stomach. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, but she came up to his pecs. Um, Vanganeer, though, so it brings up a good point. So what you're saying is she was running on the edge. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Also, I love the fact that they stuff her into a fridge. That's just funny. Yeah. The two on many jobs together, though this is mostly shown through a montage and not actual scenes. One major issue of the show... What? Okay. What? It's a montage, but those are actual scenes. There are scenes in the montage. Like, what do you... What do you think the montage is made up of? It's made yeah. up of... Yeah... It's almost like he expected, like, an episode for each one of these things happening in the montage. And it's like, my guy, we do not have time for a yeah. full-fledged episode for if each we, of these things. If we had five episodes, five more episodes, I would have loved to have seen them doing various jobs with Maine's crew. And then yeah. contrast it later with seeing more David's crew doing jobs when it becomes David's crew. Because uh, remember, it, it doesn't make sense that you're a big shot, so much so you have a fan who came along on this mission. Okay. David has fans now? David particularly? It just it just time jumps and yeah, he has fans now. Well, oh, one yeah. less one after that mission. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That yeah, the pacing. To... The pacing is an issue. I'm not gonna yes. like I'm not gonna sit here and say it's not an issue. It is an issue. But at the same time, this right here just does not feel like an appropriate criticism for the show. Such, did you say big shot? <laughs> <laughs> Hyperlink blocked. Yeah. What? Nothing. Nothing. Save your innocent mind. That was how short and rushed it is. It tries. Yes, yes, I agree. The pacing, I absolutely agree. It, the show, the show shows how short and rushed it is. I agree. The show was short, and it does feel a little rushed because of the pacing. Yes, I, I agree. agree. Though this is mostly shown through a montage and not actual scenes, one major issue of the show is how short and rushed it is. It tries to tell its entire story in just 10 episodes, and this naturally causes a lot of Not even 30 minutes each. It's 10 episodes and it's 22 minutes each. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, it, it's they have a very limited amount of time. Yeah, they have to pack a lot into 10 episodes and to make sure it all feels like... Uh, fleshed out and, and like it has enough depth. I'd say they pulled it off, but man, yeah, the pacing, especially towards the end, you notice it. Uh. A lot of times, Edge Runners is actually a textbook example of how montages and time jumps don't replace real character development. But Look. there's tons of character development. Yeah. yeah. It's actually a pretty good montage. It actually does a pretty good job of explaining like how he gets to at least a decent level. Yeah, and why he starts taking a gun with him from now on, and the fact that he's training with it. Yeah. Or at least trying to. Again, the first time we see him try to shoot, he can't help, because he thinks it's his mom on the other end. He just has that, that momentary, like, whoa. Yeah. And, you know, we see him start getting, like, the upgrades and stuff, like the lungs and stuff, so he can actually keep up with the crew, and... Yeah, it does a good job. It, it's actually a pretty well-done montage. I, yeah. I don't I don't get the criticism here. Yeah, I, I agree, Vengineer. I think the show should have been fifteen episodes as well. Yeah. I, I really do. Like yeah, the, the time jump was pretty rough. I wanted to see him going through through the whole thing of like accepting Maine's death to actually installing the cyberware for Maine and everything. Yeah. Fifteen minimum, I should say. Like if it could have gotten like twenty episodes, oh oh this could have been a great, great, great show, but I even would just afraid, fifteen would have been would have been good. I would have been afraid if we started getting too far into the episodes. You know, I think five more episodes to to smooth out some of these rough patches, smooth out some of these time jumps and everything. Maybe and let us let us get to know like let us get to know Falco for God's sakes. He comes out of nowhere. You literally see him sitting next to David and uh, Techie, 
And you might not mm. even notice him, like I did. Yeah. Yeah. And well, then he, he's there walking beside them as they're leaving, and he's laughing with them. But that's it. That's that's not an introduction to Falco. That yeah. is not an introduction. The next time you see Falco, he's punching out Maine's lights. Yeah, he just kind of comes out of nowhere. See, yeah. I say 20 because that would have given us room for not only development, but also we could have seen... We basically could have had an episode for each member. Mm -hmm. And where we got to deep dive into them a little bit more with each character. We could have gotten, you know, we could have gotten proper, more proper introductions to some of the characters. Uh, we could have seen more jobs being performed with them where, you know, like we yep. actually get to see them doing more stuff rather than just a couple. Like there, there's so much they could have done with 20 episodes. I'd say 30 episodes. We could get 10 episodes dedicated to exploring the uh, Christian values and morals of this world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. 10 episodes at least need to be uh, they, dedicated. They, they showed her cross. They showed her cross. So we need to dedicate at least 10 episodes to that. <laughs> at least, at least. Yeah. Oh boy. Anyways, I do with the anime is that most of the fight scenes are clearly meant to be more like a video game than anything realistic. The... What? No. Well, that's... Okay. well, one, it's realistic given the cyberware in this universe to have them end up the way they are, right? And two, like, it's a it's a nice nod to the video game. It, yeah. It's a real nice because this is the way the video game looks like this pixel. No, oh, Cree can't see. I'll go back just slightly so Cree and Chat can see it. There you go. So this is this is the way that the video game looks when you're doing when you're hacking through the computer systems or you hack people's cyber eye and jump around and stuff like that with them. This is the way people look in it. Yeah. So like that's so, just a cool nod. That's a cool nod to the video game. Yeah, it's a cool nod to the game, and it also doesn't hurt the show like I, there's nothing here that makes me think oh yeah no that's unrealistic this takes me out of the the show no it it doesn't it feels perfectly natural for the show yeah there's and there's nothing unrealistic if when we talk about the because you're talking about all the fight scenes so is your unrealistic thing that is that the guns don't work it's like the guns are all chipped like that's that's part of this that's part of this world the guns are chipped Which means you could disable them through hacking. Yeah. Just for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, the main theme is cyberpsychosis. Wanting to see the characters in fun, wacky adventures is not. I disagree because it's the same thing in, um, in Game of Thrones. You get the highs and the lows. And the highs help the lows have more impact. And the lows help the new highs have more impact. So I think yeah. that's good. And also, cyberpsychosis is one of the main themes. The other theme running alongside cyberpsychosis is dreams. They constantly talk about dreams. Main's dream to continue pushing forward, continue pushing his limit, just keep running. Also, not all of the jobs need to be fun, wacky adventures. You know, they can go wrong. They can have episodes where shit is not good. Yeah. Where they so, fuck up, where they fail. Where yeah. they get injured. Exactly. So, like, it doesn't all have to be like, oh, yeah, that was great, team. We did such a good job. You, Not every episode has to be like that. Yeah. In fact, the majority of them don't have to be like that. Are there antique guns in the, in the game that can't be hacked? I don't know. I think there might be, actually. But granted, if they can't hack your gun, the AI will just, you know, set you on fire and hack your cyber eye instead. It's so fucking annoying. I... Oh. I hate it when they can do that to you, even though you're not like within line of sight or in the line of cameras or anything like that. That that's when the hacking is really fucking annoying. But the because the enemies are omniscient once you alert them, so it doesn't matter if you're someplace where they can't see and there's no cameras or anything. You'll just suddenly start getting cyber hacked. And it's like oh fuck. When, again, the limitation for you is that you have to see them and tag them to know they're there. I'd have to... T yeah, so maybe we could test some, at some point, Senator Abby, if uh, there is a normal... If the normal double barrel shotgun can be hacked or not. Or if you can still shoot. Yeah, I would assume there would be, like, some weapons in the game that can't be hacked. Like, they're just old school. 
Yep. Well, I don't think they need to really fight against Night City itself, right? And Arasaka more than they already do. But I do agree um, with Darlin here. Darlin Dos uh, Santos Oliveira Jr. says, It's a character-driven show that barely gives screen time to its characters. The group doesn't really try to change society or fight against Night City's strike and Arasaka, aside from Lucy herself. I don't think they need to. They don't really need to rebel that much more against society because they're they're living better. They're getting paid. They're doing jobs. They're sticking together. They're working together. But I do absolutely agree with you that we needed more character moments. As we just said, Falco. Falco is introduced sitting on a couch as David and Pilar are, are watching porn. And yeah, I keep in mind, That's it. other That's than Lucy, other than Lucy, most of them don't really hate Night City. Like, David wants to rebel a bit, but even he doesn't seem to, like, outright hate the city. Yeah. He kind of likes the freedom and all the stuff that they can do. Yeah. Um, Tentacle Dude says, I bet Setch would, would gut his gun as soon as possible to get rid of all electronic stuff. Oh, I absolutely would. Oh, yeah. There's no way. I want, I, I want as few things going wrong as possible, and adding electronic shit into my weapons is just another thing that can go wrong and stop it fucking going boom when I pull the trigger. Yeah, I can't stand the fucking, like, what is it? Those, like, electronic locks they want to put on guns and mm. stuff? Fuck that shit. Get that yeah. shit off my gun. Well, you don't get it, Pagan. They need to put the electronic locks on the guns. So when one of their... Uh, I mean, when there's a random shooter, no one can take them down. Oh, you <laughs> can't hack guns in the game. You could hack guns in the game. Well, that's so what I know. I was always the stealth guy. Whenever I played Cyberpunk. Mostly because I wanted to avoid it. Because when my old computer... This new computer can handle Cyberpunk now. My old computer... Like I said, I, I had the mirror boss. Every time my character... Every time V looked in a mirror, it was a 50-50 chance if I was uh, crashing the desktop. Or if my... Uh, or if my computer would just be like, Nope, I'm shutting off now. Bye. Wow. Yeah, call the police so they can unlock your gun. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, if, if they ever had chips or anything like that in, in guns, if they ever start actively doing that, you will best believe I will immediately gut that shit right out. Be like, yeah. nope. Yeah, no, I will not own a gun that has that shit in it. Most of the fight scenes are clearly meant to be more like a video game than anything realistic. The blood and gore is off the charts and just unnecessary. You... Uh, I disagree. I don't know about that because it's showing the brutality of this world, right? It doesn't do it to what I would call a comical degree. Yeah, it's it's not, not quite. Gorn. It's not gorn, which is gore porn. It's not that. It's not something ludicrous like that where it revels it's, in the gore. It's not the boys. It's not kill bill where you cut someone's arm off and there's the fucking fountain of blood pouring out for three minutes yeah it's definitely not any of that stuff it's it's just a style it's literally just yeah you shoot the guy and like a big spurt of blood comes out and like i'm sorry that's but usually the most you, of it when you blow uh, someone's head off with a shotgun there's gonna be blood and um a lot of meat chunks going in many places. That's and kind of how it works. Bone chunks. <laughs> when you I, blow I someone's it... head off, there's going to be bones all over the place. <laughs> bones. I don't know. I thought that was pretty tasteful for the most part. I don't know. I didn't have any issue with any of the gore. It felt pretty... I don't know pretty tame for the most part like there was definitely some stylistic choices where it was like yeah that's there's a lot of blood here but only for like that that frame it doesn't like linger on it for too long or anything it just happens and it's very quick i don't know it felt tasteful to me i didn't have an issue with the gore i i don't really see i don't really get the criticism here neither do i yeah like, like i said y you you will know when stuff revels in the gore and sometimes it's for comedic effect like it is in uh in one of my favorite halloween movies tucker and dale vs evil the <laughs> gore is done as part of the joke yeah especially the fucking wood chipper and the 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 bimbo chick stands up and she gets splattered in the face of the blood she's like <laughs> the 
Like, <laughs> that is so fucking funny. Even better when he's like trying to save the dude from the wood chipper and it shuts off because it got clogged with all the guts. <laughs> Drops is like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah half no, his I, fucking I he's body's okay. gone. I, yeah, I, I think he's just fine. He's just gonna walk it off. Yeah, he's literally just a pair of legs. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. I love, he tries so hard. It's like, but my dude, there's nothing, there's no head left. There's nothing left. Why are you trying to pull on this guy's legs to pull him out of the chipper? It's too late. But uh, back to cyberpunk, it, it's just when you shoot someone, especially when it's very... With the weapons that would exist in the world of cyberpunk, the, the kind of weapons that you would need to take down people who are highly modified, who have entirely robotic limbs. Mm -hmm. And when a creature like Atom Smasher exists, guns are going to have more fucking impact. Meaning, when it does hit the f uh, fleshy bits, they're going to they're gonna fare far less... Uh, Man, my brain is fucking stopping right now because I'm so tired. They're not going to fare so well against that kind of stopping power. So yeah, it, the level of gore we see in the show makes sense for the world that we see. Absolutely. When you're walking around with a 20 millimeter uh, cannon, essentially, it's going to blow people to pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Like, imagine if you had a gun that could fire the equivalent of, um... What was that, um, plane you told us about? Where they fire the uranium shells, basically? The A-10. Oh. The imagine... Imagine if you had something handheld that could deliver that much impact... But maybe not so big of a uh, a round. Like, yeah, when you hit someone with that, they are going to get fucked up super hard. I, I still love the description of the A-10 Thunderbolt. It's like, and why did we make the round of depleted uranium? Because this round is designed to take out the tank hiding behind the other tank. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, Jesus Christ. So a 50 caliber gun? Oh, hell no. The Gao 8 is way bigger. It's funny. They, he even, Fat Electricity even shows it. He's like, this is a 50 cal bullet. This is a bullet from the Gao 8. <laughs> and it's bigger than a fucking beer bottle. Like, almost twice its size. And it has a blue tip. And he's like, go ahead. Ask me why the tip is blue. Go on. You know you want to. Because this is made out of depleted uranium. It's like, Jesus Christ. You can have a good fight scene without heads exploding and bodies getting torn apart. Yeah, but you can also have a good fight scene with that stuff. Yeah. Especially There's... since that's part of the brutality of this world. Yeah, and look at the weapon. Look at the weapon fucking Rebecca is holding on to. Are you going to tell me that that is going to do or nothing to the media? charts and just unnecessary. Let you can have can a perfectly good fight scene of... without heads exploding and bodies getting torn apart. Look, look at that gun that Rebecca has. Look at the size of the gun barrel and the fact that the the fucking compensator at the end of it it, it looks like it's it's for a fucking 50 cal. Yeah, it's massive and that's not even her big guns. Keep in mind yeah. that's not even her big guns. Yep. Because she runs out of ammo and then she and then she says, "Oh, time for the big guns." It pulls yeah. out her fucking shotguns. Meanwhile, all the, um, I think they're called Marauders? I forget what these guys are called. Um, they're all like, yeah, she's out of ammo, kill the bitch! And then she starts laughing as she whips out the two gigantic guns. <laughs> yeah, uh, that just completely obliterates everyone in there. Yeah, no worries, Suka. You and, uh, you enjoy, hopefully, hopefully you will enjoy it. They are scabs. Are these guys scabs? I thought these guys were the, the four eye thing the, the... they are i'm trying to remember their name um maelstrom yeah maelstrom yeah yeah i think these guys are maelstrom 
Yeah, these are Maelstrom. God, I don't know. This just sounds like a fucking you problem. Like, I don't like gore in my gory shows. Remove the gore. It's like, okay, well then just don't watch the show. Yeah, because again, it, it makes sense. It's fitting. The, the guns are upscaled because the targets they got to deal with, the defenses have gone higher. So when defenses go up, the guns go up. When the guns go up, the defenses try to go up. It's that constant, like, teeter-totter back and forth between offense and defense. Now, part. It once or twice to make a point is one thing, but when it's every scene, it's just excessive. And besides the gore, some of oh, the fights are just downright ridiculous. Take this scene where David and Rebecca easily wipe out a small army of 20 to 30 enemies without even breaking a sweat. Rebecca stands in the middle of the room and just unloads on them with multiple weapons without getting scratched. You're censoring the swear words? Why? Because he's Christian, don't you know? This is a Christian server. Christian people could swear, though. Yeah. No, they can't. It's a sin. <laughs> No, no, they can. Remember, Van Helsing taught us that. Well, I'm just a prior, actually. I can say all the swear words I want. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This dude's just kind of a... If it was a kid-friendly channel, why was he showing the bare naked titties on screen? Yeah, what? <laughs> I was about to say, this is not a fucking kid-friendly channel. Yeah. Or maybe he missed it because it was tri-boob. I don't know. I don't know. The dude just sounds kind of like a bit of a pussy to me. <laughs> God dang it, Jiminy Christmas cheese and crackers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that so much. Seriously, these guys can't hit the broad side of a barn. It ends with Rebecca blowing them all to bits with blood and gore spraying everywhere. Fight scenes being this unrealistic suck any tension there was right out of the situation. But the pro-crime message and the silly fight scenes are just some of the issues with- I... There isn't a pro-crime message, you fuck! Where the fuck are you keep getting this shit? Are... Why- Are you gonna- Does he just not understand what mercenaries are? Well, not only that, but I'm gonna- I need to seriously ask him, do you think the Godfather is pro-crime? Because I'm going to tell you right now, The Godfather is not pro-crime. Yeah, and as I've already stated, this is supposed to be a warning. This whole show is supposed to be a warning about why we don't want this kind of shit to happen. We don't want this kind of dystopian fucking setting to happen in real life. We don't want this kind of society to come about. That's the whole point. How is it pro any of this shit when it's literally saying, this is bad? Yeah. This not good. Holy fuck. Bill Bill is pro murder. <laughs> <laughs> God, I don't know if I'm just getting like more impatient with him or if like the show or if this video is actually just taking such a big nosedive. It feels like a huge nosedive to me, but it could also just be I'm just getting impatient. Also, yeah. I want to go back to the whole fight scene with all those people. Weren't they hacked so they couldn't, like, uh, aim properly or see properly or something? Like, that was a big part of that fight, so that yeah. the small group could take all of them out? Yeah. So, yes, but they, Kiwi explicitly says that she missed some, and that they'll have to mop them up. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, they could just be shit shots, too. The ones that she missed could just be bad shots. I yeah. would have taken cover, like, in, in a real gunfight, I would have immediately, like, been firing and moving towards cover. Yeah. Even if, technically, in the cyberpunk universe, it's more concealment than it is cover, but, you know, still. I'd rather mm -hmm. not be in direct line of sight of the guns. I do wish they had... I'll, I'll give it to them that I do wish that they had animated the characters at least running. Like, mm -hmm. at least moving around and trying to not get shot, rather than just standing in one spot and just unloading. Yeah. Like, I can understand that being a little unrealistic, yeah. Yeah. But, I don't know, like, it doesn't bother me too much, but I will give him that, but yeah, I do wish they had at least made him, like, moving around or taking cover or something. Yeah. Oh! 
That'd be a good one. No spoilers in chat because Pagan's just watching it now. But yeah, Bessie says this guy will will watch Breaking Bad and have a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pro crime message. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, don't spoil anything that happened in Breaking Bad, though, chat. Please don't. Yeah, I'm. I'm just watching he, it, now. He's watching it now. I'm on season two. Yeah. Oh, that's where. <laughs> <laughs> season two that's where billy bob thornton comes down from the moon that's where gus and hector fall into the back rooms oh god <laughs> is that markiplier <laughs> god damn it that's still every time i think of markiplier i can't help but think of that break me off a piece of that kick cat barb yeah i was about to say that yeah I can't wait to break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the timing of it is just too perfect. It's fucking amazing. Right as soon as he finishes the joke, the fucking hand comes through and grabs her by the back of the head and drags her out. It's just like, oh my god, that was perfect. Um, anyways, let's hear the next argument, then cut it there. Okay. Yep, that'll work. The anime. Another big problem is how it handles sexual content. Edge Runner. Oh no. Oh no, no sorry. Yeah. Has a lot uh. of nudity in almost every episode, which is completely unnecessary. No, 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 no. Okay. It is this, necessary. That's part of the this, point. Yeah, the point is to dehumanize the sex, right? It no longer feels titillating. It no longer feels like romantic erotic it doesn't it doesn't feel like there's passion behind it it's very cold and lifeless it feels like it exists to exist right it, it it's not it, it doesn't feel like that oh and look how much more human we are now that we can show ourselves completely it, you've lost the sex drive you've lost that drive that passion that interest you You've lost a lot of yourself, your humanity, from it. Because now the the thing that's supposed to bring pleasure is now just treated as a as just a, a passing drug. It's just I'll take my hit on this BD and then I'll get back to work or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's not sacred anymore. It's not. It, it has no life to it. Yeah. It's just. It's just in every other. What's the What's the word I want to use? Yeah, it's just, it's a dime a dozen. Yeah, it, there we go. It was, yeah, it's just a dime a dozen. It's everywhere. It's it's on every billboard, every ad, every street corner. There's people jacking off to with like constantly to stuff. It's just nothing. It's it doesn't have the passion anymore. Yeah. Um, I actually kind of regret saying one more argument because this this is an entire new section. And it's just like <laughs> fuck. Well, let's just let's just uh, we can just go out here on the main face of him, just like the fuck. He's specifically he's specifically looking here at Pax Tube and like the fuck are you talking about? Is that who we're <laughs> yeah. covering, Pax Tube? Yeah, that's the, in the yeah. top corner. You can see. Pax Tube. No, I can't actually. Oh, if you hover, over, oh, you can't hover over his icon, can you? I I've been able to do it before, but it's not letting me this time. Okay, yeah, it's it's Pax Tube is uh, the guy's channel. Alrighty, hey, look at that. Yep. We got through a stream with no internet troubles. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna I say, had, like, well, I don't want to jinx I had it, but troubles, but that's because of new computer and playing the fucking driver bingo. Oh, if you yeah. install this, this, and this driver, it'll make all these work. However, you're also gonna have no CD drive. What? Oh, speaking of, I actually had to buy, um, and I think that I thought of this beforehand because I knew this didn't have a CD tray or anything. Thankfully, I have a, um, a, uh, USB CD drive I can use. So, thank God. Yeah. The, well, the new, new computers, man, and they're like, oh, we don't need CD or DVD drives anymore. Oh, we don't need microphones and headphone jacks separated anymore. Oh, we can just use the same Realtek drivers from 2015 for everything. <laughs> like get rid of like amazing features like differentiate and make independent the front jack from the rear jack. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I hate I hate driver bingo whenever I build a new computer. I fucking hate. It. 
but maybe if Kree's internet is going to be stable from now on, maybe he can actually start, you know, yeah, posting the stuff again. And then, you know, obviously, if need be, if, if it like goes out, you guys could just switch over like we did uh, here today. Yeah, exactly. You don't even have to close the stream or anything. That was good. Yep. Mine, it, it'll, it'll be pretty fast because I'll just I'll just have everything set up in the just in case too. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's nice not having to actually like do the panels and everything like that. It really is. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, do you guys have anything you want to go out on? I well, wanted to read this comment. Uh, yeah, no. read comments, chill. Let's. Uh, I just wanted to read this comment where no, he says, uh, "No." Mm. What? 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 Just yeah. What? Can I read the comment? <laughs> I'd prefer not. Why not? If it's a comment, I'm thinking it is. About uh, David needing like snuff to get oh, off. That, that's it's that's that... fine. That's fine. I thought it was a different one. No, okay, yeah. I was about to say, what the fuck? I was like, okay, guys, I fuck you, I guess. Uh, chat, you need to leave. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, Bessie says uh, society is so desexualized or so sexualized. David needed snuff to get to get it going. Yeah. Yep. Like it's so nothing that they've had to resort to actual snuff films just to get off. Like our main character is a gore hound. Yep. Um, I want to do this real quick. Callback. Modern PC design. Where we're going, we don't need functionality. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> I hate I hate it so much. I really do. Like, I can't even get my M.2 drive to work because I don't have the right CPU, and I didn't realize 10th gen Intel, Intel didn't allow M.2 drives, but 11th gen does. I was one generation off. What? Yeah, so let's uh let's start the shilling and then uh and then I will move this computer over to the new stand. So Cree, would you care to start us off? Do you have anything coming up? Do you have anything planned? I've got this week off of work and I'm planning on putting my nose to the grindstone and getting this fucking video done. Um I got over a couple bumps that were slowing me down on it and hopefully it's smooth sailing from here. Yeah. Pagan. Um so I'm I'm not gonna promise to like uh streaming Elden Ring anymore. Uh until I get all this shit dealt with, I'm not gonna be streaming at all other than stag. Because I, every time I try to, I get pulled away. I have to go to the bank. I have to go deal with some bullshit. I have to call the cops. It's always fucking something. So no more promising to play Elden Ring or any streams or anything until this shit is dealt with. So basically, I'm I'm only going to be on stag for a while, and that's it. Yeah. Um, for me, Halo Reach has now been completed on stream. Uh, working on another bounty game, and it's... Uh, not going well. It's a combat system. It's the combat system. It is, it is brutal. Like, it's one of those, like, I can see how this would be interesting in theory, but fuck me. Um, but I, I may not stream tomorrow. It all depends when that sound card gets here. Sound card gets here before the stream? Sure. But I stream at 10 in the morning every, every weekday. So, uh, yeah. That's uh, that's gonna be a gonna be a bit of a problem. Is the new bounty postal three? No, um, that could be the new bounty I could put up. It all depends. People gotta vote on it. I think Detroit Become Human is gonna be the new one on the bounty block that people oh, can pay no. towards to get. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I got the Halo Reach video. I'm starting on the script again. Um, now that I've gone through it with my community, there's way more stuff that I missed on my first playthrough. I was doing the script based on my first playthrough and then I was going to go back through and edit as I went. But I kind of liked going back through it with the chat and explaining everything and then showcasing all the other highlights. Like like the fact that they can control a Covenant Corvette, but they can make it proceed to dock with a supercarrier to refuel so they can set off their bomb. But if you can do that, why can't you just... Tell it to go into slip space itself, which would have saved George's life because you can already program it for some reason. I don't know how you can program it. 
It makes no fucking sense. But yeah, um, yeah. So hey, come by my streams every weekday from 10 a.m. Eastern time to 1 p.m. Eastern time. And on Saturdays we watch a movie in my Discord. So you want to show up for that? Sure. Unfortunately, we had to cancel this one because I need the sound card. I need the sound card. George wanted to die, obviously. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Why was this Detroit game bad? I've never heard of it. It's called Detroit Become Human, and it was a David Cage game. That should kind of tell you all you need to know, but to put it to put it uh, bluntly, he wanted to tell racism without having it about black people so it's about robot people and the main one of the main characters is a black robot person <laughs> oh, david cage you fucking weirdo and it doesn't make a lick of sense I'll, I'll just give you one spoiler for for one of the endings uh robot concentration camp <laughs> and ironically no not even joking robot concentration camp Yep. Bye bye, everybody. Have a good one. <laughs> good night. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye. See you guys. Re.